meet the showman The way I'm shining, I'm golden And I bring the commotion My spirit never been broken Cause I got the devotion No magical potion You're just a drop in the ocean I'm a tidal wave taking over Solo quiero ascender y te busco hasta la lluvia Corazón de mujer tiene su mal y su bien Ternura, no te oculto Nine wearing a secretos son absurdos In God's time for them y no me luso Desde que me enteré este amor bien lujo 
Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Mami, mami, mami chula Eres suficiente, quítate la duda Mami, mami, mami chula Tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura Nunca dura, ni su asura Ella lo jura, but then I put the wrong And I'm beefing, no peleo Dejo que pasen las cosas, más bien la veo Y analizo desde lejos Gracias a Dios me entero y me sale bello Me enteré del juda lo perro Movimiento limpio, espíritu en espejo Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Mami, mami, mami chula Eres suficiente, quítate la duda Mami, mami, mami chula Tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura Nunca dura, ni su asura Ella lo jura, but then I put the wrong And I'm beefing, no peleo Dejo que pase las cosas, más bien la veo Nunca dura, mi suasura Ella lo jura, but then I put the wrong And I'm beefing, no peleo Dejo que pase las cosas, más bien la veo Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que ella yeah. Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que ella Este mundo se mueve con puro poder
drum hit your whole body go crack baseline moves take it off of the map no time to sit on my people's where you at boom boom bap yeah we got it like that kick drum hit your whole body go baseline moves take it off of the map we rock crowds every time we react yeah we got it like that cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Déjame ver otro lado y baja tus brazos cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Sí, sí, caíste. Miraste para adentro y volviste. Sí, sí, caíste. Te desviaste y luego seguiste. Sí, sí, caíste. Pero te levantaste y pa'lante fuiste Sí, sí, volviste y eres mi brújula Te sigo sin Dame permitir. algo real y algo que me tinque Más chiste, menos chisme Dame algo original y algo que me indique Dale fuerte que pique Permítate, pana Yo veo tus sueños cumpliéndose mañana Yo veo tu futuro el reflejo de tu alma No te falta suerte, sigue con ganas Sí, sí, caíste Miraste pa' dentro y volviste Sí, sí, caíste Te desviaste y luego seguiste Sí, sí, caíste Pero te levantaste y pa'lante fuiste Sí, sí, volviste Y eres mi brújula, te sigo si me permites No deje que tu chispa se extinga No deje que tu esencia se acabe Siempre ha sido tú quien determina Si te levantas cuando caes no deje que tu chispa se extinga, no deje que tu esencia se acabe. Siempre ha sido tú quien determina si te levantas cuando caes. Déjame ver otro lado, baja tus brazos cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Déjame ver otro lado y baja tus brazos cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Dame algo real, al, al. Y algo que me tinque, dame algo original, al, al, y algo que me indique, que venga de corazón, son, son, y que me repique, dame algo real, al, al, y algo que me tinque. Thank you. 
The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. After nine hours of competition yesterday, we have whittled down the fields to our final four. Galaris, Stalwart, Seminole, and Q9. Today, we will crown a champion and watch what team will take home the lion's share of $200,000. It's time for the Mobile Masters for Call of Duty Mobile. They are live from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and our teams are getting themselves geared up and ready for another day of matches. I'm your host, Glitter Explosion, here on the English stream, and we've got Ton and Lanex with us to kick off the day Ton, what is going through your head right now after everything we saw yesterday and now preparing for these final matches? Uh, what's going through my head is that we've got some absolute bangers coming up today. Three more games to decide a champion at Mobile Masters. So excited to see who comes out on top. I know we have our favorites, but every single one of these games today could go any direction. So excited to see how it goes down. Yeah, and, and arguably one of the strongest performances that we saw all day was out of Galaris, Lanex, and they're definitely uh, looking pretty comfy in their semifinals right now. But what are your thoughts on today's competition in general? I think today we're going to see which lines of stories we've seen yesterday are going to keep rolling or what, el what else is going to happen when it comes to upsettings. Because as you said, Galaris, they have put up quite a show, but not only them, Seminole also did their homework. So I'm very, very good to see what's going to happen today since we also going to need to see from Q9 and Stalwart, whatever they're going to bring up today, what kind of surprises they're going to execute because this is going to be the day. Playoffs is always playoffs. All right. Well, as always, if you guys at home somehow missed all the action that we had yesterday, you can just go back and look for a quick recap on our social media. We've got X, we have Insta, and we have Facebook. As long as you follow us on there, you'll be up to date with all of the action related to Mobile Masters and all Snapdragon Pro Series stuff. So definitely make sure you do that because when we have the next season for Call of Duty Mobile, it's probably going to be even crazier than what we see here. But for now, we've got to get through today. That's where you want to be to get all of your mobile masters updates. Now, we've mentioned all of the teams that we have participating here. We've mentioned uh, the fact that there's also lots of cash. First, let's take a look at the bracket so you guys can see what squads or where they ended up, really, because we know who made it, right? But now we can see what these matchups will be. We've got Galaris going up against Stalwart, and then we've got Seminole going up against Q9. These are, like you were saying, Ton, these are going to be some really tough matches. Yeah, I think especially semi-final number two is one that we've all kind of been licking our lips at. Galarus against Stalwart. I think a lot of people will be laying in Galarus, but, you know, it's a semi-final of a single elimination bracket now. You can't make any mistakes. Could there potentially be a surprise there? Whereas Seminole against Q9 should be an absolute banger. This is like the first real big challenge for Seminole over this entire event so far. And Q9 are looking for a bounce back after a really poor performance against Galar. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can maybe to potentially get revenge in the grand finals if they get their Q9 off Seminole and book their spot. Yeah, and if you guys are just joining us, just so that you understand clarification, semifinals one and two will be best of fives like we saw all day yesterday. Galaris and Q9 were those t uh, teams that came out of Group A. Stalwart and Seminole were the teams that came out of Group B. When we make it to grand finals, though, it transitions to a best of seven. So an even longer opportunity for these teams to try and get that win because this is what they are fighting for, Lanex. $90,000 to first place. I mean, they're all so close they can taste it they've already made it to the second tier here yes second day is here for them and it's an absolutely astonishing prize pool as you said fantastic two hundred thousand dollars uh playing out for the teams and uh again the four best teams the top ones from yesterday to today are gonna fight for these colored tags right they are the most uh, desired ones in this picture so i'm eager to see how teams are gonna play out this one are they gonna fight for this what else they're gonna show us that they could not show yesterday since it was a very long day as you mentioned nine hours of work and again let's see how they're gonna they're gonna bring this one to the table let's see what else is gonna happen in the maps i'm very curious yeah it'll definitely be interesting to see 
which teams were able to muster up even just that last little bit of energy to go back and do a little bit of VOD review and try to pay attention to what they had going on yesterday. Carry over the good, get rid of some of the bad, uh, because... Let's talk about the matches we have in store for you guys. Okay, you saw that bracket. We're actually starting with the semifinals, too. That's the match at the bottom. The one Ton was saying is going to be an absolute banger between Seminole and Q9. I mean, we have so many good things to say about Seminole. They're one of those teams we've all been keeping our eyes on here, Ton, as a potential grand finals participant. Yeah, look, I think yesterday Brody kind of mentioned that we thought Q9 uh, going up against Galaris was a potential final, mm. and it still could be, but Seminole are the ones who could potentially upset that party. Uh, based on what we've seen from uh, Q9 yesterday, though, I, I think they will have some concerns because Galaris not just, didn't just beat them. They absolutely smoked them. So I think that will really yeah. dent the confidence now of Q9, but it is a different day. However, Seminoles had kind of... I want to say that, you know, for, for the sake of Q9, you went up against some of the top opposition already. The top opposition already. Whereas Seminoles, of, with all due respect to their opponents, haven't played anybody of that caliber yet. They haven't played anybody of the caliber of Q9 yet. So for Seminole, have you had maybe too much of an easy time on the first day and now you're coming into where the big boys are at on day number two and are you ready? Are you at that level yet? That's what my question is going to be around Seminole. If they are, then this should be a good game and a game that they can absolutely win. But if they come in a little bit flat, going up against some of this tight tier opposition, it could be a difficult game for them. Yeah, and you can see some of the highlights from yesterday running there as well. Some really strong moments, but like you were mentioning, potentially slightly easier than what they have to now face off at against in Q9 here, Lanex, a very strong roster. Yeah, Q9 yesterday uh, facing the Brazilian taste, as I stated, because they have just played against Brazilian teams, Inco, and then Galleries. But like Dan just mentioned, they faced the worst uh, nightmares against uh, Galleries. They were totally overrun. And we have a very strong roster here, especially on the hands of Mauchi, since he was a decisive player in many occasions. Not only play uh, in a short positioning, but also from a, a long distance. So a very, very important player. Uh, as we have some images of Inko suffering against them, uh, not only in slums, but also in Summit for hard points. So I'm eager to see how the Chinese are going to perform today since they come from this recovery path. But Semino, on the other hand, Laurie, they have proved themselves uh, not only in a short series against Amigos to begin with, but after in a longer one against the Stalwarts. And this is going to be definitely a banger. Semino coming to face the big boys and Q9 needing to prove more. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how those picks and bans go when we get to that portion of the competition to see which uh, what maps these teams are picking to either benefit themselves or try and ban out from under each other. But we've got some head-to-head -head stats here as well, and they're actually pretty even across the board, which is really just further solidifying just how close of a matchup this is going to be between these two squads, Chris. Oh, yeah. I mean, it should be a really, really close game. Of course, you know, going up against some of the different opposition, it's Seminole with the slightly better head-to-head uh, -head in terms of the actual stats that they have against each other, but I really wouldn't read too much into these at all. Going up against each other, it's going to be a completely different story to have us playing better on the day. The stats in this game, we can throw them out the window. We really don't know which way this one's going to go. I'm excited th that we're starting with this one because I think this is going to be a great way to kick everything off as we uh, will be doing the same thing that we did yesterday. So if you're just joining us, we uh, will have the same type of setup when it comes to getting into these matches. We'll have our player walk-ins. We'll wait for our players to be ready to go for those. And then we'll kind of get into the map vetoes and move into the gameplay process from there. And we are also following along with that main event that is live in Sao Paulo, Brazil right now. From what we saw yesterday, it looks gorgeous because they've got their entire desk outside in flawless weather everybody looks like they're having a blast we've gotten a chance to hear from our players quite a few times on quite a few different things and that's been really fun as well and while we prepare for the first match of the day chat it's time for me to ask you the question that i always ask you i want to know who you think is taking home match number one of the day this one is probably potentially the hardest choice to make when it comes to predictions out of all of our matches here today. Uh, I want to know if you think it's going to be Q9 or do you think it will be Seminole who kicks off the day with a win? Now, remember, we're on day and like Tun said, it's single elimination now. If you lose here in these semifinals, you're out, okay? This is your last opportunity. So it is all or nothing. 
So this is a really important matchup for these teams. And like I was mentioning, we did have an opportunity to catch up with a lot of these squads. Well, one of the teams we obviously got to chat with was Q9. Really cool team profile done on them. So let's take a second to check it out and get to know them a little bit better. Chinese 然后对于我们来说我们只能付出比别人多无数倍的努力我们需要花比别人多的时间我们需要做比别的赛区的队伍更多的研究我觉得不断的学习吧还有进步自己就可以了在我的认知里对于去年沃夫斯的夺冠的
they also just look so comfortable, right? And this is something we've talked yes. about. They've been on stages like this before. That experience really comes into play here. It's not about the nerves. It's about the fact that they know what needs to be done. It's just about the fact that they haven't gotten to do it yet against Q9. Were they able to learn enough from the matches that Q9 had against those other teams and then kind of use that information to their advantage? Or will Q9 surprise them right out of the gate? I don't know. I I feel like I keep going back to the match of Q9 and Galaris as my benchmark because we keep expecting Galaris to be in those grand finals. And I feel like however someone competes against Galaris is potentially a good indication of where they might be in the overall top four on because that's just how good gallers was yesterday mm -hmm. lanx yes you're not wrong there uh, i think you nailed it to be honest uh whatever uh teams are able to do against galleries that's gonna gauge how strong they are over here uh, but now seminar are gonna have the chance to prove that they are also a top dog and q9 they're gonna have to do a little more when it comes especially to a hard point and also search and destroy the modes where they lost yesterday to galleries they have beaten the brazilians uh, excuse me on crossroads with a three and two rounds but that was it it was a very close match and again having won twice against tinko maybe is not enough uh, as a point of support or motivation against Semino because Semino is definitely in another level all right, well, you can see the audience getting hyped to get into this match. Those vetoes instantly come through as well here, Tun. So talk us through as we start things off with that Arsenal hard point. Yeah, for Q9, the first two maps we've seen them go up against Galaris uh, are the first two maps in this series as well. I, I mean, I want to say they got blown away, but they, they really did start to bring it back. And it's something I do want to point out in Q9's favor. I felt like I've said a lot for positivity for Seminoles so far. But for Q9, you think about the performances that were coming through from Galaris... Uh, we, we, we've seen some ridiculous numbers put up against them in terms of the slaying department. I think they got outslayed by like 30 or 40 and only lost by 70. Now, that, that still sounds a lot of points and a half point, but realistically speaking, it's a hill and a bit, right? It's not a great deal considering how badly they got outslayed. So Seminoles have to be careful. They still very much know what they're doing, Q9. They will still play the fundamentals of Hardpoint very, very well. You need to make sure that you punish them when you can, though. But for Q9, what they can take is a positivity for it. If they can match with the slaying, they've got a very good chance of winning the game. I actually really like those points. That's that's a really good shout when we're talking about trying to compare these teams. Because, And this is something we mentioned all day yesterday, too. We have to remember just technically how much limited information and stats we really have because this very few times where we get to see these teams go up against each other on that global stage we see a poll coming through as well and it is dead even 50 50 split for who, the audience who people think are going to be winning this first match everybody that is watching in chat sitting there voting as well i might agree with that lanex this one's a hard call yeah, very hard call, very hard to compare whatever just happened to uh, what we're going to see actually inside of the maps. I see uh, a potential strength on the side of Seminole for Hardpoint to begin with since they come uh, undefeated on this mode specifically. And then eventually uh, Q9 are going to have to use the search and destroy ahead of that. But again, they have themselves lost uh, Tunisia. They have not performed well against a, a stronger team as in galleries so let's see how that's gonna play out and i would stick to what chris said before uh, i mean making those comparisons or looking at the numbers to be more precise now uh can be just a steering uh attempt but that's not gonna tell about the story of the game itself which is gonna be fantastic anyways we'll have to see which of these two teams are able to get a strong start and maybe take home that hard point, give themselves a little bit of a leg up because our first semifinals match of the day is about to get underway. Ton Lanix, let's get into it. Well, here we go. Seminole taking on Q9, a huge game. Who is going to likely go up against Galarus unless Stalwa can upset the odds? Well, we will find out very, very shortly. Into this game we go. Seminole with one player not moving towards the back side, so we'll see if we do continue, but looking like we are. Seminole, the first ones in here, but again, just what we kind of pointed out there for Q9 yesterday, massively outslayed, but still managed to keep it relatively close. Let's see how the game does break down for both these two teams. Q9 very much play a very, very good standard game of hard point. 
But the slaying ability yesterday, I, we say the slaying ability was tough. I mean, they were going up against Lukashin, right? So I think it's always a little yeah. bit tough to compare when you've got to go up against him. Yes, always hard again. But Semino having fantastic players as we see some of them getting out of the map. So, yeah. oh man, for Q9, having won this first gunfight on P1 and now suddenly being taken out of the map must be kind of <laughs> set down. Yeah, one of the players wasn't moving from the start. So there was obviously an issue on the Seminole side. We will get this one restarted, presumably. Referee's already in there. Nice and swift. Hopefully get it sorted. But yeah, I, I think, you know, we can talk about Arsenal Hardpoint a little bit more. I think for Q9, they got massively... I want to say they, they got out rotated for the most part as well. They started to bring it back towards the end. And I think for all that I was making the point of that, it was only a 70-point game. It, at one stage, Galaris were only one point away for quite a decent amount of time. So they knew they were going to get it in the end. They knew they were going to be in a good spot. So they maybe just took their foot off the pedal a little bit. So we can maybe count that into the conversation a little bit. But realistically speaking yeah. for Q9, they know their fundamentals. Fundamentals on Arsenal are so, so crucial. Can they find them to be a benefit for them in this game especially and again to go back to my kind of point of what we said about Seminoles in terms of they haven't faced the toughest level of competition yet here in Brazil so it's going to be a, a bit of an uptick in terms of the opponent's levels here in this game Chris I agree I would say that Seminole yesterday suffered a lot um, from the other opponents when it comes to hard point let's remind that against amigos they uh, suffered 234 points so amigos getting close to an eventual victory and then after stalwart uh did a good job as well they they played twice against them against seminal on hard point mode so yes i agree with you that this is gonna be very very even to say the least because q9 yesterday managed to get almost 200 points against galleries and I mean, there's not a lot of teams in the world managing <laughs> to do that these days, especially now with Lucas in the roster. Again, the super team from Ladder are going to perform later on today. But we are back to map number one with Q9 and Semino to replay this P1. And let's see how this fight's going to go, man. Well, here we go. Everybody inside the point this time around this Q1, uh, P1 time. Q1, Q9, P1. Now we'll get that confused a couple of times for the relevant of that. It's a mixy one to kick things off, but it is a hill. Yeah. I talk about it quite a bit in terms of P1 hills here. Uh, you got, it's one of those ones that if you get to and you can get it locked down, you can get a decent amount of time on this hill. Yes, especially because P1 is so close geography, uh, uh, in geography terms, let's say, to P2. So, Seminole beginning way, way better. This one, of course, the connection uh, fixed up and Q9 feeling that. As Band was fantastic on this last attempt, uh, killing a lot of opponents. Vague again doing uh, vague things, being very, very tight against foes. And as we see now, both teams moving. Q9 is going to try to go for these scrap points. I don't know if it's going to be enough to make a presence uh, in, in this beginning of map, man. But let's see how P2 is going to play out because Semino is already walking to 50 points almost. Yeah, it's a fantastic start from Semino. You take that all day long. If they can stay in the point here as well, the spawns towards the back are fine for them too. One kill going to go in over towards the window side, choosing not to make a push through gun. So keep an eye on that push. That's going to come from number three on the Q9 side. They are not going to get the spawns towards the back. So a little bit of a mix you want here over towards P2. But for Q9, I feel like a, a good start is really crucial. But right now, struggling to find the kills. Seminole wiping the board and all of a sudden, ticking past 60 points already. It's all Seminole in the kill feed. Fantastic start from the NA side. Massive and definitely Q9 not managing to organize this backline. The retake is totally in disarray. And right now they're eventually looking into a hundred uh, points as an edge by Semino. If they keep doing what they're doing now and eventually spreading this quality gameplay into P3 in a bit. Again, Q9 uh, moving, heading nice. over to the next hill, but in a very disorganized way yet. And again, the Q feed getting into the hands of the Chinese. Let's see if that's going to be enough then. Big fight's going on here, though, and the last one over towards the back. Won by Yang Wan. So he's the only one that's actually going to survive out of Q9, but he is going to be a pain. And I think if you're Seminal, you've got to search for him. Hunter Killer Drone is actually out. It's hunting down for him as well. Can't quite find him. Cartels will start to call on the Predator Missile as well, which will hopefully help them defend from this side. It does. They start to hold it down, but the spawn's coming in over towards the back, and that is all because of the one player, Yang Wan, over towards the back side, but they've got to run into Washi. Really good job from him and I later in hand. One player towards the back and Mao Shi is going to find the shots on the Washi as well. So really big kills coming in from both two teams. But it's Seminole still just about in control. 
perfect combination of operators on the side of the Americans getting before into P3 and also managing to use this combo of damage, a massive amount of damage against Q9 who eventually stepped over and here they are using the smoke. We have Ulin trying to use the cloud to intensify, to amp up this uh, level of uh, defensive that they have over here. But I mean, so far the best heal they brought to the table to the game. Let's see how they're going to keep playing out in P4 because P4 is all about getting there before as well and now we see that Seminole is already making the early fights to dominate this one Chris really good job coming in from Vic equalizer out you can't push this that would now be four in a row from coming in from Vic Hunter killer out as well which may well help it along the line but Jinan is also gonna pop his equalizer gets dealt with pretty much immediately though so for all that Q9 Invest quite a lot of operators over towards the previous hill of P3 Seminole do the same at P4 but they're making them count Big kills coming on through. It's a kill feed full of kills for Seminole. And that's going to be another 23 points. 35 seconds or so remaining here over towards P4. Seminole starting to run away with this game already. Seminole newly fine whatever Q9 just did in the P3 and whatever wow. they are trying to do here. And keeping the edge since uh, at the beginning, we are seeing also Sun playing very well, trying to use the cover. He gets back on track. Let's see, this is Sparrow. Okay, managing to take Cartels down. Let's see if uh, Seminole gets to the 150 points. As we see, this P4 already being more of a 50-50 Q9, growing up, growing up on damage and also attempting to have a better map control from this moment on now it's gonna be all about the next hill the p5 as close as it is and this is gonna be very interesting chris rotation coming in around the back for seminal they pick up i want to say 95 percent of the time over towards p4 p5 rotation is here though for the side of q9 could do with some decent time as they're starting to leak points that lead is starting to get a little bit of a concern marshy now with the r9 so good with it yang one though up close and personal gets the job done kill starting to come through here for the side of q9 can they find this next kill here over towards ban not quite who's gonna be able to find two break potentially on the cards here for seminal 35 seconds to play for Fantastic work by Q9, not offering the comfort that Seminar is getting used to. So Q9 trying to come to the game, trying to set themselves before the Seminole, dominating this last half of P5, as we see many battles happening. And the Q feed becomes uh, more hybrid to this point, as Seminole are trying to regain control. They are trying to grasp control over Arsenal to not allow the Chinese to grow. We see a margin of 100 points to the side of the Americans, and they're dominating the last seconds of this p5 already having it over to the first hill again let's see how they're gonna perform this one because p1 uh before this rotation chris was totally american fantastic performance from seminal in the first rotation q9 could not get here first it's felt like seminal have really had the rotations on lock every single time it seems like they're the first ones there and if they're not it doesn't matter they'll find the break and that's why they found themselves with a 110 point lead gravity vortex gun is out though from yang one just gonna try and zone the players off if he can your break coming through from Q9. 40 seconds on offer here. If they can find it, they're only a hill's worth difference behind in this game. Yang Wan's still combining himself here, though, just trying to stay alive. And just something I just want to point out as well. Q9 getting out Slade relatively heavily. I want to say it's about 10, 15, maybe even 20 kill difference. Seminal really slaying well. And that's what's found themselves in a decent lead. Good chunks of time coming through because of the kills, the breaks they can find. But a really good job here from Q9. Over towards P1. 15 seconds remaining here. That's the majority of the time over towards the Chinese. Yes, the Chinese growing, as we said. And I like how both sides are trying to bring uh, the Vortex. They are using it to zone it out. As we saw now, these prize fighters by Young against Marshy. Such a gap closing and he managed to do it. Turning everything here into a box ring. Interesting cartels also getting closer to the second P2. And this battle is getting even more interesting as time uh, passes by. Semino getting closer to 200. But again, Q9 doing a good job. And they are becoming more confident. You can tell by the amount of plays. You can tell how they are managing to get there before. Claw in the hands of Oling. And I like to see those operators making an impact in the game. A lot of operators invested though. Here from Q9, want to make sure they do get something for it. 7 all now forced towards the back, or one player is going to spawn towards the back. It's going to be a spawn out though from the rest. Still 25 seconds to play for here. Q9 have closed the gap. We're going to try and continue to do so. Couple of kills coming through from Seminole. Contested point right now, but the break will come in. Crucially for Seminole as well. Q9 starting to spawn towards the back, so the rotation is starting to come in. Every single point that Seminole get here is just a bonus. 
Or she can find one, but gets taken down. Final few scrap points. Going to go over towards the side of Q9. Seminal will find themselves 50 points in the lead, but they should have been first one there. Split spawn starting to come through. Ao Ling finds himself here. This is a big moment in this game. Yeah, such a big moment. Just 50 points of difference. But the Americans are looking so consistent, right? They are dominating this one. They've never been before or below on points against Q9. And so far, it's still a seminal map. From back-to-back, uh, -back, I would say, since uh, the first moments, the first uh, heal as we saw. And over here, Q9 are trying to respond to that. Mauchi eventually warming up, eventually getting to his peak. The team here needs him. The, uh, the team play needs him as well, not only inside of the heal, but out of it. And as you said, the Americans trying to outslay the Chinese wow. from Q9. And such a fantastic P3 over here by Q9. A fantastic job indeed. Yang Wan just holding it down from the lab side as well. Fantastic work from Q9. Looked like the rotation was initially there for Seminole. In the end, they're the ones to lock it down. Q9 do a fantastic job and make this now a game. Five seconds to go on the previous hill. It's going to be about a 20-point game by the time we do head over towards this next hill. And these transitional kills are so important because Q9 have had such good control. They've had time to set up, but not going to happen. Marshy will find a couple as will Band. Seminole will start to find the rotation in. Vig now with Equalizer did such big damage here last time around. There's two kills already. Did you know where the pushes are going to be coming from? The push now starting to come through from this side. Vig is ready. Equalizer in hand. Q9 are going to have to start pushing very, very quickly. Seminole just starting to rack up the points. Vague now just spraying oh through the smoke. Seminole wow. 25 seconds away. Look at the momentum battles here, Chris. When Q9 was finding their ways, they are finding oh, a, a route potentially to get back on the map. Seminole began killing more. So it's momentum versus momentum. Q9 was beginning to like the map and Seminole, uh, they made uh, their peace with killing more and trading better. As we see Cocktails getting into the point, Planet eliminating Mauchi. Wow. What a game, what a fantastic way to begin this mess of uh, the best of map of five maps series man i'm totally totally emotional Huge. because this game is just gigantic between regions between q9 and seminal huge break coming through from seminal find themselves very very close now the last time around q9 managed to find the majority of the time here over towards p5 they're gonna have this initial break and they will be looking to hold this down, but the spawns towards the back are in. They can find nothing on the other side. Now Cartel's trying to make a push through. Everybody for Seminole spawning towards the back, but watch she with the Annihilator out. We'll find two. Cartel's and Vague combining well. Last player alive inside of the window. Now he's dead to rights as well. It's a clean break from Seminole. Eight seconds away from them now. Spawns towards the back here for Q9. Five seconds for Seminole. You're going to make the push now. If you're Q9, can you get inside quick enough? They're all running in and they all managed to find a way through. Mao Shi manages to find a breakthrough. Cartel's trying to lock this down with the war machine. Gets taken down by the nade. It's one second. Seminoles need to try and find one more breakthrough. But the kills start to come through from Q9. They're just about holding on. What a response. Fantastic. My God, Q9. What are you guys doing here in Brazil? What a game, what a way to keep alive inside of the map. Gotta rotate. Just as Seminole, they were beginning to celebrate, man. But well, let's see rotations now. Five seconds. Oh, Seminole just go for the oh, scrap time goodness. to get the job done. One to zero for Seminole. A huge Arsenal hard point from them. A fantastic start. Things starting to get maybe a little bit scary in the mid game. But they eventually get the job done. Seminole, one to zero up in this semi-final. Yeah, such a convincing way, right, to get back on that last P5 and then not allowing Q9 to respond. But then in the end, the Chinese even tried. They made it, made it a last sprint. On the following seconds, we could see another uh, level of battles. But again, Seminole proving themselves to be better. And uh, I would say they kind of felt how Q9 tried to grow to the occasion in the middle of the map, especially. But they kept their mindset. They kept working and not allowing points for the Chinese side. Q9 again. It's similar story though. They really struggle at the beginning of these hard points. And this time around, yeah, okay, they do get outside again by the looks of things. I mean, you look at Jinan at 25 and 41. These are performances you can't have in this stage of the tournament. Really good game coming out from Cartels though. 47 and 25. Big game from him. And it was just the start that Seminole had. They just ran away with it. It was about 120 point difference. They closed it out within 30, but 
it's when that lead is there it's so difficult to come back from because you got to fight for the scrap you got to fight for the rotation you got to make sure you hold yes. every single second that seminals get at that stage when they are already 120 in the lead is a massive massive point so the fact that they were able to yes. find that lead it just puts you in such a good position really good job coming in from seminal that big lead in the mid game is what made the difference and totally, Chris, both sides escalated uh, when it comes to hardpoint from yesterday to today. You can tell by uh, how much Seminal, they struggled to keep control, as you said, grasping uh, control for spaces and killing. And they have managed to face, finally, a bigger dog. Uh, no meaning with disrespect to Amigos or Stalwart, but Seminal finally facing this kill 9, not yesterday's kill 9, but this today's kill 9, and we could see that they really did well. They were a very, very solid team. And the Chinese, is, uh, from the other hand, they were also trying their best, getting closer, stepping up on points. So, again, the best exhibition so far on Hardpoint Mode, uh, hard mode for Q9. Fantastic work from Seminole. And you make a good point. You know, we mentioned that Seminole hadn't really played anybody of the top, top caliber. Well, they've just dealt with Q9 there on an Arsenal Hardpoint. I think if you Q9, that's two in a row, I believe. You now lost on Arsenal. You probably don't see that again from them. Well, I mean, obviously, if they don't continue on in the tournament. But at the same time, if they do get to a grand final, I don't think we see that again. They've really struggled on that map here at Masters. And that's going to be something that stings because they obviously quite like it. They're letting it get through. That's no problem. Seminole, very, very good Arsenal team. No really good job coming in from them. And heading into a map number two now, Seminoles are going to be feeling really, really good based on how you know we said that they hadn't necessarily played against the top level of competition now they have they pretty much deal with q9 in a comfortable fashion in map number one they've got to be feeling some momentum behind them right now yes and uh okay hard point solved right now as for now when it comes to the series but search and destroy mode is gonna bring a more equalized situation since both teams they have not struggled uh, they have not uh excuse me faced uh, uh, I mean, their their best performances yesterday, as we see some stats from Cartels coming to step up with Seminole, such a nice amount of kills on his side, 47, having been eliminated just 24 times and with assists mounting to 19. So such a great performance, individually speaking, as we see him confident, laughing, and that's the general, that's the overall vibe on the side of the Americans over here. Chris, very confident and... Again, unbeated on hard point, but trying to do better at the bomb mode. I would say both sides are going to have to play a, a very, very nice match in this next map. Trying to do the minimal amount of mistakes that they can because it's going to be definitely a, punish them, a punishment map for them. The one that stings. And now if you're Q9, your last loss when you were playing up against Galoris. You went on to a Tunisia search and destroy after a loss on Arsenal Hardpoint. And you lost that one as well. So for Q9, they need to shut up shop here. They cannot let themselves go 2-0 down. Pretty good control team. But you've got to still be thinking to yourselves, you need to find a win here in map number two. A few crowd shots, they're getting lively. I'd imagine they'll be a lot more lively for the second semi-final when Galoris get themselves on the stage. Should be an absolute banger when it finds its way around. You looking forward to that one later next? That should be a very good game as well, but Galoris has got to be feeling good about it, right? Yes, I think it's going to help also uh, on making the place busier. As you said, the second <laughs> semifinal is going to bring all the Brazilians we can find uh, and love. And of course, the sports and loving Cody M is going to be great to see Galoris performing. But back to Seminole versus Q9. Let's go for Tunisia. Search in this try mode, which is going to be a very technical very, very tense, dramatic map for both sides. And Seminole are going to be playing on the defensive side to begin this conversation. Heavily defending A and also placing some players on the middle of the map with Martian cartels. As we see the first battle beginnings, uh, uh, Q9 trying to uh, make kind of a standard hold, waiting for Seminole to make mistakes. But Seminole is just making everything almost perfect. I really love that. I think it was Marshy. It was in and around the middle of the map, just trying to play a little bit of information. Peeks its way out in the middle of the map. And all of a sudden, you have cartels there to pick up the pieces. Really good job. Washi will take a nade, though. We'll have to back on down. Very low on health, but that will now, of course, give Q9 complete control of the site. This bomb's going down. 
Yes, gonna go to the ground. The B activated now. It's gonna win. be a Seminole's responsibility to get back. Kill nine though, making the eliminations. Sun, Sinan. We have Sinan with the Fanac waiting for more opponents. Nice job, nice defensive barrier. The Chinese <laughs> wall working on the hands of Kill nine. And what a bullet. And oh my god, just like that, we've seen the one new on the Chinese side. Chris, what a great way to begin this map. Uh, looking confident and bringing the push to B without hesitating for a second and also defending the B positioning after that. And, and what I really loved about that, obviously, was, well, Sun finding three. But the nade over towards the back bails Washi out. He has to back down. And that just gives complete control of the site over towards them. Cartels, last time found first blood, will be taken down himself. Nades coming in again. Washi gonna have to back on down. Oh my word. Wow. The shot into Sun is phenomenal. Four versus four now. Those yeah. Marshy will come through the middle of the map, find a couple of kills. And now it's two players left on the side of Q9 to potentially do something. Yeah, it's two versus three. Yeah, Q9 try to respond. Big helping out, and Mauchi is gonna be the last one against two players. And Q9, interestingly, repeating the B choice and facing the consequences of that as Seminole adjusted themselves, their own pace and their own decisions to respond quickly to these major de decisions when it comes to uh, rolling on the map. The bomb is kind of far away, but Mauchi is going to try to get it to, again, look at the Alive players from Seminole's side. Such an interesting bunch of nades, right, Chris? We have to talk about it. It's so feared for so long. Nades and grenades coming from the Chinese side, finally becoming a reality since last year, and now definitely with K9 today. No, it's not a bad position here for Moshi. But he is the one that has to make a move. Are they hearing that? Are they getting the sound cues? I think they have done seminal. Now on their way back over towards B, this bomb is going down. I think he's going to get it down as well, but it's going to be getting out. That's going to be the problem. Shot's going to start coming through. The pistol shot's not good enough. Now she gets away, goes for the child. Nice. We'll find the first, can't find the second. While she comes in with the pistol kills and will even the odds. But these defensive rounds have not been clean from Seminoles so far. They'll find themselves at one apiece, but it came down to a one versus one. Kind of slow rounds, but fantastic ones to watch, right? Very technical, very strategical. And Mochi tried a very hard play here, trying to reverse his body, you know, almost 360 degrees from one spot to the back one. So it's very hard to do that fastly. And even so, he managed to grab one kill, of course, not giving himself the follow-up, which was going to be hard anyways, but Semino are going to be the ones to equalize this one with 1-1, one, one, as we see the round number three rolling over here with just Washi defending the B, but all the players are going to be playing on A, apparently, as Young comes out and Xenon takes Marsha down for this 3v2. Cartels playing very well this map already, very confident. Cartels. He brings two to the ground. Fantastic, fantastic amount of kills by him. Now equalizing for this 2v2. Lin's going to be the one to keep the information line on this region of Tunisia. And the cameraman sticking to cocktails because he's playing so well. Mochi is the man to take him down at this moment. And Wash is going to be the last one alive, Chris. Bomb was down. Samuel knew where it was. I think you'll have an idea of what's going on here as well, Washi. Nobody's made the push. Could find himself going back over towards A, but this is a very, very hard retake when this bomb does go down. And it does so 45 seconds. Now, for Washi to try and prove... And he can do this. This is going to be such a tough one. He does have a sniper, though. The Tundra in his hands. He's going to need to try and find a pick. And hopefully try and gun the second. Making his way through the winery now. Mashi now just holding this one down. Washi should be dead to rights. Mashi, big round coming in from him. Six kills to his name already. Really, really good job. Coming in from Q9. Find themselves in the lead here. That's two attacking rounds out of three. They've managed to find so far. Seminole need to turn this defense on pretty quickly. Yes, and traditionally, as we know, Chris, uh, facing uh, many opponents with the sniper is very hard, right? You, you don't have the, the timing to, you know, take one down and take the following uh, one uh, right after that. So it's always hard to use the AWP on those occasions. And we see Q9 managing to acquire another round as Benz was eliminated. Vague is responding against Mao Chi. And we see the Chinese playing patience here, but no also way. trying to win those... Those pocket battles over the map as Young takes Vague down and Seminole are not looking good on the human side. They're not being resistant to the ends of the rounds. Another gunfight inside of Winery. Absolutely insane win. Yeah.
How on earth has he managed that one? All of a sudden, this bomb's now going down over towards this B-side. Seminal leaking defensive rounds. Washi and Marshy. Now we'll have to make their way over, but this would be some kind of miraculous two versus four if they can manage to find it. Q9 have got this one on lock. Yeah, Seminole. Two players near. And they're gonna have to play tight. As we know, Washi is gonna go for this one, but Q9 finalizes the round again. And as we said before, Chris, such a fantastic and uh, consolidated defensive setup to not allow the Americans to do this retake. It was gonna be hard anyways, but we, can, we have to praise. We need to say that Q9 are doing such a great job as an attacking team, bringing confidence and making the decisions. I think Seminole need to sit tight a little bit more. Feels like they've been offering nice. up far too many first bloods. Big hit going to come in over towards the B side. They're ready for it this time around. Is it only going to be up for one for one trade? Jinan will eventually fall, but as it all plays out, it's going to be Marshy left in a one versus two. How has this happened? Seminole had the numbers over towards B, and yet they still lose it. Marshy now can make a move. Try and find something here, but it's going to be so, so difficult. Marshy now. Does that play a player probably in and around box? Sun trying to survive as his teammate now will do a round of the map. Marshy is going to make the move now. Shot's going to go into Sun who can just not be gunned at all here. That's seven now from him. Q9 dominating here in the search and destroy. Looking so massive, right? And mate, as we know, the Chinese, they like. Q9 loves, loves when they manage to do what they're doing. Getting at the key positions at the points before they are fools and they are managing to be the one dictating the pacing on this map so far such a great great map for them such a way to come from they want to the second playoffs day as we have seen them dominating the first half wow. of tunisia sun already taking bennett down it's going to be complicated for seminal to get back to this one unless they have a very nice and solid plan for the second half but q9 playing with patience not only out of the bomb site itself but also in there as we see a four-man hit coming to B, and the only defending player is gonna be Cartels. He managed to do it. What a bullet! But Sun responds. We see a 2v1 now. The reinforcements are gonna have to come because Marsh and Vega are gonna have to play together on this one. Marshy taking Oling down. Sun in there. A 2v2, which may come to the side of Seminole, but Q9 looking so so oh, confident. No. Sun takes back down. Interesting. Marsh is gonna be the last one alive. Gets the information. But the main bit of information that he has is that he only has 20 more seconds to defuse this bomb. They're just playing with him. Marshy now onto the bomb. Gonna go for it, but this has not been a good start so far from Seminal. Gonna go for the defuse. Not gonna find it. Sun with another kill. It's a dominating performance in the defensive side. Coming up now for Q9. Attack was fantastic. Still smiles on the faces of Seminoles. <laughs> Not too worried about this one right now, but I think they should be, unless their attack is going to be pretty flawless. You find yourself 5-1 down and heading on to that attack inside. Yeah, Bennett, always, always smiley, always confident. I love that. That's the competitive vibe we want to see on high stages. And as you said, Semino are going to have to put a lot more here since they come to the attack inside. Already making B a potential entry point, but they begin to swing to B. And speaking of B, just Sun is over there. But it's not just yesterday's Sun, it's today's Sun. He's got 11 kills on his side out of six rounds. Such a massive performance by him individually, being a major force on the Chinese side as Oleng takes Wash it down. And let's see how that's going to play out, Chris. First blow on the defensive side. Does make things a little bit easier. Seminole have really brought nothing to the table here. Yes. A couple of close-ish rounds, but for the most part, they're kind of just getting gunned in the middle of the map. Giving up too many kills. Not this time around, though. They will start to find a few more. So the first attacking round looking good for them. So Mao Shi completely split up. This big flank coming in from Mao Shi, though. Are they going to be ready for it inside a winery? Big gunfight going to go down there. Mao Shi will be able to find it. It's the fight on to Vague. That bomb in no man's land as well. Seminole. We're in a good position. I found nothing from it, though. Yes. 2v2. Tense 
moments of this uh, round number seven as we see marshy trying to get the information mauchi and sun the best players so far on q9 side playing along now to rob this one again uh, and there it is 6-1 it's a match point for the chinese side what a performance by them uh my friend Chris, I don't know what is happening here with Semino. I don't know what precisely they're talking about at this point, but I mean, they need to do more. Yeah, they need to do a lot more. It's not looking great. They had the numbers there and they did not make it count. Big nades coming over over towards the B side. It was looking like Semino were ready for a big push to come through. They've just been slowed down. They'll back down. And back to the drawing board they go. Q9 in such a dominating position here. I'm just curious if they can close this one out nice and quickly. How good they looked in control yesterday. Yes. Can they get something going? They only need one more round. Push on over towards the A side. Just completely caught off guard. Owling. And all of a sudden, that A site is unlocking key. Seminole will get this bomb down. Bomb to the ground and Q9. Having the chance to keep... Uh, comfortable not having to do some bold decisions since Semino are already very set and they have a nice margin as well but Bent and Marshy grow into the occasion Sun takes Marshy down and this is gonna look daunting for the Chinese but Mauchi doesn't give up he picks one up and he's gonna try to go uh, even more cautious against the three alive players on Semino's side as we have him using the cover with quality trying to bring some a pre-fire over here to gauge the situation. <laughs> but when they came, uh, that's the play that we expect to see from Vague side. Uh, such a nice prize fighter to bring the quality again. And there it is. Is this going to mean that we're going to be another... We're going to be seeing, excuse me, another level, another chapter in this map, Chris? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure about that yet. Seven will find themselves in attacking round. They have the potential to find one of the previous... So, strong defensive sides be damned. It's not worked out so far for Tunisia between these two teams. On the defensive side, at least, anyway. The attack's been quite scintillating. Yang Wan now positioning himself over towards the scaffold. They got caught out here at A last time around from Seminoles, just sending it. Is that going to be the case once again? Big setup over towards the A side, one in mid, and one over towards the B side, who can transition pretty quickly to Seminole yet to make a decision, just looking to try and find a pick. Yes, and Q9 again, very solid, playing with patience, playing with the rounds that they have against Stamino. Cartel is going to try this uh, grenade over here to try to do that preliminary, pre preliminary, sorry, and save kind of damage without having to put your head out there. The link takes Bennett down. We have to remember that Semino, they have beaten Amigos yesterday, precisely at Tunisia, certain destroyer for seven, four rounds, and they need to do more this time against uh, Chinese from Q9. Right now it's 4v4. Still 6-2 to Q9. 35 seconds now to get this bomb down. Q9 Sun holding towards the back. Was looking to potentially put a flank in and that's now going to scare Seminole. They're going to have to do something about it. They know somebody's potentially on the flank, so they have to start making a move in towards the side. Jinan already waiting, but Yang Wan is there to clean it up. There's two more from him and one player over towards the top side. Dealt with Washi Falls. Q9. Find themselves a map. Want a piece in this series. In this first semi-final of the day here on Saturday. Brilliant. Brilliant performance from Q9 and the Search and Destroy. We've got a series on our hands now. Yep. Semino swallowed alive in this map. To be fair. And Semino almost repeating the standard that they had yesterday against Stalwart. When it comes to the fallout of the maps. They have precisely won yesterday against Stalwart the hard point, and then they lost the Express Search and Destroy, so history may be getting repeated here for Seminole, as they're going to need to step up on the control mode in some minutes. But Chris, what a performance by the Chinese, totally dominating positionings and not allowing Seminole to use these the, their individual abilities and, and spread it into a collective way of gameplay. We have seen... Uh, the first half of the map being totally dominated by Q9, and the last one was just a confirmation of whatever happened before. I, I think, honestly, the damage was done on the attacking side, right? They, they looked so fluid. They just seemed to be happy to make any sort of move they needed to over towards the other side very, very quickly, transitioning between bomb sites on the attack and just finding gaps in what was uh, not a very tight defense from Seminole, to be honest with you. 
Poor performance from Seminole, but a really good one from Q9. Well, even things up here in this series. Q9 have got to be feeling good. Now, can they manage to find a way back in the series? They've already done that with Control coming up next as well. They've got to be feeling nice about their chances now. Crucial that they found them out. I think they find themselves down 2-0. to zero. Things are looking really, really slow. But they find the Search and Destroy. Put themselves in a decent position now in this series. Yes. And that all shows us that Q9 really watched whatever happened between them and Galleries yesterday since the Chinese lost exactly also in Tunisia for seven three rounds but then they overcame this one against Seminole and now we're going to be looking at a mode where both Seminole and Q9 are unbeated so far they have the best performances on the championship in this mode to be fair the only teams that did not lose at all over here on control as we see final stats from search and destroy Tunisia Chris, such a massive performance uh, by Mauchi and Son, right? These guys, they woke up today and said, yes, this is going to be our day. <laughs> it shows violence on Tunisia. Really, really good job from Q9. 13 and 4, 14 and 3, respectively. What a scoreline from them too. Control going to be coming up next as well. Really, really good job from Q9 to even the series up here. I, I mean, how do we feel about the control, though? You said, you know, Q9 have looked pretty good in that, but Seminole will still be feeling confident. It's not going to be a, raid, a crossroads either. It's going to be a raid. So that does open up things potentially for the side of Seminoles, but Q9 still will be feeling confident after that search and destroy. I mean, uh, both sides, Seminole and Q9, they have faced Brazilians yesterday on raid control, and they have won by 3-1 rounds, as we know. So it's going to be a potential, uh, potentially hard um, map and mode to predict as we are talking here, Chris. I don't know what is going to happen. I think this map and mode number three are going to be the decisive, decisive points and moments for the series as a whole. They're going to show us the rest of the way, how things are going to uh, come down to what. So I'm very, very interested to see how things are going to happen because Seminole, they have won uh, the hard point earlier today, but not without hardness. Q9, they managed to get back, to offer some level of challenge. And if Seminole lost focus, for example, on Arsenal, I don't know if the result would have been the same because mm. we could see that you know they when they begin gaining momentum they they use that on the scoreboard as well well let's see if they can continue that momentum though into the control as mentioned it is going to be a raid coming up but we are going to go for a very very short break and after it we've got map number three coming up in this series don't go anywhere we'll be right back after this Yo, and D so I don't watch face. Yo, yo, look. See the boy self made, so I don't watch face. No way, I just do myself. On my feet all day, this is see that pay on my boss, art to make hell. But you know about nights in the rain, no pain, no gain. Got a stack that high like shelf. Came in the game, no name, no bust down chain, just me in the world. Men lie, women lie, but money don't. She a bad B with a lady man, that's a honeycomb. You got my belt when I got your belt, don't wear, that's a funny phone. Came a long way from my one trainers, no clothes and a runny nose. Cause I been it, seen it, feel it, believe it. See my inject pump up for a feel it. See nothing, they see no dreaming. Show only team that I'm teaming. Music therapy need it. I'm feeling, I hear it, I feel it, I write it, reveal it. Start, don't stop till it's mission completed. Try, don't drop till the feeling it, deleting. Yeah. See the voice of me, so I don't watch face. No way I just do myself. On my feet all day, this is see that pay. I'm a boss, I'll tell them go. We well, you know about nice in the rain, no pain, no gain. Go start that high, that shelf. I came in the game, no name, no pass down, change just me in the way. Yeah, self made so I don't watch face, I just do myself. Yeah, all day this is see that pay out to take my kill. Yeah, nice in the rain, no pain, no gains, that high like show. Yeah, I came in the game, no boss down, change just me and no one. I'm a real champion G, I'm in the Champions League Man, what you say, we're not talking to me I'm a boss only, right, I pull up in the Jeep 4x4, four four, interior clean Pass it to me, let me score for the team Free no hat trick, living the dream, you see I ain't a regular team Pop champagne, celebrate with the G's All of the work that we did for the P's A-star boy, now I need me a B See my diamonds, cold man, it's 100 degrees Never giving up, so don't do it, please I smell the wind and it's strong like a breeze Everyone raise up your hand to 
the beat cause the night be gon' scream for the ease Jeez, cause I been it, seen it, feel it, believe it See my inject tump up for a feel it See nothing, they see no dreaming Show only team that I'm teaming Music, therapy, need it, I'm feeling I hear it, I feel it, I write it, reveal it Start, don't stop till it's mission completed Child don't drop till the feeling deleting See the voice of me, so I don't watch face No way I just do myself On my feet all day, this is that pay I'm a boss, I'll tell them go We know about nice in the rain, no pain, no gain Go start that high, that show I came in the game, no name, no pass down chain, just me in the world. Yeah, self made, so I don't watch face, I just do myself. Yeah, all day, this is see that pay, I'll tell them it kill. Yeah, nice in the rain, no pain, no gains, that high, that show. Yeah, I came in the game, no pass down chain, just yeah. me in the world. Yeah. We are the champions, we are the champions, we are the champions. Yes, we are the champions, we are the champions, we are the champions. We are the champions, we are the champions. We are the champions, we are the champions. The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. Welcome back to the Mobile Masters, and we have a game on our hands here between, of course, Seminoles and Q9. A fantastic start to the series from Seminoles, but a very slow search and destroy, and a brilliant one from Q9. It will even this series up, heading into control. We're all tied up. It's myself, Ton, joined by Linux. Man, I, I don't know which way this series goes now. Honestly, after seeing Seminoles map number one, I was really scared for Q9, but a big bounce back in the search and destroy. It's anybody's game now. Yes, and that's what Q9s usually does. And that's what they did yesterday, like by winning confidence all on the way and managing to secure a spot in this day number two. And Semine are going to have to do more. I think they're going to have to uh, get back on that kind of mindset that they had on uh, Hardpoint and especially yesterday as well. They're going to be... They're gonna need to be, to be fair, at the seminal that the American fans, that international fans are used to see. But again, Chris, this is the kind of series we love to see, right? With a lot of uh, highs and downs and a lot of chances of getting back on track. And that's what Q9s try to do. 
They're trying to. It was a really good performance in the search and destroy, though, and I think control for them has been pretty good, too. So can they manage to find something here on raid and put themselves into a lead? Uh, just having a look at the rest of the series, actually. I'll, I'll have another run through. We do we do have a hold of it. We did have the stats. Uh, having a look at it, it's going to be raid coming up, obviously, and then we are going to get to see Apocalypse as well. Slum search and destroy will be map number five if we need it. Hasn't been too many map number fives, but this kind of screams of, of it for me. I, I mean... It, <laughs> I'm curious to see which way this one goes because I think, honestly, from a hard point standpoint, Seminole just looked fantastic in map number one. But Surgeon Destroy, it was very much Q9s on Tunisia, although Slums is relatively similar in the kind of way that it's played, that you would expect that defensive side to find a few more rounds. So I think if it goes map number five, I'm feeling Q9, but if it doesn't, of course, then it would have went towards Seminoles if they can find the control in the hard point. Yes, let's see how that's going to happen because... Um... I, I would say that control mode is very, very uh, balanced. It's very tricky. You think you're on a certain pace in during the series, and eventually, if you're not focused, you can just fall down. We have seen that happening. Uh, yesterday, we have had a lot of very straightforward matches, not, uh, needing, not, not, not needing to go longer than that. But with these two teams, I'm very, very good to see because... Uh, what's going to happen because they got uh, themselves like similar win rates as we know chris and semino of course stepping up winning a lot of maps and of course that's going to add up to your confidence but when you face a team that's struggling that's trying to defend the honor of their region and country as q9 is trying to do here uh, then you can have yourself another level i don't know how that's going to play out let's see which side is going to begin the map more confident uh, considering the positions they're going to have in the beginning so all these uh, these elements are going to are going to be very decisive here yeah we should be jumping into map number three pretty shortly i uh, just waiting on the guys getting themselves set up for this one uh, what kind of prediction would you have here for the entire series now though that we're sitting at one to one here lanex which way are you leaning at this moment in time I think we are looking at a five map series as a whole um, out of the five possible maps. And that will be just great. That will be uh, for the Brazilian fans in Sao Paulo, Brazil, a very, very nice warm up to whatever is going to come ahead. Uh, since Gallery is going to play later on against Tower. But again, I think Seminole, they're going to want to to fix some situations that they have faced uh, so far especially when it comes to using the duels and the trios, uh, which is something that Q9 did better in Tunisia, as we, ju we just saw before. So I think Q9, they are uh, charged on, you know, they're spot on on the mission to try to do uh, their best here in Sao Paulo. Let's see how that's going to go. And I mean, the solutions that Seminar are going to bring to themselves here. I feel like you give me, a lot, you, you said a lot of things, but you didn't give me an answer. <laughs> <laughs> What you want to know precisely? <laughs> Come again. I want to know who you think is going to win this series, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a tough one. That's why I escaped. <laughs> I was dodging you. Just like Q9 was dodging Seminole previously. But I think eventually in the end, Seminole, they're going to bring this one. Because uh, they have they have this kind of element uh, that we say that we see usually in, in great teams. Uh, and I'm speaking specifically about the the getting back on track the recovery power uh inside of a game they have showed us this before yesterday and so far they have not uh they have not uh stumbled down against uh many many major opponents as we know chris so i'm i'm, I'm gonna go for seven what about yourself uh, i honestly after that search and destroy I, i'm kind of feeling q9 and five to be honest with you I think they can find the control here. I think they'll lose the hard point, and I think we'll go to a map number five that they managed to win. But I'm not too sure. I think it's Ooh. difficult. Of course, both these two teams very well matched so far, but both maps relatively one-sided, but in different directions. Into map number three we go, though, and we are going to what is, for me, the best Call of Duty map of all time in red. We're heading there. It's going to be control between yeah. Seminole and Q9. Seminole going to be the first on the defensive side. Q9 on the attack. Attack is slightly more favored for the most part. But can Q9 manage to find it to kick things off? Seminole need a bounce back after that poor search and destroy. Yeah, classical B push as we have seen uh, all along the day yesterday. But Seminole trying to come for this one. Q9 were better on the uh, bullets level as we have just seen. But it's still it's a very uh, open and wide battleground at this point. Cartel's 
trying to come for this one seminal managing to have four kills on the lead against q9 in this beginning of the mansion the most known mansion on Cody M map pool, as we know, as Young was over there coming through the mid. We have a broad vision now, and the, I mean, whatever is gonna happen from now on is gonna definitely shape the rest of the round because the first gunfight brings an energy, brings motivation, and now we're gonna see uh, a more of a positioning gameplay on both sides. Yeah, not the worst of starts from Q9, but not the best either. And a little bit of presence over towards the A side. A couple of kills starting to come on through. Marshy will slow that down. No player in particular making any moves yet from Q9. They're in a good spot to do something about it. But look at this pressure coming in from Seminole. They're going to just completely take over the spawn. They need to make sure they do find some kills on the other side of things, though. You can already see the potential spawn trap being set up. A couple of kills starting to come through. They're going to start spawning in Cubby over towards the garage side. So Q9 coming off the respawn. We're going to start to find some kills. Actually, it was looking like the spawn trap could potentially be set up. But now, all of a sudden, you have control of A. You've completely lost your control of your spawn. Yes, but you have control of A. You get that locked in. Lives just about in the favor of Seminal. But only ever so slightly. Yep. Yeah, buddy. I would call that, not yet, uh, eventually a spawn trap, but a spawn bugging, right? Because <laughs> some Q9 players, they were uh, going there to bug, to poke, and to try to eliminate Seminal players who are now heavily committing to B. We see just Vague now alive, but he was taken down right after. And Q9, just like that, regaining the Q's advantage. We can see that we have two or three players over here trying to dominate this spot. They're gonna there totally, go. you know, step over this region, but Semino is trying to respond with whatever they have. It has to be now. They only have five lives away from seeing Q9 scoring one new. Wow, Jinan. Fantastic work from him. That's going to pretty much solidify the round now for Q9. Seminal, just not enough bodies to do anything about this one. And honestly, they set themselves up for a really nice spawn trap over towards the garage side. Could not quite find the kills when they... I, I mean, look, when you invest so much time and so many bodies over towards that garage side to commit to that spawn trap and you don't find it, it can be a huge dagger. In the whole entire picture of the round. Fantastic work coming in from Q9 to battle themselves out of that one. They got a hold of A. They transitioned to B very, very quickly. It's going to be an A hit coming out immediately from Seminal on their attacking side. Q9, are they ready for it? Looking like they are. Plenty of mid-map control. First couple of gunfights. Going to start going the way of Seminal. Young one can answer back here as well, but need to bounce back if you're Seminal. You're starting to leak rounds in this game. Crisp. Well, that was rough. And Q9 beginning uh, a little bit lost on the beginning of round number one, but then they became more fluid as a team moving and killing. And we have seen them uh, growing here in raid. Again, Q9 in this round number two. Wooling, what are you doing? Taking cartels and turning him into a John Doe with a flower over his casket in the best case scenario. What a bullet that was toxic. Last one, Q9 managing to have some kills uh, ahead against Semino. And Semino, <laughs> though, are trying to come to the B, but there it is. We see Young. It's the fast pacing kills, right, man? That's so cool to see. Q9, fantastic start. Oh, and all of a sudden, that's how wow. control can change very, very quickly. Yes. Get a few bodies <laughs> under the point, and then all of a sudden, things can look a little bit dangerous. Ban now, starting to get some control over towards Laundry. Will, of course, have the Purifier. One kill, two kill, coming in from Ban. Now starting to get aggressive, expecting the push. Q9 are going to have to give up B. And then with complete control of this map, they lose one flurry of gunfights. And B is gone. And A is now under pressure. Ban still going with the Purifier. Manages to find three now, putting massive pressure on the spawn. Seminal in a potential good spot to do something here about this round. That looked entirely lost at one side. Yep, that's the regain spirit from Seminal. Trying to get back on this one. The Purifier was fantastic. But is that going to be enough as Q9 begin? Also gathering, piling up schools and killing more at the end of round number two. As we see Malchi trying to move by himself. Such an interesting solo movement. Slowly Q9 begin to dominate the core of the map. Malchi moving with the equalizer and doing uh, his invested. Things, dancing slowly. Q9 protecting the A and it's going to be down to this one. Big investment coming in here from Seminole, though. They know they need to find something here. One minute to go. Lives are very, very low. Seminole now completely run out. Washi needs to find something with this Annihilator. He has found one kill already. Looking to try and get something going. But every single kill that comes in from Q9 is going to just spell trouble for Seminole unless they can start to turn it on to four versus two. Seminole need to try and find something. 
They back on down. There's two players left remaining. Sun will find Vague on the flank. And it's all down to Cartels. Q9 really starting to turn up in this series. This would be so difficult for Cartels to find anything here. Doesn't even find one kill. Big celebrations coming in from Q9. 2-0 up here in the control. And apparently, Chris, the timing when it comes to reversing things for Semino is usually on the middle of the rounds or maps. It's not usually on the ends. We have just seen that happening again. Semino not finding the forces, the power to get back on the end of round number two as Q9 is looking stronger and stronger. And, the, you know, the clock is ticking on their favor, to be fair. Now, as we see... Q9 gonna play, is going to be playing on the attacking side, and they already defined that A is going to be their priority. Big push coming through. Money cleared out here as well. If they can get a bit of kitchen control, then all of a sudden this is so, so bad for Seminole. And the problem was for Seminole that they invested a lot to get a hold of that round, and they found nothing from it. Q9 invested themselves too. But they're the ones in the commanding position here now. Good shots coming in from Jinan. Push over towards B starting to happen as well. Two ticks already over towards A. And it just seems so seamless from Q9 here. Yeah. Just feels like this control Great. gameplay is working out so much better in their favor. So now. Yes. Bit of a waste Stepping if I'm honest two. with you. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing so well, right? And I want to know whatever uh, Sun has put in his juice today on uh, breakfast because <laughs> they, <laughs> they are going well, but he's the man. 20 eliminations right now out of two rounds. We're going to move to the end of the third round. And just like you said, I mean, the fluency on Q9 side is just bizarre. They are just moving as they want to whatever they want. And speaking of which, they're moving as a squad, as a block now to uh, come through the garage and try to do this push against A, but Vague looking pretty solid here on the bedroom. We see him with the equalizer falling down. Such a great job again. Wow. Whoa! Vague, four eliminations in a row. What a player. What a nice roll by him to help the team to get back on track. Uh, on the top of two eliminations come from the Pratt missile. So what a guy. He's totally bringing the team back. Fantastic work coming in from Vague. Felt like Seminole needed a spark to get them back into this game. Mashi has managed to find a way out though, but the problem now for Seminole, yes, okay, they may well be leading on lives, but it's one segment needed from Q9. They need to find one decent break, and this might be it. Good shot coming in from Mashi. To find one was okay. Vague will find another run to Sun, and a second as well onto Yang Wan. Aoling investing. The Annihilator's out, and all of a sudden... Things are starting to open up here for Aoling, who can find the second as well. A third to his right-hand side inside of basketball. May well just be the only thing slowing it down. Only four players remaining. Finds the shot, but Cartels does as well. Three players remaining from Q9. They're going to drop. Fantastic work from Seminole. They will hold this one down. Unless Q9 can find something. Unless Sun can continue to shoot like this. Two versus five. This is still doable, but the Hunter Killer drone is out. And that's just going to be so difficult for Q9 to deal with here. It's looking like Seminole will find a round back. Really good job from them. But Sun, can he find anything here? Looking to try and pick his way through. Big gunfight about to come up. But Sun's going to find it. Two versus four. Seminole choosing not to go for this. And oh my goodness wow. me, how has this happened? Oh, oh, oh. Mao finds it. Sun left in a one versus two. Yeah, mate. Not only two alive players on Q9 side, but Sun and Mao Chi, super, super players, having such a gigantic oh. array of power. Cartels finalizing this one. There it is. It's in the Americans' hands again. So nothing is totally lost here for Sam and Chris, as we've seen this nice regain effort by them. Bringing bullets slowly, trying to read better Q9, redominating the map. And there it is. We still have a raid control happening. So they just about find it. They nearly fumbled that one, Seminole. Washi kicking it off with a good sniper shot through the middle of the map to try and gain some control. But this push over towards this B side starting to come through now for Seminole. Big hit over towards the side. Last round, they fully hit over towards the A side. Vig and Washi, though, starting to combine. Seminole starting to wake up here in this control now. You got looking very good for them, yes. but they still need to find two more rounds. Yeah, needing to come back. We see many, many small battles being won by Seminole out of a sudden. They kill him more, Bennett kill him more, and slowly as time passes, apparently the window for Q9 to drop this one is being closed. Q9 
because Seminole are gaining confidence. They're killing more. Cartels is playing by himself, but that's just a smoke to the real play that is happening here by Seminole. And I'm talking about A. They are trying to step over this one, but Young comes, brings a pair of kills. Seminole responds with Marsh and Vega. What a moment in the game. Very decisive spot here on Raid, my friend. United have defended it well, though. Gravity Vortex gun is out. Young one finds one. You may well find a couple with that one, not quite making it land. Shot's going to come through. Cartels is the one who can get it done this time. Cartels will find a second. He's being lights out here for Seminole. And he's really needed to be because they have not been at the races in this one. Vegas had a good game as well. He needs to continue to do so. Seminole pinned back just a little bit, but with the will lock be down. 16 versus 16 in terms of the lives. The setup here now from Q9 is very, very deep. They've got nobody through the middle of the map. They have to win their gunfights. They're not winning them at all. Band is winning That's every it. single one that wow. has been offered. And all of a sudden, Q9 packs against the wall. Yeah, they're back on this one. Seminole struggling, fighting the best they can. Marshy fighting some kills on the right Doesn't flank. Let's be frank. Cartels with the UL looks like he's holding the claw in his hands. It's such a massive amount of damage. We see Kill 9 striving, but there it is. Seminole having the chance here. Shot's starting to come on through. Seminole still with the chance. Vague now. Equalizer out. Washi here with the Annihilator as well. The second shot is absurd. Sun will yeah. fall, and Seminole oh. now looking so good to tie things up here in the control. They were looking dead and buried after two rounds, yes. and all of a sudden, Q9 have got nothing to answer to what Seminole are doing. Two apiece now. We are heading to our round number five. Oh, my Lanta. Man, what is happening here? I mean, mentality, the mindset of a champion, the mentality of the best team currently on NA is totally, totally in their favor. It's been a buff for them here. As you said, looking totally lost and buried alive, but you're back on track. 2v2 on rounds. We're going to need the, the fifth round to erupt this one up as we see Marsh here ready. Coming to be, it's going to be a heavy investment by Seminole to this region, but Unite's not offering them the space. They are trying to fight as well. Uh, they're on bullets, Young. Killing him and Oling taking big down. He comes out of the cover. Such a such an even end of map. Oh, huge from Band, but he can only find one. The purifier invested for only one kill. Mashi eventually gets rid of Mashi in the middle of the map. Now the push coming in through over towards this B side. Seminole trying to find something. Washi is going to manage to find something. Once Yang Wan though finds the kill and nothing found from Jinan. A lot invested here from Q9. B is already gone. And they just seem to be crumbling now. Q9 were in complete control of this game. They're barely getting a kill. Seminole in such a good position to do something here. Owling has to do something. He's found two. He's found three. Can he find the fourth from Owling? Shuts down Seminole. Massive plays wow. coming out from Q9. They needed to find something. And that might be the something that finds them the game. Huge moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's their moment. Are they going to seize this one or they're going to watch Semino keep growing? What a game, ladies and gentlemen. That's a fantastic comeback uh, attempt now by Q9. That's a response to Semino's comeback some rounds back uh, uh, ago. And we see Cartels coming for this 1v1. Let's see what he's going to be able to do. Nice work with the UL. He's treating the UL, which is a heavy weapon, by the way, Chris, as an SMG. It's almost a pistol on his hands. It's so light to carry around. He's doing a fantastic job, Cartels, here. Coming and growing to the occasion. As we see, 14v14. Both sides very, very tense. Let's see how that's going to be dropped out. Couple of kills coming through from Seminole in the middle of the map. Marshy will find a free one here on the Marshy. And all of a sudden, it just feels like Q9 are starting to turtle up a little bit. They're starting to sit with their backs against the wall, waiting for the push to come through from Seminole. Not getting any mid-map control. Seminole have 50 seconds to try and find a break here over towards this A side. Next couple of gunfights are going to be huge. And neither one of these teams want to give anything away. Jinan on the outside over towards the pool. Waiting for the push to come on through. And it's just slowed down massively. As the push now starting to come on through. Yang Wan, Owling, dealing with everything that Seminole have thrown at them. Jinan will find another. And for all that Seminole were taking their time, they're running out of time. 10 versus 11, Q9. Holding this down, 20 seconds. You've got to move if you're Seminole. Yeah, Can't find anything. Gravity Vortex yeah. going out here now from Q9 as well. No gunfights are going Seminole's way unless Cartels can do something here with the War Machine. Manages to find three. 
Five lives left. Make it four lives left now from the side of Seminole. Q9 just about gonna hold on. Seminole cannot breach the defenses. And Q9 find themselves in the lead in the series. 2-1 up. Ah, that's a vibration. Yeah, the beast is out there. Oh, he wants to hear what comes from the American side. What a provocation here. Chris, nice result. What a, what a reverse. I mean, Seminole eventually looking like they began waking up to the map too late. Uh, in Q9, they were able to regain positioning and regain confidence, rework themselves to drop this one. Okay, in the toughest possible way, but nothing new to them. They have done this yesterday against Galleries, and now they have just, uh, you know, replayed the same scoreboard against Seminole. Fantastic job from the side of Q9 to find themselves now in the lead and i honestly it comes back to that moment i want to say from all lying over towards the bike seminal got such a good start on that final round managed to find themselves with b pretty much immediately and the push around yes. the back started to come through our ling with the annihilator finds four to shut the push down entirely huge moment maybe the best play of the tournament so far coming in from q9 three two in the control find themselves in the lead they've got two more maps to secure their first spot in this grand final at mobile masters they are one more map away yes and i love i love and like uh, how the chinese players they rotate between themselves to help the squad as a whole we could see that this time only was the mvp on their side stepping up and helping Mao Chi and Sun on some situations. So the Chinese team, uh, they were very patient to see how Seminole were gonna play and were gonna try to rotate the map. And Seminole, they did their best. I would say, I would dare to say, Chris, that this was perhaps the best exhibition on Seminole's side when it comes to control uh, on this championship or at least at Masters. But now against Chinese, uh, the Chinese players, I'm sorry, from Q9, I don't know, that was not enough. Let's see how they're going to adjust to the sequence, to the follow-ups on the series. They just didn't start great, right? I mean, they got absolutely smoked in the first two rounds. Really wasn't a great start. Then they started to wake up. They brought it back and they had the opportunity. I mean, they had a fantastic start, as mentioned, in round number five. But it's just a huge moment from Ao Ling over towards the back. Fantastic job from Q9. And this was it. You'd already found one before this one, two, three. There's the fourth as well. Insane shots coming in from our link with the Annihilator. Crispy as you like. As efficient as possible. Really, really good job from Q9 who are starting to get hyped. They find themselves in the lead in this series now. And they've got to be feeling confident. We're heading into a map number four now. I believe we're going to go to Apocalypse. I don't know how you feel about it, but... With the way that that just turned around, Seminole, where are their heads going to be at? They've got to be feeling really down after that one. Q9, the momentum definitely feels in their favor now. Yes, uh, we've just seen the massive amount of damage they can begin causing with the operators. We've just seen what Uling is able to do with the Annihilator. So we need to talk also about what they just done with the Equalizer. So a lot of players stepping up and helping their squads, meaning that this next hard point is going to be uh, huge and we see some stats from Oling just to keep talking about the man of the map we see 34 eliminations on his side died a lot meaning that he offered himself for the team he was there trying to do the bold movements in place and assisted six times what a great performance by him definitely holding the hands of his mates and doing more than yesterday oh incredible moment from him towards the back and just doing such a good job Fantastic job by Q9. Put themselves now in a spot to close this series out and potentially get an opportunity for that grand final. They are not far away. Only one map, in fact, to getting themselves there. I honestly, I, I still think Seminoles have a chance. Based on what happened in map number one and how they played that Arsenal, it's very much down to your fundamentals on Apocalypse as well. You need to make sure you're rotating. You need to make sure you're locking them in and finding the time where you can. They're very good at doing that. Can they do it here, though, to force a map number five in this first semi-final of the day? We said it was going to be a banger. It has been. It's went all the way down to the wire on map number three. First two were very one-sided, but in different directions. Map number four incoming. Apocalypse about to start. Do Seminole send us to a map number five here, or do Q9 close it out? 
Yes. And it will be massive by kill 9 to drop this one. We don't see Ben smiling anymore. Focused as he should be. And the team is talking about what they need to do. And we also have to remember, Chris, that both teams, they have won on a smaller hardpoint map yesterday. Kill 9 they have beaten Inko in Summit. And Seminal did the same in Summit against Amigos. So, yes, indeed, they do know how to roll a smaller map. It's going to be such an interesting uh, occasion to see that happening in Apocalypse. And that's why I'm making the comparison, because Summit and Apocalypse are both hardpoint maps and smaller ones than Hacienda, than Takeoff, than Arsenal. So let's see how all of that's going to play out, because it's going to be a smaller space to play on. Well, here we go. It could be the last map of the series. Q9. Can they close this one out, or will Seminole? Send us to a map number five. Map number one, which was the hard point, of course, on Arsenal. Went Seminole's way. We'll have to do the same if they want to see this map number five here on Apocalypse. Great start. Cartels has been fantastic for Seminole. The entire tournament, the entire season. On the North American side of things as well. But Q9 just do not want to go away. Good stuff from them. P2 spawns are going to be paramount. Right now, it's looking like it is going to be Seminole who are going to be locking them in. They're spawning out now, but they got one player over towards that backside. You've got to keep an eye on the rotation over towards P2. Which is coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah, such a fantastic early control map by uh, Seminole dominating the first spots. But then Q9 began responding. They were also helped by the respawn flip. We could see that some players begin responding on the very extreme uh, uh, left side of the map. So that's going to keep playing out on their favor. We see now that ch the Chinese side is beginning to control the spawn for the P2 and also stepping over this next hill let's see how that's gonna be helping them ahead since seminar are not playing this one just to get back home definitely they want to step they want to do more and they're gonna begin fighting for this one as a potential retakes being set up by the americans washing doing very well he was taken down by zinan on the following seconds and the points are being very coherent very very loyal to whatever happened before in this series chris q9's keeping a hold of the spawns though no oh, washing and vague have done so well there though wow man they managed to just fall into the clutches and all of a sudden the spawns over towards the backside for Seminole. Gonna help out Howling will find two before he does fall. The pressure coming in here from Q9 already. Equalizer out from Maoshi. Does he find a lot with it though? There's gonna be the second, the third as well before he falls. But ultimately it will be Seminole. They didn't have the rotation over towards P2, but they managed to get a hold of the spawns. 20 seconds now remaining towards this back hill. Looking like Seminole gonna pick up every single one of those seconds. Unless Sun has something to say about it. Eventually we'll get shut down, so rotation's gonna be coming in. Seminole. The winners of P2. 10 seconds remaining. It's going to be about a 25, 30 point lead by the time we head over towards P3. Yes, and this edge by Seminole looking very, very sound. They are looking so confident. A full, almost full dominance on P2. And then P3 is going to be active. It's going to be out there for both sides. And Seminole already trying to create an edge against Q9, who are going to have to strive. They're going to have to do a little bit more and try to get inside over here. But we have Cartels with the War Machine. Being decisive again, killing two, eventually three. But that's Owling on the other side to also respond using the war machine as we have just seen. Marshy tries to step over. Seminal regaining control. Q9 is not giving up. This is such a huge battle between such huge teams as we are seeing Seminal potentially looking at a 75 points at the end of this uh, of this uh, queue over here. Chris, I don't, I don't know, but Q9 already takes whatever I just said down. Trying to get some sort of control here, Q9. It's felt like Seminole are leading the dance at this moment in time. A little bit of control. A little bit of scrap time. Rotation in there for them as well. Q9 just seem to struggle on the rotations time and time again. They lose the gunfights at the wrong time. These transitional fights, so to speak, never seem to be going their way. Although those ones <laughs> are all going to go their way. Q9 with a good rotation <laughs> over towards the next hill. And Jinx Seminole, apologies to the North American fans. Now Ling, though, starting to heat up here as well. Q9, a good opportunity to find themselves back into this game. Yes, as you have just said, the Chinese are reversing whatever we say. So let's just uh, keep sticking to facts. <laughs> Strictly speaking, <laughs> just kidding, because Q9, they are showing us so much since yesterday. So, yes, uh, they are just doing massive here against Seminole. And Seminole, as you have just stated, they are... You know, winning those transitional gunfights who are so essential for setting up before the foes. Seminole now behind on points and Q9 looking stronger and stronger as time passes by. 
Hyunnan surely are not gonna uh, lose their second hard point today against the Americans from Semino. And we see such a middle a map a battle here to see who's gonna set up better at the P4. Yang Wan finds three or four. And then around the point, still Q9 can't hold down, but they will find themselves in the lead down. Really good hold over towards that P4 hill. We head back over towards the start of the rotation. No. And again, it's Q9 in control of P2. Can they keep a hold of the spawns this time? That was the problem last time around. Gunfight starting to go the way of Q9, maybe a little bit more as Washi and Vague will combine to counteract that. 50 seconds to go here at P1 and Seminole in control. Such a nice offer uh, challenge by Semino against Q9 it's because they dominated the hill. The Chinese were obligated to regroup and be patient. And again, the solutions uh, on the side of Q9 apparently come always from uh, 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 several uh, uh, kills in a row. That's what they need now. It's begin winning the fights against Semino uh, since the Americans are looking solid now at this uh, hill currently. Uh, let's see how things are going to play out to the next hill since both teams are already uh, doing those side battles. We see cartels against uh, uh, Mar uh, against Mauchi, excuse me, to win the lurker battle. And Mauchi did a better job. He spawns. They've lost it again. Seminole are finding such a good amount of work, I want to say, over towards this P2 rotation. But now Sun still has control of these spawns. Can they start to find the kills here? If you're Q9, you're in a good position to do so. But Band will find two. Oh, and some will commit suicide as well. It's just not worked out in any sense of the imagination for Q9. Really good hold from Seminole, though. They've got 50 seconds on offer here now. Yes, nice job by Semino, rotating from that uh, second P1 to the second P2. Nice transitional work again, just like you said before, and dominating the objective, not allowing Q9 to respond to this one. Q9 looking spread out, looking a little bit lost on pace, and they're going to have to regroup to fight for this one, because winning those small 1v1 battles is looking harder and harder for them as Semino <laughs> draws a lot. We have Marshy, speaking of which, my god, Bennett! Also with the Purifier! What a nice amount of kills happening to help Semino over here. And surely they're gonna want to capitalize on that uh, as the map keeps rolling on. Unfortunately for Q9, you've committed far too much towards that end of that P2. That scrap time was fought over. You find nothing. And now Marshy starting to rain hell on you wow. from up top as well, moving into the next hill. Seminole now find themselves in a decent lead. Transitional kills are there again. Banned. 25 for him. 25 for Cartels. Washi's right alongside them, as is Marshy. Really, really good job here from Seminole. And the thing with Q9 making the push over towards P2 so often, even when Seminole had it locked down, you start to feed streaks. You start to make it just that little bit harder to come back into the game. Seminole want to see us in the map number five, and so does everybody else. Q9 starting to find a way back into this one with 40 seconds to play for. They need a good hold somewhere. Yeah, you can almost tell me the Chinese, they are feeling, right? Q9 is feeling. They don't want to choke, but Seminole is playing so well now. We need almost all the battles, and also on the top of that, dominating the hills. The Chinese, they're going to need to bring the best of Sun, the best of Mochi and Lo Ling again all together to try to get back to this one because it's looking not so good for them. There it is. As just we say, Mochi gets in with the uh, CX. We are seeing Q9 trying the best. This rotation could be kind of, uh, I don't know, tricky for them. Let's see how they're going to fight this one. Got to try and find it. It's felt like Seminole have just been a step ahead at every single point of this game. Washi investing now as well. Predator missiles starting to come through. Q9 starting to find a couple of kills. They absolutely need to find a break here. Jinan now with the claw will find another. A lot of investment coming in from Q9. 45 seconds yeah. to play for here. If they can pick it all up, they will not be far away from Seminole's lead of 189. Yeah, nice development. Combination of Purifier and Claw, always, always decisive, always massive. We see Young, he has not stopped, eliminating two at a row and dominating the control point. The heal itself, as you said, definitely getting closer to Semino. And Semino, they know that they cannot fight this one without losing a lot of lives. So is it worth it? Should we rotate to the next one? That's the question they are doing themselves right now. They still have control of P2 spawns for when they get there again. And that is really yeah. where they have dominated here on Apocalypse. If they can find those positions once again, they'd be in a really good spot to potentially win this game. But that's a huge gunfight going to come through from Maoshi. Really good job. Continue to survive there as well. That's going to be the spawns now for Q9. 
They haven't been able to hold them, though. Every single time they've had to spawn some P2, they have not been able to lock it down. But now we have a 20-point game, and now we have a kill feed just entirely full of Q9, but Vig, he turns that on its head. The wow. equalizer out, three kills found. And now the pressure will start to go back on towards Q9. Seminole still in control of the point. Vig just oh God, running five. through absolutely everybody. Five kills to his name. Seminole in complete control of P1. Six. He's not there He's yet. Still Seven. Vig. He's still Vig. going. Seven. Vig. Eight. Eliminations. My God, what is this straight right now, Vig? You are just a beast. My God, what he's done now. Such a great job to definitely put Seminole back on track here, Chris. P2 rotation is still going to be crucial, though. Q9 need to start winning some gunfights around that side of the map. Control is looking like it is going to be there for Seminole once again. This has been their bread and butter every single time. These P2 rotations just looking so, so good. And you can't do that on the biggest money hill on this map. Now, if you're Q9, you need to find a way through and you need to try and lock it down. You can't even get anywhere near Ban locking it down with the Purified G9. We'll find two, though, and the spawn towards the back. All of a sudden, there's a potential now for Q9 if you can find the kills. Spawns towards the back. Can you continue to get something done here? Big kills coming through from Vig, Marshy. Everybody combining. It looks like we're going to head to a map number five. Yes, look at that. <laughs> Washi, double elimination. This is gonna have to be called the map of the operators, right? Because every single one using everything the they have at the same time. And Q9 finding a spot at P2, finally fixing the situation and not allowing Seminole to get back. Seminole are gonna have to play for the P3. Are they gonna go for this one? It's such a nice nade by Big. Let's see how things are gonna be playing out. Apparently, it's not worth it anymore. And Seminole, they back. know this, but they keep fighting. They keep trying. They keep coming from the back line to try to recover. I mean, that's a lot of kills just now following the way of Q9. Yes. A lot of operators were invested as well. The move over towards the next hill. Young one, if he can get up close and personal here with this purifier, that would be massive for Q9. Seminole still eight, only eight points away. The hill going to be popping in a few seconds, but the kills on transition start to fall the way of Q9. They smell blood in the water. Sun Mashi starting to combine. They oh. find a breakthrough. Seminole still only needs seven, but Q9, 30 points away. They found the break. They've got the hold. What is happening here? Q9, such oh, a great kills. job. The hill is not yet on and the American's hands. We are, we're going to have to see this investment now, Chris. Is it going to happen? Is they found it gonna them all. They're all dead. Q9. Yes. Wow. This is going to be so good for them. Q9. 14 seconds away. Seminole 6. Washi will find 2. But he needs some help from the rest of the team. And now starting to spawn. What's about? They can't find the kills. Oh. <laughs> they can't find them. Q9 are 5 away from a grand final spot in Mobile oh. Masters. What? what a comeback from oh, the Chinese wow. side. <laughs> 3-1 victory! How have Seminole let that one slip? No way, man. No way. Q9 on the finals here at ESL Mobile Masters. Eliminating the Americans from Seminole in a crazy, absolutely crazy, astonishing and delightful to watch. Apocalypse Hardpoint. What a game, what a map. A lot of comebacks, a lot of highs and lows. And Q9 makes it in the final. What an incredible game, but Seminole, they had the rotation, they had P2, they, they, they didn't, they, they didn't lock it down, I don't understand. Yes, I don't get it. Chris, this is not the Seminole that the fans are used to watch. They have not been that aggressive as they should have been. I mean, what just happened? They won the first hard point and then lost on Apocalypse as we see both teams greeting each other. What a game, man. Definitely, definitely an effort was brought up to the occasion by Veig, by Band. That was not enough. What a game. Mauchi, 51 kills on Apocalypse. Huge game coming in from him. And it felt like yeah. the, the whole story of the game was around p2 right i mean it felt like seminal were locking it down every single time the first few rotations of hills it's really where they got the majority of their points they had the rotation in on that third rotation of hills they had p2 on lock they lose the gunfights q9 get in q9 hold and then if anything seminal over commit to try and get some control back again over towards p2 lose every gunfight again 
And all of a sudden, Q9 have the spawns for the next hill as well. A misstep from Seminole has cost them dearly. And they are going to crash out of this tournament. Top four. Very, very close map number four between these two teams. But Q9 will be the victors. They will walk on into the grand finals here at Mobile Masters. In the deserved grand finals as well. Fantastic in the search and destroy. Brilliant in the control. Maps three and four. Insanely close. And they will be fighting for that trophy behind them in a couple of hours time. Yes, what a great, what a massive victory here, Lauren, as we have seen Q9 triumphing and getting to the finals. Such a great uh, amount of numbers as well as we have just seen. Sun was the team player here, having more than two minutes inside of the objective itself. So he was the master OBJ on this occasion. And Olin and Mauchi stepping up and helping him. So as we have casted before, the individuality helping uh, Q9 to get away from this hard situation and classify to the finals. Yeah, I, I mean, that's gonna sting, okay? That's, that's gonna sting for Seminole. Six seconds away from being in the grand final, or from saving the grand final's chances, at least, and bringing it to that game five. I mean, that was a well-fought back and forth between both of those teams. Uh, you could see that, that Seminole definitely struggled uh, in that first S&D, and, you know, Either way, we knew it was going to be close back and forth, but this Q9, the Q9 we see today, looks ready to be in that grand final stun. Yeah, I, I, I think for me, where they were turning around was really in their operators. We've said that these big games between these really good teams always seem to come down to these moments. And look look how far away they were behind. They yes. were 2 4 2 one, seven, five down. And what the Seminoles didn't only found another what six uh, what another two points while well, Q9 found like 80 on 90. Are you kidding me? Just an incredible turn of events. How on earth did they turn that around? Just the clutch factor. I, I mean, you go back to that control as well, Lauren. You think of Ao Lang and, and and the four that he found with the annihilator and the control. Insane mm -hmm. plays coming out from him and the rest of the Q9 team. And honestly, it's just those clutch moments where they came up with it. Time and time again, the Sentinels just didn't have an answer. Fantastic game, though, between those two. Yeah, they, they handled the pressure very, very well. I'm excited to see now who they face off against in our grand finals because up coming up, we still have Galarus and Stalwart, and that's... I think everyone's going to have their eyes on, on Galarus for that, seeing what they can bring to the table up against Stalwart, who actually had a really good day yesterday and kind of brought their chances back to make it to the stage of the competition. So we still have loads of action in store. So when it comes to uh, our Call of Duty competition here, we get a peek at the MVP. I mean, Lanix, you were talking about him, son, MVP after that performance. Well, Q9 Sun enlightened. He casted light over the quality gameplay level of the team. Fantastic stats with 37 eliminations and dying 34 times. And I was talking about him, uh, as you said, Lauren, because he was massive as an OBJ. And we know the OBJ is the defensive uh, role that a player plays inside of a hardpoint mode. Uh, sticking to the objective, is staying right there, inside of there, being disciplined enough to wait for the reinforcements but he played so well such a massive performance and all that comes to show how organized the chinese team is placing one player for that kind of play and using all of the others to also fight a lot and uh, uh, fight for the slaying positions so it was such a great and massive performance by them yeah you know q9 are now really going to be fighting to keep the title in their region this is going to be a really important grand finals for them they've got something to prove here and now it's going to give them an opportunity to sit back relax and watch who their potential competition is going to be an opportunity to take some notes on how they perform uh heading into grand finals and see what they can kind of do with that information so if you're at home make sure you're settled in because the way that this day is going to play out is probably going to be insane and uh you're not going to want to miss a single second of any of the action that we have coming up around the corner but that's just our first semi-finals match of the day we still have one more to go before we get to that though it's time for a short break so don't go anywhere you're watching the snapdragon pro series
soy un santo Pero estaré hasta que no estés Si quieres me largo Si vuelas yo vuelo también Sobre el asfalto Más vale mala que buena conocer Por eso aquí te guardo Una bonita Te busco la noche si no estás pues parto Parto la pista En busca de otra para llenar el cuarto la noche si no está pues parto Parto la pista En busca de otra para llenar el cuarto Yo quiero tenerte, tenerte, tenerte por mí Yo quiero tenerte, tenerte, tenerte por mí Yo quiero tenerte, tenerte, tenerte por mí Yo quiero tenerte, tenerte, tenerte por mí
party. Pull up in your space and I don't say sorry. Everybody fading, looking for the Rari. I'm not everybody, I'm not everybody. Wake up feeling like a 10. Call me an Uber and he pull up in a Benz. Wake up feeling good again. On a good time, so I'll bring my friends. I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. You could kiss the ring, I'm the best. Unimpressed with the rest, I'm the best. I'm the best. Will you come closer? I know what you like. Promise you'll come over. We'll have a good time. Have a good time. If you come over, you can spend the night. Spend the night. Promise you'll come over. We'll have a good time. We'll have a good I'm the best, time. I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. You could kiss the ring, I'm the best. Unimpressed with the rest, I'm the best. Damn, I'm awake and it's morning. No around and it's getting kind of boring Why? rain falls down and the rain keeps pouring rain keeps pouring rain keeps pouring damn me feel good when the sun come up glass in the air better light one up friends are all around and they say what up what up pass that cup i'm the best 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 you Why? kiss the ring i'm the best unimpressed with the rest i'm the best will you come closer i know what you like Promise you'll come over. We'll have a good time. We'll have a time. If you come over, you'll kiss me in the night. Promise you'll come over. We'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. I'm the best. Time. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. You could kiss the ring. I'm the best. Unimpressed with the rest. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best.
The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Snapdragon Pro Series, where our semifinals match number one on the day is done. And it's Q9, who are the first team to secure their spot in our best of seven grand finals. Now it's time to find out which team will be facing off against them for semifinals match number two. And it's going to be a good one to be sure. We've got Infinity in here now joining us for that second semifinals match. And if you're wondering who it's between, we've talked about it a few times, but it's Galaris versus Stalwart. And uh, I think the hometown crowd, Brody, they're going to want Galaris to not only win, but win in a dominant fashion. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, everyone is expecting that as well at this point, right? Especially with how Galaris performed yesterday. The crowd were behind them then as well. And Galaris, I just think on the whole, they looked so, so good yesterday. They were feeding off the crowd energy. We talked a lot about that yesterday, about how the crowd were uh, giving them a lot of hype. And I think they were definitely feeding that in towards their gameplay. The way in which they dispatched with Q9 yesterday, one of the best damn teams in the world, one of the teams that you guys just saw clutch up an Apocalypse Hardpoint versus a team like Seminole, they made it look so easy. I mean, the, the control was the only game of the entire match in which they had any resistance whatsoever. Galaris are a force to be reckoned with at the moment. Yeah, and well, I think everyone has been keeping their eyes on Lucasine because of the individual performance that we've seen there as well. So definitely a squad that is going to come in today ready to absolutely dominate, but they're going to have to go up against Stalwart. And we were talking about this over the break, Lanex. My biggest concern with this is the fact that Stalwart lost to Seminole. Seminole just lost to Q9, and Q9 yesterday lost to Galaris. You've now got essentially Galaris in that first place spot playing the fourth place team in Stalwart. So tell me about this squad and like what you think they could possibly do with that. <sighs> Yes, it's very interesting to see before uh, right at the image we just uh, saw here in the screen that Lucasin apparently was replaced by Plinaris, who's the sixth player. I don't know if that's going to be like that, but I did not see Lucasin on the pick, so I don't know if that means a, a replacement over here. Uh, yes, definitely the man of yesterday, the man of the team. Uh, I mean, he needs to be here, especially on a semifinal match. So it's going to be very interesting, Lauren, to see how both teams are going to play out this one because... Uh, again, Galleries yesterday just needed seven maps and they won six of them. So they have a shorter campaign, a shorter track. Uh, on the other hand, Stalwart, they were the most, let's say, tired team. They needed to play 14 maps and they have won six of them. So they are uh, perhaps more tired or uh, mentally ready to this kind of challenge because they have more material to study as well. They have watched a lot of uh, opponents, so they're gonna definitely explore that against the massive super uh, team of galleries. You know, and that was something we talked about a lot yesterday too, Brody, was the idea of burnout. Obviously teams that had to go the full distance were playing for mm -hmm. nine hours, and that definitely takes uh, an experienced player to, to be able to kind of mitigate the the exhaustion that can come along with that and and navigate and still perform the same in your last match as you did in the first match able to rest now and come back today hopefully refresh but like Lennox was saying they should have more information on the side of stalwart at least to try and work with here when it comes to going up against Galaris. Yeah, and the thing is as well, you saw Stalwart, unlike a lot of teams here, they played every single team in their group. So you've got a lot of information mm -hmm. to work off. Um, Stalwart yesterday, though, I think a really weird team to gauge. We knew that that group was going to be a lot closer. Stalwart, though, they had to go to two different game fives, one of which was preventing a reverse sweep. That was against the Rejects, and they got trounced by Seminole. So I think it, for me at the moment, when we're matching this Stalwart roster up against this Galarus team, yeah, all right, they had nine hours of play yesterday, so I kind of, maybe you can put an asterisk on that game number five versus mm -hmm. Amigos. But even so, it does somewhat feel like a mismatch to see this Galaris team that were running through teams yesterday, running through Q9 yesterday against a stalwart team that were struggling. I think specifically looking at game modes like Control and Hardpoint as well, especially in those respawns. Yeah, and Lanex, that's not even adding in the addition of the crowd, specifically for Galaris after their matches yesterday. We saw family members, friends. I mean, they had their own Galaris section of everybody in their yes. merch, hyping them up, celebrating their wins. And there's something to be said for that level of support. 
Definitely, since galleries is a very, uh, uh, I would say, a welcoming organization, also bringing all their influencers team to the occasion of the studio, to the arena. So definitely that kind of support uh, helps you to, to stack up your gameplay level. And I'm eager to see how that's going to buff them also today. And on the top of that, taking uh, that idea uh, here to the table of discussions, we have also to mention that, indeed, Seminole yesterday, they have uh, faced uh, uh, Amigos and Stalwart that maybe mm -hmm. uh, may have boosted their confidence for today, but then they have just faced a Q9 in a long match and we have just seen what happened. So galleries cannot commit the same mistake, mentally speaking, as Seminal and maybe consider that yesterday uh, could definitely define things on the way of uh, the day number two. I'm assuming that galleries are going to keep working hard and co keeping focused, I would say, to not allow their opponents to, to grow to the occasion because Stalwart, as uh, Brody has just stated, they are used to longer matches. And I don't know, galleries, mm -hmm. they have not shown yet their resistance capacity. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Uh, hopefully, Galaris isn't going to underestimate their opponent in Stalwart because that would be the most epic time to not do that. And we, to be fair, we see sometimes those uh, mental slips. We literally just saw it in the last semifinals match where you thought Seminole was going to be able to close out on that hard point at 244 yeah. for however many minutes, almost two minutes, I think, at that point. And... It is the teams that lock in, like the Q9s, who are like, it's fine. We just have to play our game that are able to bring it back and then tie it and then win Brody. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I was really gutted, actually, that I didn't get to do any analysis on that matchup, just because, honestly, <laughs> like, my face, like, our producer probably would have seen it. Like, obviously, he gets to see our faces and stuff when we're not on screen. <laughs> my face for that entire last 90 seconds of that last hard point was just, like, pure, like, shot. I was just like constantly and um, ton will probably use that as a meme at some point um but yeah i mean it is very easy i think for you to slip up in those situations at these kind of levels right it is very very difficult especially deep into these matchups for you to make those mistakes but you can't you cannot do that especially if you're stalwart here i want to say that much especially if you're stalwart going head to head with a roster like gallerist now maybe again i'm not too sure whether it plin is playing or not in place of lucasin if he is mm. that's a massive gamble uh, i know that they're still very good with plin because uh, they obviously won a uh, latam uh, season without him but still that's a massive gamble nonetheless though you've still got to have your guard up if if you're still what you can't be making those kind of mistakes that we just saw from Stemmel. You can't be going this massive scoreline up in hard point and end up losing it to a roster like Galaris because Galaris will take advantage of that. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the player walk ins because then we'll have our answer to the roster question on mm -hmm. the side of Galaris when we can finally see who they end up bringing in and uh, getting themselves ready and settled on the stage. So we will be getting to those in a few short minutes. We're just waiting for uh, our that second group of teams to be ready to go. Of course, following along with that live event from Sao Paulo, Brazil. So we just have to make sure that everyone there is all set up while we hang out and chat all things about this matchup. Um, chat. While we've got the time, then I will ask you for your predictions nice and early this time around for this second matchup of the day. Will it be Stalwart as a little bit of an underdog here in this situation for semifinals match number two? Or will it be Galaris, the hometown hero, the one that everyone is expecting to win? And as I say that, we see the stage. It looks like it's getting ready for everybody to come out. And while we see that, I think it's a good time for us to give a huge thank you to our presenting partner, Samsung Galaxy, for providing these devices you see the players using with a game changer in combination of speed, power, and mobile AI. Victory can be yours with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. Graphics render in real time with ray tracing for hyper-realistic shadows and reflections, while the bigger vapor chamber keeps the S24 Ultra nice and cool for a smooth gaming experience. You combine that with an all-day battery, the brightest adaptive mobile display, and the new Galaxy AI features, and you can expect to have an epic mobile gaming experience check out the samsung galaxy s24 ultra to play like the pros that you see here today obviously we have to give a huge thank you you can see all the players there they've got their selfie moments going here brody they're getting prepared ready to go they've been playing on them all weekend and the stage of course is just gorgeous 
Yeah, it is. I love this setup, man. I, I know, obviously, you know, there's a ton of uh, setups there for these guys to play on, but it's just so cool seeing these kind of guys playing on LAN again. When so much of this play is played online, to see these guys in the situation where they can play this awesome setup with the crowd right in front of them, you know, these crowd get to watch the, the, these awesome games. Um, again, it goes back to that conversation point we were talking about where you've got a squad like Galaris that are playing on home turf here, able to feed off the crowd in a setting like this. It's such a rare experience, and once you get into the groove here as a player, in that situation you really do feel it so i think uh, yeah for sure it looks awesome and uh, yeah you know shout out to for esl and snapdragon pro series for putting the whole thing on yeah it's going to be exciting we can get into this second semi-finals matchup too uh now i know where you both sit on the prediction for mm. the team that's going to win okay i'm not even going to ask who you think is going to win <laughs> i want to ask while we get to see these walk-ins oh. i want to ask where you actually think the strengths and weaknesses might be for these teams where's an opportunity for stalwart to take a map off of Galaris, or where should Galaris potentially be maybe concerned and something that they hopefully will have worked on from yesterday to today and birdie i want to start with you yeah, I'm really glad you did, Lauren, because uh, I honestly feel like, and this is going to upset a lot of the stalwart fans out there, so brace yourselves, folks. This is probably going to be a 3-0. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I think just looking at what we saw from Stalwart yesterday, looking at what we saw, we saw from Galaris yesterday, and what we've seen historically speaking from Galaris in the past, they're a very, very strong hardpoint team, and they're also a very, very, very strong search and destroy team. Uh, Stalwart have struggled uh, in hardpoint and control over the last couple of days, and really, they do share that weakness between these two teams, right? Again, control is really the only map so far. It looks like uh, where Galaris could potentially lose a map here, Lauren, so it feels like that maybe is where Stort were able to take a map away in this one. Maybe they take the search and destroy. Either way, it feels like this is definitively a Galaris win for me. Well, I love that. I love that. Okay, Lennox, I want to hear your thoughts on the on the two teams as well now. Yeah, I'm going to have to second what Brody just said because Galaris so far is undefeated on hardpoint and search and destroy, having 100% of a win rate on those both modes. And on the side of Stalwart, also, yes, a complicated hard point and control is going to mean that Stalwart is going to need to win the search and destroys. Not only the first one, but the eventual second search and destroy map here. And that comes to say that they're going to have to prolong the series because galleries, they're going to want to rock this one fast. They're going to be the one to uh, the team to dominate the pacing and try to already, uh, you know, apply a three new uh, as Brody was stating. I think it's going to be a way more one-sided semi-final match as compared to Seminole versus Q9. Okay, I love it. I love it. Well, we also got our answer to the roster question. All right. We saw that the we saw the walk-ins happen there. Everyone yeah. honestly looks really happy, but we do see Lucasine there uh, with the with the squad. So yes. now we know that that was you know just a, an older roster photo. We might not even have caught that yesterday. That might have been what they had yesterday, and we didn't even notice. And. Uh, this is a now slightly even scarier Galaris squad going up against Stalwart. I like that you guys pointed out where there are opportunities for Stalwart to potentially maybe take a map off of them. But as they do their uh, ritual pregame hype chat team bonding moment, uh, Brody, you saw how wild you heard how wild you can still hear how wild the audience is right now we have air horns we've got clappers the the crowd is going wild and we also now have our vetoes yeah for sure so looking over towards these vetoes then just very quickly here starting things off on an arsenal hard point and that's going to be interesting because we've seen this three times from stalwart esports over the course uh, of this weekend thus far and uh, well twice they've won it at uh, one time they lost it that one was versus uh, that seminal squad that we already kind of knew were looking pretty good uh, over there as well so i think they should be okay uh, and they've also avoided uh, galaris's best map pip there uh, but we saw both uh, summit and arsenal hard point for yesterday uh, from galaris as well and obviously as uh, Eagles already said, Galaris are flawless in hardpoint. They haven't lost one yet, meaning they won uh, both of those maps uh, when they played them. So the hardpoints, I think, are looking still pretty good for Galaris. I expect them to still be won. Stalwart, though, they've got to look for an opportunity. Maybe they find it back in the, the Express Search and Destroy. I think that's a man one, too. I look at all of the Galaris fans. Everybody looking very excited to see how this match is going to play out. Our players are already sat down. Everyone's starting to get all of their gear ready to go, which means that we can't be too far away from our second semifinals match of the day. I want to see what this prediction looks like as well. 
from chat and the audience to see where uh, they kind of fall I, on uh, the, the side of who's going to win or lose because I feel like it might be a little biased. Might be just mm. a little bit biased. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Bit. <laughs> and Laurie, just to add up to the show, uh, again, galleries here represents Brazil, represents Latin, and now they are not only doing that, they are representing the whole Western region. If you want to call it like this, the whole hemisphere is going to have to vouch for galleries if they are geographically driven as, as it is. But again, we're going to see if galleries are going to survive and go to the finals, because on the other hand, we have Q9 already there and also stalwart representing the asian region so it's gonna be a massive massive uh, challenge for galleries apparently i would even dare to say their biggest challenge on, on an international stage and, and since they have came actually uh, to call of duty mobile all right i love that you see a little last minute fist bumps on the side of stalwart they look pretty locked and loaded ready to go a few moments to themselves to kind of get themselves in the uh, right mental state before they dive into what I'm sure they are expecting to be tough because we're in semifinals of the best teams in the world. This is not about to be an easy road for any of these squads, but uh, I can't tell if they if they look a little nervous here or not, Brody. Ah, man, I, I mean, to be fair, I think both sides to a certain extent, there's always going to be that level of nervousness, right? I mean, you are again on the main stage here. This is one of the biggest events that Call of Duty Mobile has ever had. $200,000 on the line here, I remember. And, uh, you know, for both of these guys, you're in a single elimination setting, so you get no second chances here. It is do or die time. And I think Stalwart Esports in particular will be nervous going up at the Galaris roster. That again, a reminder for you folks at home, if you didn't tune in yesterday, Galaris, they didn't just beat Q9. They beat down Q9. And you can see this, I think, reflected here in the head-to-head. -head. You know, again, the KD that we see there. Um, they are looking very, very strong at the moment. Comparatively to the stat lines that you see here for Stalwart Esports, where things look a little bit more even. You can kind of see the struggle that they had yesterday in their group to escape it. A little bit more laid out on what these stats actually look like. Little bit of an insight here, but I feel like I feel like it never tells us the full picture here, Lanex, because there's so many more things that go into it. But it does highlight at least even just the difference in aggression on behalf of Galaris. Yeah, you're right. I mean, these numbers show us that Galaris were uh, slightly more efficient, uh, efficient, efficient. Sorry, to stay alive and to kill. On the other hand, Stalwart maybe they were more exposed to eliminations. But that does not mean that they not uh, they did not succeed. I mean, they're here, so they have uh, uh, they needed to have better dialogues with the objective, and that all that's gonna play out in some seconds, some minutes, as both sides they get ready, and there it is. We have the beast. We have him <laughs> sending pieces to the crowds. <laughs> not only being such a great player, but also a very charismatic person. So such a great pre-game for them. Uh, the confidence is there, Lauren. Let's see how that's gonna turn out into points. <laughs> I and this is the other reason I love LAN okay because you get those small moments where you can see the personalities of the players really shining through it's just I mean he's just having a good time he has been spoken to by the interviewers so many times he's had the other players give him respect so many times he's had the 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 casters both in brazil and on our stream you know hype up his ability so many times so there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders and every time he's risen to that occasion getting mvp constantly putting up good numbers and still being able to have fun with it that's that's the mark of a, a an absolute s tier player brody yeah, I mean, Lucas is just so fun to watch, isn't he? Uh, you know, he's got a personality. Uh, you know, we saw that yesterday, both here on stage and in the interviews. And he's also happens to be relatively good. Uh, he's, he's okay, I think, at COD Mobile. I think we've seen that uh, from his gameplay. He also broke a record yesterday, I think, with his 64 kills. <laughs> yeah. It was the map number yes. one versus Q9 of all teams, in which I think yeah. he got that one. Um, Galaris, I think, oh. are just so lucky to have him aside. If this is a poll, this cannot oh. be a poll. This cannot be a poll where 75% of people... I mean, look, what? okay, you guys, if, if you're all stalwart fans and you're supporting your team, you know what, you guys go nuts. 
I appreciate it. It's great to have the confidence, but you're going to need it against this Galarist squad because these guys are on fire at the moment. We, we talked very briefly there about Lucas and Lauren and going back to the interview yesterday, I think it was Rabalo that said a lot of the teams view him as, or this team now, as the Avengers picking up Thanos. And I, I don't think there's mm -hmm. more apt description out there. It, it, it's yeah. a, a perfect comparison, uh, but we've got we've got to talk about that poll. That is <laughs> crazy. I actually love that we're getting that much stalwart support here, at least on the virtual side of things or whoever's in chat with the voting, because you know that Galarus has the local support in their favor. So this is... Uh, just really, really impressive that we're seeing still these fandoms coming through nice and strong. Lots of love there for Stalwart, which I also really, really enjoy seeing uh, because when it boils down to it, at the end of the day, Lanex, all of these teams deserve to be here. They're all literally the top in their region. That's why we're even at the stage of the competition. So they should be proud of their achievements thus far. Yes, totally agree with you. Yes, these teams, they have worked so far and so oh. hard. And as we see Mihawk using his traditional <laughs> posture here with the uh, with the leg up and that <laughs> that suck is so traditional of him to use that on, on land events uh, and also with the pillows. But again, looking at Gallery's squad right now, Laurie, we can see the confidence. And it's very interesting to see how Lucas is he's at home. He's feeling comfy. He's even sharing his confidence with the roster and we see here a lot of those galleries influencers i i told you before very very cool to see them all together uh cheering for the brazilian alive team and we should also say about uh, lucasin lauren if you allow me because lucasin before back in the day when he was defending in cold colors uh, there was a lot of discussion into the brazilian and latin community about uh, him playing alone, uh, not being uh, backed up properly by his mates, but now he's feeling totally, totally uh, uh, ha uh, help happy and, uh, of course, safe on that kind of uh, environment that we have just seen. Yeah, I think that was a really good show. Now we know where the air horns are coming from as well. It's the Gallerist <laughs> influencer section as they're hyped and ready to go because semifinals match number two is ready to go. Brody, yeah. Lanex, let's get into it. Alrighty, thank you so much, Lauren. Let's get into it, folks. We've got one team in the grand final, still the Mobile Masters already. Let's get another one there. It's Galaris versus Stool Esports. No second chances. You do not win this. You are done in top four. And it all kicks off here on an Arsenal hard point. It's Stool Esports. They're going to touch the hill first. Yeah, such a great uh, first gunfight on the side of Stalwart already dominating the key positions. As we see Pop Zero trying to respawn, he's gonna try to come for this one in galleries. Just like that, they regain the rain. They managed to steal this one from Stalwart, who already acquired some uh, initial points on P1 and equalized situation over here, buddy. Galaris answering back. They've already got control of P2 here. Still a wealth of time to go for. So I can't imagine Stalwart are going to give this one up. They're going to give this one last look. Skurd with a double channel alongside a teammate. He's going to pick up one while Incendio does end up going down. But nice trade from Lucas in to take that player out. Ultimately, Stalwart Esports here with that last little investment in towards P1 here. Haven't fully got themselves over towards P2. Pabzera with the advanced positioning is actually already going to be here. Already picking up a couple of kills. But it is not enough right now to give control to Galaris here for early on P2. Yes, anticipation on the side of Star Wars, smartly done. Galleries are gonna have to bunker up, are gonna have to bring the whole squad to fight for this one. But we see that Star Wars, they are very well positioned so far. But Mihawk is trying to deny that. But FD uh, comes back on track as well. Pocky, it's such a hybrid, mixed up a Q feed over here. And Galleries retake this one just like they did on P1. They are again uh, uh, on a powerful position, Brody. Yeah, it's going to be Stalwart with the back lines here. Galaris trying to force this one through the front. They've already started to pick up the gunfights in their favor as well. Let's see if both can do anything towards the hard point. It's going to get shut down by Hen. Mihawk also covering from the mid connector as well. Can anybody find their way through? FDX does, but he does immediately get traded out as is probably expected from Lucasin here. And again, same kind of situation as last time here. Eagle. You've got to be careful if you're still in this situation. You cannot afford to keep on hitting old. You're now spawning out towards the old hard point as well. Galaris should be the first to be touched on towards new, but there's going to be a big gunfight going down. FDX who already has a streak in his back pocket. If he can perhaps take out Vapsera towards the back line, maybe that would have been a way in for Stalwart towards his next hard point, but it's not a gunfight. He wins. 
Yeah, it's complicated. We see now the Annihilator on the hands of Lucasin. That's gonna be massive eventually. He's gonna be getting close to the, to, to the positioning with his mates and Stalwart managing to poke, to bug, to bother. And Galar is not allowing them to be so, so strong oh. on the hill as we see Lucasin trying to step that up. But he was immediately eliminated. Uh, now, a, a massive combination on the side of Galar is evoking four eliminations. What a moment by him. Such a nice pack of kills to totally burst the audiences in Sao Paulo, combined with two double eliminations. Such a pair of kills coming from the grenade, and just uh, like that, Galaris uh, scales up to 80 points. Yeah, that was a big moment for Galaris. It should, I was going to say, shut out Stalwart on this hard point. This is still scrap time worth going for. We don't want to overinvest as once again, Galaris, for what feels like the fourth kill in a row here, have got the first player to touch on new. That's going to be Fock 8 with the R9. He can do some serious damage, keep a couple of players at bay. It might give Galarus first look over at P4, but he's going to go down. His presence is enough to keep Store away for the moment. Shadow's going to bring out the Sparrow and does get a couple of kills. So a bit of space now being created by Store. Nice follow-up of a double from Clove as well. Galarus now spawning out on the other side. So this is a one-dimensional attack from them. They're looking to just brute force their way through. Lucasin and Hen survived the early engagements. Galarus, they're in. Yes, Galarus going for the 100 points as we see managing to dominate firstly this one but stalwart managed to also make the break up we're seeing now incendio coming up this is gonna be a very interesting p4 stalwart also trying to resist and as we know brody yesterday both teams managed to begin their series winning arsenal hardpoint galleries versus q9 and then star did the same against three jacks and amigos so none of these teams have lost so far in the beginning when it comes to arsenal hardpoint that's a very nice stat for us to bring here yeah but galleries's win was against q9 it was a big one to start their series right so we have to yeah. keep that in mind that we know galleries are very proficient on this map as they cross the 100 point barrier based off scrap time for the first time here in this hard point, still what are going to be the first team to touch on a hill. As they manage to get control of P5. One player around the back line though, Hen, is going to get spotted out here by Incendio. It's going to be a big 1v1 around the back line for the spawns. Incendio is now going to win that one. And I think Galaris was somewhat reliant on the fact that that gunfight was going to be one around the back line. Now they have to just go in by themselves. The trades are not looking good. Clove for a massive double. It's going to mean that Stalwart hold on here for the second. Galaris now, though, getting some players spawning in towards the back line. They can start to approach this from all angles. The kill feed lights up. Boo! And Galaris are in. And Lucas in loves P5, specifically speaking on Arsenal Hardpoint. There it is, using the cover. Nice combination of movements. And just like that, he's still alive. Third, oh boy. four eliminations. The man is unstoppable. He's doing the streak. He's not over yet. And Falka is, is helping him with the R9 again. Such a nice and blasty combination of damage on the side of the Brazilians to play against the stalwart who are going to need this second T1 Brody to get back on track. Yeah, you have to make sure you get some of this time for Stillwart. To be honest, they're not that far behind in this game at the moment. They're 50 seconds behind the likes of Galaris, but they don't want to find themselves not in control of P1 because if they don't, they might find themselves very deeply out of this game very quickly as well. But in they go, right into the claw of Mihawk, who picks up a couple of kills. Wow. Incendio will find some resistance on the opposite side, but now it's Stillwart who have been unearthed from this hard point. And I said it again, there is a wealth of time to get here. This is a crucial moment here in this hard point. Galaris, if they get this time, Stillwart will be in danger. Yes, and they managed to do it again. Galleries are uh, going free right now with the null down against the Stora. They do not stop. We're talking about 100 and potentially 70 points against Stalwart who are totally stuck. They cannot get into the hill. They cannot organize to do the retake. They are suffering against the blasty damage coming from the Brazilian side. As we have Fabrizio well positioned, he comes again for a double. Nice movements by him. The Stalwart, they are feeling the pressure. They are here in the arena and the Brazilians are almost building up 100% points uh, 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 as an edge against Stalwart. That's just gigantic, buddy. I said it. Uh, they couldn't afford to give that away, Stalwart. And now they might be in trouble for the next hill as well. Once again, things just feel so unsafe. unsafe. There is constantly players from Galarus that manage to get in behind enemy lines and really just become nuisances. And now you're going to start to see an investment coming out from Pabzera. Mihawk also has the EMP ready to go in the back pocket too. This has been a phenomenal game from the likes of Galarus. And now they're really starting to move forward here. Galarus going huge up towards the top line. Stalwart not really able to effectively get any time at all. Lucasin is turning and burning on every single player in his path. Incendio will deny another kill. But this is more time that Stalwart are not getting. 
It's just a lot of damage. It's impossible to break him down, as you can just see. Look at Zin right now, looking so strong, hopping into 40 kills just himself. And we see also Mihawk, Papi Zero, the whole squad is helping him out. And this P2 is pretty much a solidified on the side of galleries who are looking extremely strong, looking to eventually wrap this map up on P3. But we see Stalwart trying to do what they needed to do, Brory, which is rotate before, try to set up because galleries is coming uh, right ahead. Now, this is the second time this entire game. Maybe the third, if you count that last hard point. Where Stalwart do actually have control of the hill. Yeah. First to touch, but already they've lost Clover around the back line. He should get the close pawn in, and indeed he does. A couple of investments now coming out from Skurd and Shadat, respectively. It's the Claw and the Sparrow. Clover around the back line, able to convert for one. That's an egregious challenge to, against Hen, who had the head glitch to work with here. Still what esports now. Wow. Starting to lose some map pressure. Starting to lose some real estate. Fuck it, around the back oh, line. Man. Henry Cat finding one, and all of a sudden it's a couple of players isolated towards the front. FDX, though, will burn a couple away. Still what they survived that initial approach, but there's still glorious players on the horizon yeah finally finding their eventual pickpocket kills galleries though they tried to go for the full-on the kind of uh, commitment that they needed right there but stalwart also managing to defend themselves with a lot of quality uh, right here and the rotation is going to define whatever is going to happen next because we're going to be talking about the next hill coming up it's going to be so so huge this p4 was already taken down by galleries at the first rotation Brody, let's see how Star are going to manage to do that uh, while they head over to the hill. Because uh, as we have just seen, they were before FP3. Now they're going to have to get there after yep. Galleries is already set up. Yep, one more wave of gunfights. Galaris have this one down. You're facing down Fokker. He's got the R9. Wow. He finds one. Lucasin. He's got the Annihilator out now. And it's the War Machine oh from God. Pabzera 2. Galaris, they want it done here. Wayward spawns it's from over. Stalwart now. Can anybody touch in time? No! Galaris going to win map number one. Stalwart absolutely stomped. Yeah, absolutely. Magisterio of the Brazilians on galleries. What a performance to open the series. Such a great way to begin this game. Confidence is there. They are vibrating with the crowds. And thus, they open this series with a one new all map. Such a great job. Again, uh, Brody dominating the spots, dominating the queue feed. And there it is. Just like that, they increase even more the confidence. Fatality in map number one. Stalwart Esports, another falling victim to Galaris on Arsenal Hardpoint. Yesterday it was Q9 and that was a solid victory for Seminole back there. Uh, not Seminole, excuse me. <laughs> Galaris back there. My brain is all over the place. Uh, Galaris back there. That was a 250 to 182 uh, performance for them. And this one even better. Stalwart Esports, not a chance. Uh, and I said it, I think, throughout basically the entirety of the map. Uh, for the most part, it only ever felt like two or three hills where Stor actually managed to touch first on. Beyond that, Galaris had control of pretty much every single rotation. They already had one or two players in advanced positioning before Stor even got a look at the hill. And for that reason, Galaris able to get control of so many hard points for such a crucial amount of time in that game. Of course, it also does help when they are simply out slaying Stalwart Esports, and that also happens here. Lucas in, top of the charts with 43 kills, unsurprisingly there. But the rest of the squad, I mean, yeah. everybody was performing. Everybody on Galaris was doing their part, and that was unlike yesterday, where, I mean, let's be honest about this one, Igor. It was Lucas in dropping those 60-plus kills that won them that hard point. <laughs> yes. It is so crazy, right, how you have a, such a, a high-level squad that allows you to focus just on one aspect of the game, and that's what Lucasin did. He was focusing on killing, and man, w when it comes to that, he's a beast. The rest of the team, they were focused on the objective, so you have the best possible scenario for galleries when it comes to, you know, sharing those roles inside of the game. And just uh, uh, as we have just seen, they, they did it. They managed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, dominate the spots, rotate the before and they got it all brody what i'm saying is they get there before so they're strong if they get later it's not an issue too because they can't fight for that so galleries they are feeling so free right here they are unstoppable so far in this championship and looking pretty much sound to go to the finals but it's just the beginning of the series 
Yeah, and another thing you got to note there as well is, is most of the time when you saw uh, at least one operator coming out of Galaris, it wasn't just one, right? It was one, it was two, it was three. They brought multiple out at any given time to make sure that they managed to get control of these hard points. And that operator usage can really make the difference. I mean, we've learned that over the course of casting the Snapdragon Pro series in the past, right, Igor, is that, you know, you have to make sure your operator usage is top notch. And we did see that there from Galaris, who end up winning map number one in indomitable fashion. They now lead this series one to zero. Next stop on the cards is going to be a certain and destroy. I'm going to have to go and look at the chat here to see what the search and destroy was because my brain is like a goldfish. Um, but uh, regardless, I think, you know, we talk about the way into this series for Stalwart Esports, Igor. And, you know, again, how good they have been at search and destroy this weekend. It's been their biggest strength by far. It has to be here, surely? Yes, they need to step up. They're going to need to win this one. Also, to show galleries that they cannot be so overconfident as they were right now in Arsenal Hardpoint. So, I would say this is going to be the biggest chance for Stalwart to step up. As we see the stats from Lucas saying, <laughs> absolutely bizarre. 43 eliminations on this one. Again, again an MVP uh, helping galleries over here and dying so, so little, right? He almost, uh, he was almost like a, a, a defensive play in this matter, not being so, so targeted. But again, he managed to kill a lot. So meaning he searched for the game. He mm. was not just on the back line. So that's a very, very rare and precious combination. Uh, definitely a world-class talent over here. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, I did go check what the map is. The next map coming up in this one is going to be Tunisia Search and Destroy. And oh boy, <laughs> this does not bode well uh, for a stalwart whatsoever, does it? Because uh, we go back to that map number two that we saw yesterday, and that was between Q9 and Galaris. Uh, Galaris didn't just beat uh, Q9 on that map. They stomped them. I think it was, uh, I want to say, 5-1 yes. and one at the half. And that was when Galaris were playing on the offensive side on Tunisia, by the way, which is a map that is, I'll tell you folks, not very offensively sided. Um, it was a huge win for them. Doesn't bode well for Stalwart whatsoever. And we've also got the stat for Stalwart here yesterday. Of course, they also played uh, Amigos Gaming on Tunisia Search and Destroy. They had to go to overtime. They ended up losing that one 11-9. Uh, to 9. So, Stalwart here, I think they are definitely up against it moving forward in this series. That hard point was a big loss. And I think this pick of the Search and Destroy map isn't going to help them either. Yes, it's not going to help him. Again, not only because of the map itself, as you uh, post very well, galleries, they were dominant here, uh, and stalwart they've lost. So when we look at the map and the combination, it's looking, uh, again, more to the side of galleries. And not only that, but uh, we have also to add uh, on how much uh, uh, galleries invests on the bomb sites. They do not uh, uh, they do not play in a, in a, I would say, in a passive, slow way. They totally build that up, and then they go forward. And... They love to play on the defensive half as, as we have seen yesterday. We talked about it, Brody. They are so strong to set positionings, to use the snipers properly. And yesterday we have seen Lucas in doing that. Of course, he can manage any weapon, as the players themselves have said before. But not only him uh, is going to do that. Also, Pop Zero and Henry Catty. Uh, uh, this trio is going to just make a massive destruction on the map. For sure. Well, look, Galaris, we talked about how strong they looked on this map mode combination yesterday versus Q9. Can they make a repeat performance here against Stalwart Esports? It's going to be them starting things off on the offense, but that's not a problem for a roster like Galaris. We've seen that once before. Stalwart, though, heavily investing in towards A on this first defensive effort. Cloven and Sendy opening things up with the first couple of kills. Lucasin, though, going to jump down and trade things out, make it even for the moment. Clove, though. Now a three versus two in favor of Stall Esports. Now the 3v1 very quickly. This round has fallen apart. And all of a sudden, Pabzera left alive in a one versus three. The bomb was in no man's land. No choice but to reach out towards the site. And a great read from Stall Esports there dealing with the aggression early on. Yes, and that comes to show that galleries cannot just always rely upon their uh, power on the trading aspect of the game because they kind of went on the automatic mode here, just straight away. And Stalwart, on the other hand, they did a better homework. They were there before, uh, dominating the key positions and thus taking down the Brazilians. We're going to see almost a repetition, almost a replay from round one since galleries is already stacking up to go down for A. Mihawk is up here, up in the top to try to find someone off guard as Clove is already there in the ground, but Lucas he helps him out. FD again also bringing the damage. <gasps> gonna see Mihawk oh, at no. this moment. Scored responding with ability. It's gonna be Lucas in. It's gonna be insane. Excuse me. Against Pabizera and Lucas. Let's see if he's gonna survive to this one. <laughs> Pabizera! Fantastic bullet by him. What a shot 
as a sniper. And again, Brody, we have <laughs> we have seen and we are just seeing now the confidence on the long shots by the Brazilians. Yeah, so often these rounds, I do think, on the offense for Galaris are going to come down to whether or not they can just win some of these engagements, butting heads with Store on site. In that particular instance, indeed it was. The strength for the sniper rifles, or rather Pabs Aero more specifically, gets them in. Now things will be a lot slower this time for Galaris. Maybe trying to bait Store out here. And Store, I mean, I don't necessarily think they've fallen for the bait, because technically speaking, they've already got three players on B. So the timing, if those players do choose to transition over towards A in time for this hit, might not be great for Galaris. But for the moment, it is going to be a two versus two on site. Clove just chilling down low, waiting for that first chow to come in. As soon as it does, we're probably going to see a snowball of all these players starting to push. Yeah, Galaris, apparently... Choosing A, but flirting with middle, flirting with B, as we see uh, some players over there trying to make the early clear, but that doesn't mean that they have the bomb with them. FD is gonna come for this one nice bullet against Mihawk. What a shot, as we have Henry trying to come here. Oh, okay, for the ground, fantastic R9 against Scord. What a bullet from him. Now it's gonna be a 2v2. Brazilians with the C4 in their hands. And Falke is gonna have to come inside of the bomb. Also with Pabizera. He's not gonna push for this one by himself. This backup is crucial right now since Star Wars got to play his life. Yeah, FDX now on the flank here through Winery, though. I don't know if they know about this whatsoever, but FDX does. So if he gets some good timing here, they might be dead to rights. He has to be cautious about exiting out towards the site, though. That's why you're seeing him not just run out in towards the open. But oh no, that timing's not going to work out for him. The cautiousness in the end is going to mean that Galaris do get away scot-free. And they're going to run right into the not-so-welcome demands of Incendio on the other side. Hugh snaps on towards one Incendio. Looking for the double! Incendio takes them out of the equation. And look at that. He's very happy with the play. Mate, it's so rare to see such a pair of kills so fastly by a defending sniper. Usually when you're in these clutch situations, you kind of have to also be lucky, right? To not be shot down uh, from multiple angles. But again, Star Wars such, doing such a great work, excuse me, on both bomb sides and now uh, feeling a little bit more confident against Gellers. Yeah, they do seem to be stop putting a stop to a lot of the shenanigans that Galaris are putting together. Oh my goodness me, Incendio gets a little leg of a second player there. That's no not way. before taking out Fokke previously. Pabzera does answer back though, and there goes Incendio. That's key to getting in towards these B sites time and time again. So Galaris now should be able to get this bomb down. The reaction from Stuart is paramount. It has to be fast. It has to be furious. Shut up. I think he's just seen Hen on the other side of the mid pillar. Elsewhere, Lucasin's taken down Clove. So, all of this results now down to 2 versus 2. Now, making a 2v1 in favor of Galaris. It's just down a shut up. Left alive here in this 1v2. And Galaris hit the right choice to just back away from the site. Shut up not being given enough for the there players. Galaris answering back. It's another big offensive round for them. Such a smart combination of a live man on the side of the uh, Brazilian team because we had Galaris having Pabi Zero from a distance as a sniper and Lucas in as the soldier on the ground using the DRH. So that's what you want to have eventually on some clutch situations and they have pretty much combined efforts over here to take down the less alive player from Stalwart managing to bring this equalizer and of course Brody using the best they can the time to talk about to fix some position is because it's definitely not the ideal start for galleries they're not used to suffering this much against uh, an, op uh, an opponent here in the championship and that oh. being th that has been the case all right well at the moment we're just on a little technical pause here folks well the game will resume in a moment i assume at two for two but we'll uh, kind of analyze what we've seen so far between these two teams Igor, because it has been again galleries on the offense and they have been significantly less successful than they were comparatively to that matchup versus Q9 on this map mode combination. And I think a big reason why is it feels at the very least like Stalwart, they've done their homework, they've analyzed exactly what Galaris are up to on these offensive pushes, and they've reacted pretty well. I think even going back towards that round number one victory for them, right, where they just fucking uh, fully five stacked the A side, excuse me. Um, you know, yes. I don't think Galaris were ready for that kind of reaction uh, out of the opposition. I don't think they were. I think, uh, indeed, as you said, Galleries was becoming overconfident on their own bullets, and they have felt that, uh, especially when Incendio began pulling out his sniper shots with the Tundra, I think, so he began to be a, a destructive force 
from uh, storage side and then galleries had to respond using bullets as well uh, and that's what we have just seen before the technical pause with uh, Lucas in plus Pabizera uh, having to go there having to hunt the opponent because it was becoming uh, harder for them to move around the map freely as they managed to do in some occasions Stalwart are beginning to get that galleries likes to move as a block always I mean, galleries have done this in three rounds out of four so far mm -hmm. in this Tunisia Brody. Uh, you know, going down into A, but as a group, as a block, not allowing them to use some lurkers, not breaking their positioning. And uh, instead of that, the Brazilians are walking too much all together. And that's, I mean, that's maybe a problem that may be uh, doing uh, the work for a star when it comes to delivering the bullets back. Yeah, I'm almost surprised uh, to a certain extent that we're not seeing more of these B hits coming out of Galaris at the moment. If only because of the fact that, for me at least from what I've seen in the past on the Snapdragon Pro series, it does feel like they are relatively, I don't want to say easy to pull off because that's not the word at all. But I think the way in which you do it is pretty standard. You know, you, you, you throw your set nade, you throw your utility over the top to deal with what is inevitably going to be a sniper on site that has been incendio uh, in that position for the last few defensive rounds for a stalwart. And then it's just so much easier to defend B once you've got the bomb bound comparatively to A because of all the different angles that you can get in towards sight from A and uh, how advantageous that can be for the retaking uh, team. I'm surprised that we've not seen more uh, of those B hits coming out of Galaris so far. And maybe they'll go to them for the last couple of rounds here on the offense. Maybe especially after that round they got uh, where they managed to take out Shut Up. Uh, he was in the 1v2. Maybe we do see a slight change in strategy here for Galaris. But at the moment, it does feel like, again... Stuart, they are being a little bit more reactive than Q9 were yesterday in these defensive rounds. Yes, and they are waiting for the right moments to step out of the cover. Uh, I like how they play. I like how they study galleries, especially in this beginning of a search and destroy map, because that was something that uh, the foes from galleries from yesterday, they did not manage to do properly, or they did not have time to do that because galleries imposed such fast series uh, on, on, on the occasion of yesterday, Brody. But again, that comes to say that uh, galleries, they were facing struggles now to organize the back line uh, and also win all the trades. I think galleries uh, may be used to winning all since the beginning, and that's going to be a, a moment for them to, you know, rethink what they're doing, rebuild this strategy because of Star Wars. They have just shown uh, in this Tunisia so far that they can play a patience game and they can rely on those long bullets. Let's see how that's mm -hmm. going to keep playing out. Well, for sure. Remind a few folks, if you're just joining us again, we've already had one semi-final play out today. That was Q9 taking down Seminole in what was a rather shocking conclusion to that series. A map that I think Seminole and all the North American fans out there know they probably should not have lost, but they did. They lost that matchup 3-1 in the end and it means that Q9 await the winner of this matchup in the grand final honestly like i think if you're q9 you're sitting in the grand final right now i don't want to upset any stalwart fans out there because there is a realistic chance especially with how competitive stalwart have been for the first four rounds here on tunisia search and destroy what are you prepping right for for a potential rematch with Galaris or even for that matchup versus stalwart in a grand final yeah, you, you gotta need material for that because galleries, they have been combining the fundamentals of the game with energy, with moment, uh, with the crowds to their side. So you're absolutely right, Brody. Q9 are gonna have to be another team. They have been already today against Seminole, taking down the major force from an A. Let's see the game getting back on uh, action here as we again see galleries investing on a heavily heavily once more let's see if that's gonna play out to their side because the only player out of this position in for the brazilians is gonna be harry playing out as a lurker on b potentially against incendio that's gonna be a, an interesting side battle but now we're gonna have to uh, see and wait for the next move on both sides when it comes to falling down on a and try to plant this one shut up well, position again nice bullet clove ft Oh my god, just like that, Stalwart destroyed the plans of the Brazilians who insisted once more on it. Yep, Stalwart had the numbers in that situation. Henry Cat was removed from the entire plate. And now he has to pull off a 1v4. I don't think that's going to happen. And indeed it won't. Yeah, nice reaction once again coming out from Stalwart. It's very, very difficult, I think, for Galaris to entry in towards the site there. Unless you don't, unless you're able to uh, get a sniper or two off on the entry. That does not happen for Galaris. It all goes all right. So one more defensive round now for Stalwart. They've only given away two offensive efforts to Galaris so far. 
And look at this play from Galaris. They're opting to go through the middle of the map. They're being relatively cautious about it. Still, they are here, though. And it's going to be a push straight through towards A. Shut up. He's ready for oh it, God. though. He picks up the double. It's trades here from Galaris, but it's not enough to even things out just yet. Yeah, it's good. Flies through the middle of the map to take Lucas in down. And now it's just down to a one versus three for Pabzera. Wow. What a defensive barrier that shut up is being today. What? As Pop is gonna take Sincenio. Oh my god! He's taking every single body down! What a play by Pop Zera! Destroying, tearing apart players from Stalwart right here. What did we just see? What was that? I don't know. Do you have words for that? I don't have clothes for that. Two? Three? What? Four? Dude. All right. Dude. Okay. Dude. He hits a hit marker on the third, and he still gets away with a kill. Get the Tundra out the game, mate. Get it out the game. Galaris, third offensive round for them. Now we switch. They'll be very happy with how that one went. And Stalwart, for their first offensive effort, they're playing this one relatively passively. It does look like they're edging somewhat towards B. Big opening gunfight here for Shadap. If he can remove Henry Cat here from this side of the map, well, it would be nice, but there's already a bit of reaction coming through. Henry Cat able to get a kill over the top. Shadup hasn't actually been dealt with, but his position has been revealed. Galaris retreating back towards the middle of the map now. And they've left Henry Cat isolated on site here. And he's actually having to give up this real estate at risk of potentially being killed and taken out of the play. Yeah, not a terrible first half of map for Galaris since usually they do like the defensive side on the search and destroy mode and that's gonna be their biggest chance to rock this one against the star. We've seen 3-3 three, three on rounds. Now it's gonna be the Brazilian's chance to set up and wait for Stalwart's first move as we see a very interesting line of defense on both bomb sites by Galaris. Stalwart's team Still content here. So make this push happen towards B. Henry Cat gonna get another frag versus Shad up. More and more still losing lives here in this round. They're in a three versus five, but that at bomb plant is gonna give them more to work with here. But look at Galaris, and they're now flooding in towards site now. Looking for something. FTX though, able to take Henry Cat down. No immediate trade. Fock eight. Looking to clear out that lower side area where, as a matter of fact, the rest of Stalwart Esports have moved all the way towards the top. Pabzera able to remove one from the situation. Now Fokke is decided time to act for him. Clove the last one left alive and he gets overwhelmed by Galaris. The numbers were there on the retake to make it happen. Fantastic work by Galaris to respond to this one. And of course, seeing Stalwart moving the game to B and responding with the bullets, but with patience. That's a nice brand new combination for galleries in this map, specifically today against the Stalwart. And they totally uh, profited from that, Brody, because they managed to respond. And the Stalwart, maybe they're feeling that galleries has a stronger side on responding, on uh, holding positions over here in Tunisia. We see kind of a spread out uh, strategy by Stalwart. Placing, of course, shut up alone to try to see what is happening on B. Same kind of layout we've seen on the first half, right? To be fair, with both sides prioritizing the A on B, things were looking better for the Brazilians in the last round. Yeah, still, I think they're pretty heavily reliant here on Clove, producing some kind of value. He's been great for Stillwalt this search and destroy thus far. He's not able to do anything, though. As a matter of fact, Incendio and Shadap are the ones involved in the first engagements on the effort to get in towards A. Immediately denied access. And now you're kind of stuck if you're Stillwalt here. There's potential for a rotation over towards B. But, I mean, even so, you're going to have to go up against Henry Cat in this situation. There is just not really many options. Stunned up now again. That's information for Galaris here. And time will quickly run dry in this round for Stillwalt. Very strong setup by Galaris, very complicated to take them down because they got a, a very, very interesting setup with double snipers on the hands of Henry and Pabizera and Lucasin is holding the DRH. So it's a lot of defensive damage to bring to the table whenever Stalwart decides to make the move and step into the bomb site. We see Falky also with the R9, Pabizera just like that takes Clove down. So things look even more daunting for Stalwart's position since they just got two players to try to fight against five on the side of galleries. Mihawk is using already his traditional Fennec to wait patiently for any attempt by Stalwart after he scored Papizera again! He's the man of the game! Not only the in-game leader, but the rapper of this round, brother. 
And once again, it's, it's the same thing that we were talking about earlier on, right? On these offenses, you do really need to get those first bloods. They are paramount to getting in towards these sites, because if you don't do that, you're going to be in trouble. Tunisia is very difficult for offensive sides, and Galaris was somewhat more successful earlier on. Still what for the first couple. Haven't been able to put anything together whatsoever. And you can just see the difference, right? I mean, you look at Galaris and how aggressive they are as a roster, how venomous they can be. Stuart, they just look somewhat more unsure, somewhat more cautious in the way that they approach this one. They're still looking for this first blood. They're still looking for a way in towards these sites. And again, it has to come pretty quickly because you're losing a lot of time in this round. Yeah, mate, excuse me. I was just going to say that Galleries has been stacking three rounds in a row since they were losing for 3-2. Now they are ahead, just two rounds away from closing this map. And again, Galleries with patience rotating to B. The Stewart is doing the same thing. So things going to get sour at any moment as we have FD. The bullets are favoring the Brazilians. The Skurd takes a fuck it down and Mihawk. Just like that, he's jumping to try to go for an upper position. Clove again to save the team. We're gonna see FT being the last one alive against four and without the C4 and without a lot of information he's gonna have to <laughs> fight these magical bullets but Mihawk doesn't let that happen what a rapper for him and there it is match point for Galaris one more round Galaris flawless on the defense so far insatiable still what they need to get to be aggressive, to be honest. I know it's very easy to say, and now they're going to do exactly that here. They're answering the call. It is, once again, the exact same oppressor on the other side. Henry Cut on the other side of the site. Still going to get the bomb down, though. Henry's been removed, and now here, an opportunity to finally win something on the offense. Yes, Gallery is pretty much waiting for the chance to find a first bullet. This uh, first blood on the Herald is going to help them to step in. Fuck, it just did that. And Stoward, they're feeling, they are sensing that the map is just leaking from their hands. Look at him taking it up down, meaning Galaris is going to feel strong to step in. Numbers in favor of Galaris hit. Still what? They're inside the site here. They've got to be careful about the player wrapping through the back line as well, though. And there it is. Mihawk is going to answer back on towards a kill against Incendio here. Skurd for the double. It's now just down. Oh, one versus one. Skurd's going to triple up here. And it's going to keep Stalwart alive in this search and destroy. All smiles here for Stalwart. They're staying in the game for the moment. Yeah, <laughs> again, that kind of, uh, I don't know, moment where you have to focus, you have to not look at the crowds, you have to believe in your capacity to reverse this one, since galleries are now one round away from what they want to do, and open these two new and the series will be very precious, Fokke is waiting, there's heavy defensive investment by galleries on B, with Fokke managing to protect mid, we see that Harry is far away from his mates, and that's going to be very tense. And the exact same setup here for Galaris. They've had pretty much every single defensive side. They're relying on any information they can get from Henry Cat over towards B. Still what though? They've managed to make their way in towards the site. There's the first blood again. The fact that Henry's been there the entire time means that it's an easy prediction coming out from Incendio. Almost a trade from Lucas in off player who gets a bit aggressive. That was going to be shut up. He was able to trade things out. Stalwart, once again, they're getting control of B here. They're starting to adapt. They're starting to learn. Yeah, they are. And they are using the time to their favor. Rory, we have to remember that yesterday, Stalwart managed to roll the game in Tunisia, search and destroy against Amigos to an 11 uh, versus 9 round. So, uh, Galleries need to drop this one faster because Stalwart didn't know how to play this long. As we are seeing the bullets flying over the skies of Tunisia and Stalwart, somehow they managed to respond. As you said, they are learning. That's the best word to define the moment. And just as we see them stepping up to almost equalize this one with their round number five. Oh, Ooh. you can definitely Ooh, hear now that. Stalwart <laughs> starting to get a bit aggressive here. Starting to get confident. They're feeling it now. They know what they need yeah. to do. And I'm wondering whether or not Galaris are actually going to have some kind of reaction here, some kind of different play. And yeah, that's exactly going to be it. They're going to double up on B this time around instead of putting all their eggs in the A basket. That is the right oh. reaction. And they've pushed Foki all the way up here. So this is a very different look from Galaris. 
One in which is reliant on Stillwart trying the same thing once again, but they're starting to edge their way through the middle of the map here. And if that's the case, a lot of this is going to be on what Pabzera and Lucasin can do. Lucasin now looking for the first blood here. Pabzera is going to be one to get it. Lucasin not able to follow up. The shot's not as tasty as you would like. Shut up, able to trade wow. things out. Now four versus four. Man, it's very hard to take Lucasin down from that distance. So close to him. And he managed somehow to win. That one view of Pabzera with the pistol. And a pair of kills by Foki. That's what the Brazilians fan love. And just like that. Gallery is swapping the map against Stalwart at a moment where Stalwart was growing. They were sensing the possibility of a regain. The galleries just did not let the map go into overtime. It really did just feel like, and again, I know this is very basic for you guys at home. If you don't understand the way Tunisia Search and Destroy works, it is a defensively sided map. And it felt like Galaris had just cracked the code a little bit earlier than Stalwart did. And working out what they needed to do to make those offensive victories happen. They managed to take three away before we switched sides. As we went into the next half, Stalwart just couldn't get anything going whatsoever. They were playing super passively. That aggression wasn't there. It only took them four offensive efforts to make something happen. And, I mean, look, it was, I think, two rounds straight where we saw B hits happen from yeah. Stalwart. Both of them worked really well, but then Galaris was like, all right, look, we've given you two rounds. We're going to adapt. We're actually going to stop messing around here. And that's exactly what happens here. We look over towards the final scoreboard. Seven and five, the final scoreline in favor of Galaris. And Lucasin and Pabzera playing out of their damn minds. 14 and 16 kills, respectively. Big reasons why they're able to take that map away. Yes. And we have the best moments. They're going to show us basically how Galaris, they were... Very, very, I uh, would say, persistent on A on their attacking side, managing to uh, try uh, that region of the map. And then Stalwart, they had the merits of understanding that fast delay and try to respond to that. But then beginning to bring the game into B. But now, after that, Galleries managed to also learn during the map how to play on B against Stalwart. So, what a nice, uh, uh, I would say, set brought it off uh, goings and, and going backs. We said before those teams they are not here to play uh, in a kidding way they are totally serious and we have just seen this story they tried their best but they uh, fell down to galleries at the end of the day because galleries they were fast enough to understand that they needed to wrap that immediately otherwise uh the asian players from star they could begin like in tunisia again i mean it, it did feel like still they managed to get something going there towards the end of the yes. game they put a couple of offensive rounds back to back and again once they figure that out i think it took a little bit took a couple of rounds for Galaris to be like all right we're going to adapt now to what you guys were doing those adaptations were paramount and Galaris just a little bit better it means that we do see them winning that map now going 2-0 up in the series it wasn't quite the indomitable victory that we saw them take against q9 on that map mode combination but it was still pretty dominant nonetheless it was a convincing victory and it means now they go 2-0 up in this series next up i believe we've got a raid control and this is an interesting one again because i think raid is one of those maps that over in the north american and the european regions you see it very very often i think it's played like 90 percent of the time a little less so much when you talk about latam here and uh, garena Yes, and uh, on the top of that, I would say that control mode is going to mean uh, 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 that the winner is going to uh, take over whenever uh, they made last mistakes because both teams uh, were not looking so solid on this mode yesterday. And we have to phrase again, Brody, that Stalwart, they did not manage to win at all at this mode uh, so far. Mm -hmm. uh, they are just accumulating losses and surely Galaxy, uh, they're going to explore this from now on not only applying the bullets applying the damage itself but controlling the map trying to uh you know block some rotations by stalwart uh but again i think the response on the side of star is gonna eventually uh come through the hands of incendio and shut up they were very very good on uh, uh taking those initial bullets and breaking decisions by galleries that all that's gonna play out now again also in control mode 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, look, we talked about Stalwart struggling in control, and I think that's a fair point to make. They are, haven't won one yet. They've played three, and they've lost three. However, it is also worth saying at the moment that uh, the opposition on the other side, Galaris, control is their weakest mode. That much has been made very, very clear. They struggled versus Kings on it, even though they eventually won, and they lost versus Q9 on this one in that series. So there is chance here for Stalwart to come back in this series and still keep themselves alive. Will they, though, is the question. Find out after this break. to Mexico where I can make my own bliss find me a local who looks just like his phone pics right where the city lies is where they all sit trying to cast their eyes on all the girls who visit no touch me in places I can see lie down in the sand getting bruises on our knees we know it's gonna in Cabo, no tomorrow, he got me loco, when he goes slow, and I'm told, he's on the down low, this guy that I know, from nights in Cabo, Coming from the hacienda, calling all the girls down here to have us a fiesta. Watch out for white lines, is what they sell you. Cause it's from some guy who claims to be son of a fan. Ooh, hold me in place so I can breathe. A notch upon the bed, ghost and sweat between the sheets. We know what's gonna happen when it's time for me to leave. We just enjoy it Cause here nobody sleeps Late nights in Cabo No tomorrow He got me no When he goes slow And I'm told He's 
Like when dad has no wonder why all these chickens are jealous. They can have him when I'm gone. Just to let you know this, how quickly moves on. He'll take you to dinner, then to love his beat. Just say, baby, why don't we dip in the sea? Now say it, it's so wrong. But somehow I can't help but in love. No tomorrow. He got me loco. When he goes home. Right, folks, welcome back here to the Mobile Masters. We are deep into our semi-final. We've already got one team in the grand final. That is Q9. The other may be about to be there as Galaris. Now, Tuesday, we're up against Stalwart Esports. We now go into a raid control. And this one, at the very least, I think could really go either way, right, Eagle? We talked a lot about how Stalwart have had their struggles in control this weekend. They haven't won one so far. But it is probably the weakest game mode so far for Galaris as well. Yes, Galaris managed to win uh, as a three new rounds uh, on uh, on control mode, as you're saying, against Kings yesterday. But then they struggled against Q9. So indeed, if there's a chance for Star Wars, it's going to be right now. And they're going to have to take this one because Gallery usually on this championship, on this leg, at least, they're not making major mistakes. You can even talk about some minor uh, elements during the maps. But even so, their performances are being just uh, the best ones that Brazilian fans could expect and we're gonna see raid control as i was saying before with chris brody it's a very very balanced map for control mode because it's very fluent you can have a lot of entry points you have to defend uh with a very close coordination between the players otherwise it can just go south we almost saw seminal taking that one against uh, q9 it was a very very hard mm -hmm. and interesting uh raid control you've seen today earlier yeah, for sure. Uh, look, I mean, I think Raid is one of those maps where I do criticize a lot of teams. When Back when we were talking about the challenge season, I, I criticize a lot of teams because they just refuse to play it correctly. I don't think either of these two teams are going to be in that situation where they're going to be kind of down and uh, not getting map control when they need to, not giving up the points when they need to. Um, they're both still pretty good teams to get to the point where you are effectively top four teams in the world. Remember, folks, this is some of the best teams 
in Call of Duty Mobile in the entire international community. You know, I know there are a few teams here that aren't here that teams would have wanted to see. But nonetheless, to get to this point, you've still got to be uh, pretty good. So... It is worth saying these guys, they do know how to play Raid Control, but Raid Control has been a bit of a problem uh, over the last uh, day or so. You know, we go back towards the matchup for Stalwart versus Rejects. They lost that one, 3-1. Got to the matchup against Amigos Gaming. Yes, they took it to round number five, but it was a round number five that did not go their way. So Stalwart have been competitive, but it doesn't feel like that same success has been there. Yes, and more than that, usually control mode has been the point of problem for Stalwart so far in the championship. Uh, yesterday, they managed to always lose their control uh, maps. They began winning against Rejects uh, for a 2-0 and then lost in control mode. The same thing happened uh, almost against Semino and against Amigos, meaning Stalwart are going to need to show that they are able to fix this one and it's going to be almost the last chance. Otherwise, Galleries are going to be stepping up to the finals and eventually a group is going to be the dominant, the prevalent one uh, on the finals. Yeah, again, one team already in the grand finals here. So I'm curious to see which one will join them. Uh, there's been a lot of people behind Galaris. Their storyline has been phenomenal, obviously, bringing Lucas in on all the roster. Everyone knew that they were going to be a superstar team. They have proved that this entire tournament thus far. Regardless, though, we're getting into it, folks. Could what be the final map of this semi-final? Stor Esports 2-0 down. They have to reverse sweep if they want to survive. Yes, the Galleries is going for a mid push, almost aiming for B. As we see, they're beginning on the attacking side, and Stalwart, on the other hand, is trying to protect every single spot they can on the map. And Henry tries to go for this one. Pop Zero Lucas in, killing a lot, meaning Galleries is able to step over B. Galleries are on the point. Only one player on the flank to contest, but I think Shadow will actually push this one. He wants to put the Sim spawn trap together, so. That's what they're relying on at the moment. Reliant on those kills being made in and around Laundry. It's not happening so far, though. Lucasin and Foke able to combine for a couple of kills. Pabzera following up with another one, but hold horses for a second, folks, because Stalwart have managed to make their way on towards the point. They haven't fully cleared house, though. Mihawk gets turned and burned on. Nice little headshot kill coming out from Skurd here. This is some serious <laughs> resistance from Stalwart Esports, and as FDX and Skurd pick up those frags, it now means that Galaris are pushed back towards their spawn. They are pushed away from that, as you just stated with quality and with talent. As usual, we see Galleries having to rotate back to the south part of Raid here and try to make a push on A, but Skirt's not letting them play so far. And Skirt, Skirt sorry, going for almost 10 elimination at this moment. Such a fantastic run for him. And Galleries kind of split right now, feeling the pressure, feeling the strength out of uh, Stalwart when it comes to the defending points. Yeah, kills coming through from Shut Up and Clove. They will clear that point. Of course, it's, it was a bit unnerving when that Predator missile came down from Skurd there. Galaris weren't quite ready for it, so the full uh, capture doesn't come through. It was just about to over towards B, though. So Galaris have made a little bit of progress on towards A. But Stuart, they're doing the right things here on the defensive side. They've got a player pushed all the way out towards that bedroom side. That means the spawns for Galaris are going to be centered more towards the driveway. They've got a longer way to go, and they're going to opt to take the route around the flank. All four players now make it five it's here heavy. on Laundry. This is one big wipe now. Shut up. He's ready for it. He's just seen all this mountain of players coming in his direction. Incendio going to find one. It's a pinstripe kill feed here. Store Esports trying to hold on. Galaris unsuccessful in puncturing the defense for the so far. But there are still players to contest with over here. Henry Cat going to go down. And there goes Lucas in as well. It's a full wipe now. Galaris down to their last few lives here. And that push, I think, really was everything. Yeah, what a gigantic, what a gigantic defensive system on the side of Stalwart, managing to protect B for a while, then they had to give up, and then they moved to jungle, now to A, and just as we see Stalwart growing, they're gonna manage to rob this one, because it's gonna be just Harry against <laughs> 10 of them, that's almost an impossible human mission, yeah. and Clove robs this one to make justice to everything that Stalwart has showcased us uh, so far brought in this round number yeah. one. Yeah, really good round, I think, from Stalwart on the whole there on the defense. You know, they made the right decisions. As soon as they knew that they'd lost beat, they decided to set themselves up for that inevitable push from Galaris on the flank. Managed to win those trades in favor. A nice start coming out from Shadup now as well. Of course, the fact that they managed to win that round number one means that they're going to be the first ones to get their operators. And Shadup opening this round in explosive fashion. That's four kills now with the Sparrow. And he looks to accentuate the advantage as well. Galaris now 
facing pressure on both of these two points. They're going to deal with one player that was over towards B. That's by where Pabzera, who does manage to take Skirt out of the equation with the War Machine. So it's not the end of the world at the moment for Galaris, especially as Lucasin and Pabzera will combine for three as well. Stalwart Esports, though, that was an audacious start for them. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. Stalwart, what are you doing? They are totally getting back on track. And we have to mention also, Brody, that earlier today, both Seminole and uh, and Q9, excuse me, they were uh, focusing a lot on B. Both teams here doing almost the same, but Stalwart a little bit more versatile when it comes to making decisions inside of Raid. They're beginning to hold back on the Garage region, trying to reorganize their lines, but Spawn Trap coming up from Galleries to totally smash them up against the wall, FT! Thus, massacrating Focky with the prize fighters. What a work from them and Stalwart just as we see now, uh, after all these qualities, they managed to get back on track. Yeah, that's a big kill feed coming through from Galaris now. Still have had a couple of attempts yep. to break out of this spawn trap. None of them really been that successful. Henry Cat now in towards Art as well. Every single lane that Stalwart tried to exit the spawn trap through is being watched. But now, three players are going to exit towards that poor side. This is a lot for Pabzera to do inside money window. Looks in able to pick one of those players down that decided to go for the root in behind. And Pabzera swiftly deals with the other two that even dared to look at that A zone. Three seconds left. I don't know if anybody can touch either of these points now. And they will not. Stalwart Esport, not a single ticket progression on either of these two points. Yeah, because Galleries also, they were very intelligent to bunker up on B, using those head glitches on the wide positions, as we know. It's very hard, as you said, Brody, to take someone out of there. There are very strong head glitches to use when you're defending the region. Stalwart feeling uh, the pressure. We have the equalizer on rounds, and both sides are going to come to the same region. FT going up with this one. Focke trying to respond. Let's see Mihawk behind the cover, using the DRH. Focke again, back on action. And the Pred that Messiah to try to do more damage as we have seen. The gallery is perhaps beginning this round a little bit better than before. It really does feel like so many of these early rounds can be decided by the usage of the operators. This time around, it's Fokke who's got the equalizers. He wants to make this transition to be better, and indeed he is doing exactly that. He's already picked up a couple of frags. Now make that another one towards the back line. Pabzera is actually going to be the one to pick up that kill. But nonetheless, the space is being created now for Galaris. This is a very, very fast transition. Yeah, fast transition. Gallery is mounting down and falling, falling to the south of the map, pressuring. Pop Zero with the war machine is a beast. Gallery is suddenly bringing these numbers and uh, acquiring those lives against the star, totally dominating the region on the basketball. And we see them stepping over A. They've already stolen the B. It's going to be very, very complicated for Star to get back to this one if it's even going to happen, Brody. Yeah, an 8 versus 21 is a massive problem for Stalwart. I would cut your losses here in this round. Just try and do this by lives, to be honest with you, because you don't want to be giving away these ticks away to Galaris. It would make a potential round of a 5 defense probably out of the question if it's not already. Stalwart down to the final four against 18. How about this for a David versus Goliath situation? Mihawk want to put this home with a couple of kills. Now all just down to one remaining player. It's shut up in a 1 versus 17. That is frankly not going to happen. And that is huge. An offensive victory for Galaris. That might well be the winner. They are just destroying, destroying Stalwart. When it comes to confidence, when it comes to mentality, getting back uh, with this reverse suffering in the beginning of the map against Stalwart, but there it is. Gallery is showing everything they're capable of, and now they're gonna have to prove it once more, dominating both steps, both positions here. But FT trying his best. Mihawk and Lucas, even though don't let anything else happen on the full side, Lucas with the Annihilator to take the first one down. Maybe he was gonna go for more. He's playing more passive now, not going out there totally. Trying for the second one. He's gonna go for another oh. three eliminations. Lucas in the beast, unleashed out of the jail. Flying over the map. Fantastic usage of the Annihilator. This feels daunting now, doesn't it? For Stillwater Esports. They've got 60 seconds on the clock and the lives are very quickly dwindling down. Galaris are well entrenched into their spawn and the streak's now raining down from the heavens as well. Goodness gracious, this is like hellfire. Wow. 
Stalwart Esports are trapped and there's not really much that they can do in this situation because Galaris just continue to press this one home. Surely not Henry Cat just turning and burning onto every single player. Galaris entrenched into their spawn. Extra bullets into the body as well. And this is well deserved for Galaris Stalwart. Now down to their final five lives. And Galaris know that this is theirs now. Just a few more kills and they move on towards our grand final for a rematch versus Q9. One more kill, one more frag and it is done. Galaris looking to book their place at Incendio. He's trying so desperately to keep his life intact. I don't know if that's going to happen for very long to be honest with you. Incendio peeks out for the first kill but Mihawk's going to be the one to send it home. Galaris move on to our grand finals. Galleries fighting fight to the finals in Mobile Masters against Q9. What a fantastic exhibition. Magisterial from the Brazilians against the Stalwart. Completely devastating, destroying their opponents here with a fantastic reverse sweep as well in rounds. And as we see them celebrating Brody, we have to also say the crowds are doing their jobs and the Brazilians advance also to face Q9 now. Elation for Galaris. They are one step away from being Crown Mobile Masters champions. And their performance this entire event thus far has been nothing short of phenomenal. Nine maps played, or 10 maps played, excuse me. Nine of them have been won. Only one loss to Q9. That was yesterday in that control. Q control has been the weakest game mode. And back in that map, it didn't even look slightly true whatsoever, did it? They just looked so, so solid throughout the entire thing when they needed to turn up. They absolutely did. That round number three was everything for Galaris. Able to transition from a very quick B capture in towards a flank towards A, and they made that work. Galaris are just those guys at the moment, and you talk about the infectious energy, the crowd, the fact that Galaris are very obviously feeding off it. They're feeling themselves at the moment. And this kind of momentum, it's dangerous. If you're sitting there, if you're Q9, you're in the grand finals. I don't know, dude. I mean, obviously, I'm going to be confident. I'm Q9 at the end of the day. But I'm still going to be a little bit concerned. Yes. But those are the players you're going to face. Uh, after all, with Lucasine mounting almost to 30 eliminations, just dying 10 times. Fantastic again. Uh, and also, Brody, uh, a player for the team, a player for himself as well bringing these cues and helping the, the squad in many occasions and him and Pabizera being the heroes from our galleries once more here uh, as much as they did in Tunisia but again also <laughs> in raid control and taking the traditional selfie to celebrate their qualifying to the finals smiles all around now for Galaris and why wouldn't you be smiling again uh, just the way in which they're winning they're not just winning they are dominating these games. Yeah. Again, I mean, we'll talk about the series here in just a second, but we look back towards this control here, Igor. And I mean, look, we'll say this much. The first couple of rounds, it did feel like uh, even though Galaris were able to get significantly more ticks, significantly more progression on the offense, it still felt like still what were in the conversation. I think round number three was where things really started to flip a switch. You saw some real investment coming out early on in the round from Galaris where it didn't really feel like Stillwater had a chance. The slaying power right out the gates was just way too much to handle. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. And more than that, Stalwart, they were very brave on search and destroy mode, almost forcing the overtime against Galaris. But then on control, as you said, they even upgraded that level of gameplay. They have brought themselves one new, and then they felt the Galaris was coming up and were stepping, stepping up fastly. And thus, galleries managed to rob the game at, a, I would say, the right moment. Because if you allow for Star some more room, they can just reverse that one. They also have bullets. They were very resistant. I would be very proud on their place. That's what I want to say, Brody, over here for all uh, that exhibition that they just bought us. Yeah, for sure. Well, look, uh, we'll say this much. Galaris, yes, they've booked their ticket to the grand final. That unfortunately means for Stalwart Esports. Uh, they drop out at top four. Uh, they match Seminole in the placement. Uh, they walk away with $20,000, which, uh, Lauren, is, is not too shabby, to be fair. I mean, I know you're upset. Single elimination, you don't even have a shot at it. But still, like, $20,000? I'll be happy with $20,000 off COD Mobile. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, they made it essentially to the top 
three four of the entire world in this game right now so not only are they going home with a nice purse but they should definitely be proud of their performance and probably learned a lot along the way so that when we do this again next time around who knows they might be the ones we're seeing in the grand finals but for now it's all about Galaris. It's all about Q9 because our grand finals are set. Our teams now have to get themselves ready to go into this battle. And if I'm Q9, after hearing how loud that crowd was for this past match, literally the entire time, they didn't stop, okay? Absolutely did not let up. That might be something I'm working to try and zone out. And we need to give some love to the MVP yet again in Lucasine. Also, guys, did you notice in that last, the last moments of the last round of control, they were down to just the one player uh, left that they had to kill. Lucasine wasn't even playing. He was standing up hyping the crowd at that point. Did yeah. you see that? <laughs> He was just, you know, cheering and enjoying. I mean, the team has doing fantastic. He was there uh, already feeling that the victory was going to come. And those numbers, they just consolidate once more, even more, if it's possible, how solid Lucasin is looking right now. Also being, again, as not much of a news anymore, the MVP in the game. I mean, I'll be interested to see who gets it in our grand finals okay because that that is where it all will come together don't forget everybody at home if you're just joining us here on the broadcast right now we're heading into our grand finals you've been watching best of fives for the last two days the grand finals is a best of seven so it will go a little bit longer the teams will have an opportunity to get a different map pool in there maybe get some additional picks in there for things they might want to play on think they have an advantage on or a disadvantage for the other team uh it'll be interesting to see what these squads bring to the table q9 has been sitting during that last semifinals match they were able to also watch Galaris and see if there's anything they could have picked up from their match up against stalwart and on the flip side, Gallers was able to watch Q9 while they did their match. So both these teams have had a scouting opportunity. Brody, I, I feel like this this is, you called it, okay? You mm. said it on day well, one that this is know, the final you thought it was going to be. And now we've got it. Yeah, I, like, I, I think it, it felt obvious for a long time that Galaris at the very least would be in the grand final. I wasn't entirely sure which team would be joining them, whether Seminole will be able to play up to the same performance we've seen from them in the past without Tectonic, whether or not uh, Stort will be able to show up in the way that we expected them to, and of course, whether or not Q9 would be that very same dominant roster we saw from Champs. The answer is yes. Uh, these guys are going to be watching each other's VOD. I think for Q9 in particular here, before we go to a break here, Lauren, I think Q9, they have to have put in the VOD in from what went wrong yesterday versus Galaris, because that was a big, big victory for Galaris, and it honestly felt like a pretty easy one for them. All right, Lanex. Well, this will be the last time we see you on the stream here. So, any thoughts before we say goodbye? Thank you all. It was fantastic. It was so great. I had a lot of fun casting with you guys. Learned a lot as well. So, thank you all, uh, the American, the international fans, for the patience for sticking with us. And yes, it was great. Thank you, Lauren. All right, guys, well, so it's time for our grand final. So hopefully you are ready to go before we get into all of that best of seven action. It's time for one last break. So don't go anywhere. Our grand finals of the Mobile Masters will be returned. Thanks, guys. It was great. Thanks, Tomek. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. Uh, it's a nice time to uh, I'll, I'll rewatch it all. Uh, yeah, right? Thanks, guys. Bye bye. See ya.
never really listen anyway Like, I don't care what they want, I'ma give them what they need Never give up what and I never take a plea Never gonna hear what they always try to say Never really listen anyway Like, hear what they want, I got what you need I don't care, no, well I don't care What you get, what you see
Yeah, yeah, we're rising up. No, nobody can stop me, can't fight this rush. No one won't stop me, top three is the final push. Can't imitate how we be, better keep it hush. But I can't hide this buzz. moment stay focused i smell the wind and it's potent i remain the main component because they all know i'm the coldest so cold that they frozen overwhelmed by the notion pressure building it's over when you feel the explosion yeah they call me the showman the way i'm shining i'm golden and i bring the commotion my spirit never been broken because i got the devotion no magical potion you're just a drop in the ocean i'm a tidal away taking over
The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we have all been waiting for has finally arrived. We are at the end of this competition. Our grand finals are just minutes away and it's time to see which team is the best in the world. And after all of the competition we've seen so far, that fight will be between Galaris and Q9, a rematch from what we saw yesterday in our group. Group A stage. This is going to be a fantastic matchup ton. I cannot wait to get into it. It should be a fantastic game. Look, we've seen Q9 come out a lot better today. Galaris just finding their form in front of their home crowd. It's all setting up very, very nicely. And I'm wondering if there's going to be any twists and turns in this grand final. I really hope we get some. Brody, you have been talking about the fact that this was the most likely potential grand finals we would see. And now we're here as we take a look back at some of the highlights for Galaris throughout the competition so far. Start to deep dive even more now that we're at this stage. I mean, Galaris just looks so, so good, right? I think it's important to note, pre Lucas in change, Galaris were already a very good roster. They were already the number one team in their region. They handily uh, beat pretty much every team in the regular season back in the Latam Snapdragon Pro Series, apart from the Grand Finals where Amigos almost reverse sweep them. And Lucasin is just supercharged, this roster. He's coming in as this big slayer that is performing every single game. And we've seen this basically the entirety of the time. The, the highlights that you're seeing on screen right now, it's proof that Galaris can turn up to these matches and immediately just dial it up to 11 at any given moment. And we saw that in that last control as well. You saw that in that round number three where for what was a pretty close game up until that point, they just flicked a switch and immediately just went full-on beast mode and uh, that kind of thing is what's made Galaris scary the entire tournament so far I don't believe they've lost a single hard point I don't believe they've lost a single search and destroy their only map loss has come from Q9 and that was in these guys last face off yeah, and hopefully Q9 will be able to turn that around. But you got to cast that first match of the day there, Ton. And you mentioned it, Q9 looking a lot more in form here today. We even saw Sun have a standout yeah. performance in that first match. So talk to me a little bit about them. Yeah, look, I, I think they they seem to have found a, a bit of clutchability today. There was a couple of occasions mm. where, I, I mean, look, they very well could have lost that series against Seminoles. Uh, number three and round number five. Uh, it, it took some ridiculous player coming through for them to actually manage to take that control map number four they found themselves well and truly down uh, they were nowhere near i want to say they were about an 80 or 90 points behind at one stage maybe even a little bit more and they somehow came back on a, like an 80 point run to win the game so they're finding these moments where they need to find the moment and if they can keep doing that they're, they're gonna need to basically every single opportunity that they get against Galaris, they're gonna have to take it so they have been taking those opportunities today but can they do it up against some uh, more elevated positions as uh, opposition i should say yeah and and that's what this is going to boil down to right you guys have both mentioned it now whether that was yesterday or, or today Galaris has played almost flawlessly and trying to find the cracks in that type of a performance is always a difficult task that q9 is going to have to manage while also kind of keeping themselves at a level of competition that they are happy with um i think that this is definitely going to be a little bit of a back and forth like we keep reminding you all at home it is a best of seven, so it's the first to four instead of the three that we've been seeing in all of our previous series here so far. Do you think that that will open up an opportunity for Q9 here, Brody? Maybe. It's a big maybe, and it's a big stretch. And I don't <laughs> want to sound too biased, because at the end of the day, I know that people have in chat have been like, these guys, they're glazing Galaris constantly. Look, these guys have been insane. They've been so, so good as a team. <laughs> and honestly, it's so difficult to say that they've got many weaknesses. But I think when we go back towards that last best of five that we saw between these two teams, ultimately the only crack that we saw in the armor for Galaris was the control and i do still feel like that has been the same throughout the entire tournament so far it's been the only game mode in which anybody has had a chance of beating them so far and i think the problem is as we get in towards this best of seven you look at the way this best of seven is is constructed right it's there's there's what one control that's going to be game number three and if you give away the hard points and the search and destroys this is going to be over in five so i think this is just going to be very difficult q9 can't just rely on that control they have to find a way to steal a hard point steal a search and destroy away from galaris and honestly like to be fair 
maybe apart from the search and destroy, because let's be honest, that was a trouncing the other day uh, between Q9 and Galaris. Uh, Galaris didn't even give him a chance. The hard point, like, it was just a couple of mistakes from Q9, a couple of key rotations mm. they gave away, and they could well have been in a much more competitive mm. position. So I don't want to call them out of those hard points just yet. Yeah, and we could see some of the highlights from the match earlier today. And this is this is uh, what we were talking about, Tan. We saw these moments of just such solid gameplay out of Q9. And I think that at least mentally that will set themselves up well heading into this match, even if, even if they think because of that local advantage that Galar says the favorite. Yeah, like... I think we will often in any sport we're involved in, you, you think about the hard game you have to get to a grand final rather than if you've just kind of breezed through a team. It sets mm -hmm. you up maybe a little bit nicer to have that harder game to give you just maybe a little bit of toughness, give you that sort of rush in terms of how things have been going. You've been tested already today. Your shot's going to be crispy. Whereas for Glorious, I mean, did they need to be at their best to win their semifinal? Who knows? But have they got other levels? Absolutely. There's a couple of different ways you can look at it. A couple of strolls that you can grasp at, which is exactly what i'm doing right here but at the same time <laughs> it, it really can make a, a bit of a difference in terms of if you have had that good practice before the game starts well chat we've asked you every single time we've done this while we're waiting for our teams to be set up for their entrances those walk-ins for the grand finals we want to hear your thoughts on the competition as well let us know if you think it's going to be Galaris that not only wins but steals the title away from the region that currently has it and crowns themselves the champions here of our mobile masters or will Q9 keep it in their home turf are they going to be able to topple the local favorites I mean it's it's going to be a fantastic matchup to be sure but we'll, I want to know what you guys think and if you think you know the score line as well how it could potentially play out let us know in chat because I want to see if the boys agree with you before we talk about that though we've got a few more stats to take a look at here Brody yeah, it is that same story, I think, that we saw from last match, right? Where it's just like, I think what we're seeing from Galaris is a very obvious. These guys are dominating pretty much every single match they're coming up against. Whereas Q9, I think, when we look especially towards that uh, semi-final with Seminal, everything feels a little bit more even. And I don't know if that's the path that Galaris have had to this point, right? I mean, really, the, the biggest matchup they've had was versus Q9 in their group. Q9 obviously have had to face a little bit tougher competition, I would argue. Uh, but nonetheless, I do think it does, does, does show a difference in the way in which Galaris are dominating their matchups versus where Q9, I think it's a lot more scrappy. It's a lot more dogmatic. And that is at the moment, I think, being shown out in those stats. I think I'll also be interested to see what the the poll looks like from the uh, Brazilian side of things because their poll last time around had lots of love for Stalwart. It was very one-sided on that side of things, but now you've got Galaris in there. If it's not like... 95 ton i will be shocked in favor uh, of they're, galaris they're a fan favorite 100 <laughs> percent. i i think it's well especially in the venue at least anyway and i don't know if they've been on their phones right, and they exactly. are actually just uh, contributing uh but realistically <laughs> like i i mean we can talk about the crowd in that sense in, in terms of how much of a an advantage that is but can it be a hindrance as well if you find yourself behind do you start then feeling the pressure of that crowd a little bit in, in the wrong kind of way whereas when you're in the lead mm. yeah it's great it just gives you that further wind behind your sails but it's that problem of if things start going wrong i'm sure they're not going to be booing by any stretch but at the same time, it's about knowing that they're quiet, not not hearing them when you, things aren't going well is almost as much of a deterrent as it is an advantage when you're hearing them roaring for you. You know, another thing that we didn't really deep dive too much, but we've still kind of ended up there, Brody, is that storyline of East versus West. And that's where we're yeah. at now in these grand finals. And it is just kind of that regional pride that goes along with the whole competition. Yeah, it's been an interesting evolving story, Laurent, right over the course of the last couple of years where it has felt like in the past maybe West have been more dominant than the East and we went towards 2023 champs and Seminole who, or then known as Luminosity, I should say, uh, everybody was expecting to come out and win the competition. Uh, they fell to godlike in honestly what was probably one of the best matches of, of COD Mobile I think I can ever remember. Um, and, and that has, I think, skyrocketed this storyline of just like who is better you know at the moment it is definitively the east with obviously wolves taking that entire tournament q9 and godlike making it also to top
top four. But now you've got a situation where Galaris from the Latin America region have a chance to win a point back for the West here to bring the uh, trophy back over towards the western side of the globe. They've got a really good shot at it. Uh, but Q9, again, not to be underestimated here. They have taken out those World Champs Wolves in their respective regional playoffs. So they are definitely not to be underestimated here. And that was something that we had even seen when we watched that Q9 team profile video ton. We heard the players talking about the fact that just generally, as the scene has grown, the competitive ability of the major regions has just completely exploded. We're at a different level than yeah. where we started. And I, I think that that's just going to culminate in, in insane grand finals. Yeah, of course. And I think that, you know, that's a natural progression that the entire scene will kind of go on. There's a there's a certain ceiling, uh, you know, that you do hit as, a, as an eSport in terms of the ability of some of the players. But realistically, everybody else playing up against them in these environments are going to continue to get better. All right, everybody in chat, I hope you are ready to go because us watching this means our walk-ins for our teams are about to happen. I'm actually really interested to see if the Gallerist Club of fans can somehow be louder than they've already been with all of the air horns. The stands look even more packed than they were, and we keep getting an opportunity to see uh, Lucasine's family as well. We saw his parents there not not only yesterday, but also today, giving so much love to both him and the rest of the squad. I think everyone is really ready to get into this last match, Brody, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun. I can't wait for this. Yeah, this is so exciting again. There's just so many storylines going into this matchup. You've already mentioned the fact that no matter what happens here in this grand final, we are going to have a changing of the guard. We're going to have a new world champion here momentarily before, of course, the world championships at the end of the year. And Galaris could well be that team. You're seeing them making their way through now. And they've had the crowd behind them the entire time. You mentioned the families that are there supporting this team, the friends and families that are there giving these guys hype behind every single play. And we've mentioned it so much. A lot of the at times, I know a lot of people get fed up of saying it, but honestly, it does feel like they are definitely feeding off that. They are very confident at the moment. They know this is theirs to lose. And then on the flip side of things, it's so much almost added pressure on Q9, knowing that they want to keep it within their home region. They were able to take out Wolves earlier on, a long time ago, in order to get to this stage where they can be competing here in our Mobile Masters time. So outside of whatever they've got going on in the local arena, there's that thought in the back of their heads. Yes, of course. I, you know, they'll want to do it for their region, but I think they, they've got to want to do it for themselves more than anything, right? I mean, these guys are their own team in their own right, whatever region they're from. Yes, okay, the pressure is going to be there, but they will be looking at this crowd who are giving them all kinds of stick and be thinking, yeah, I would, we would love to shut you up really quickly. And that's what they'll be aiming to do. And look, they've got to just go in, concentrate and play in the game, not worry about representing your region or anything like that. You've just got to go in there, concentrate on what you're doing as a team and work as well as you possibly can do. Clutch up in those moments like you have done consistently. They only need to do it a couple more times if they want to walk away with that trophy. Well, we got to see both of these teams on their respective walk-ins the first time around when they came in for their semifinals. And over time, start to get to see a few rituals that happen. Galaris has uh, their team huddle where they kind of hype each other up and then cheer before they go. I saw lots of kind of individual focus on the side of Q9 when they were getting ready for their matchup as well, just really locked in and trying to focus on what they need to do. And this is a great view. I love this. I, <laughs> if only I could hear what they were saying here, Bernie. <laughs> all speak I love this. All, all speak Portuguese, to be fair. You, yeah, you know, that, that's fair. probably the more important part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. to be fair, none of us speak Portuguese. So we wouldn't have a clue uh, what is going on. It's kind of funny, though, because we've been on the outside of this huddle for the, the longest time. So actually to be on the inside of one now, seeing what's going on for these guys. I, I think you can just see the camaraderie between them, right? You know, the real brotherhood between these guys. Uh, you know, they've been playing Ooh. so, so well all tournament long. One more match, and it is in the bag for them. Here's a look then at our map set for this best of seven. And this is really interesting, I think, specifically looking towards the hard points to kick this off ton, right? Because we've been talking about how, uh, you know, we look towards the last best of five. It was an Arsenal, it was a summit uh, for that series. This time around, we've gone for a takeoff, and crucially, a Hacienda. They've had to accede that to a roster that are very, 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 very strong on Hacienda hardpoint. They didn't lose a single one, I believe, back in the regular season in their Latin region. 
Yeah, I, and I, I just want to point something else out, actually, whilst we're doing that. Uh, Arsenal banned coming through from Q9, who've lost it two times in a row now. So <laughs> no surprise to see that one going. And, and based on what happened to them previously up against Galoris, that is not too much of a surprise, but it does allow those sort of picks to come through in terms of the Hacienda, uh, things like that. Loris will be more than happy with that. But, I mean, when you look at it in terms of how it works out in a best of seven, you get an extra control map in there, of course. For the side of Q9, you don't want to necessarily just focus on those controls, but know that you have had their number in the previous series. You were able to beat them when it came down to Crossroads. Now, if you can find another one of these maps, get a control, then all of a sudden you have at least the potential of getting to that last control map. <laughs> This is the potential time to do it. We've got to get the cameras clean for the finals. We can't have them dead. Yeah, because we're going to be watching them plenty, right? Lukashin is that guy. Get that camera clean so we can see this man's face when he's popping off on the main stage. You know, another thing I want to get your, both your thoughts on, too, is the fact that the Tunisia made it through. And if I'm remembering it correctly, that was uh, a map that Q9 lost pretty, pretty badly to yeah. Galaris. So what what's your thoughts on that, Brody? Yeah, it's an interesting one for sure. I think I, I think Q9 are still good at Tunisia Search and Destroy. Um, they'll know where that went wrong. They'll know that they weren't adapting properly uh, to what Galaris were putting down on their offensive approaches. They were letting Galaris into the bomb sites way too often. And the thing is as well, we know from recent proof that Q9 can play Tunisia Search and Destroy pretty well. I mean, they dominated Seminal on that map much in the same way that Galaris dominated them. So I'm not necessarily surprised to see it back into this best of seven at the end of the day it is one of the stronger maps for q9 on the whole but i am going to be surprised if they play it the same way i'm going to expect a lot of adaptations coming through a lot more stacking on towards these sites on the defense to make sure that gallerists don't just puncture a hole in it mm. and get control of the site right away yeah, and I just wanted to jump in on that point again about Tunisia. It definitely felt like Galaris were making a lot of work uh, actually go their favor through the middle alleys more than anything, more than necessarily hitting the big the sites altogether. It felt as if they were finding routes that were open, chinks in the armor, so to speak, from Q9. So that's something that they need to absolutely tighten up on. I love that. I love that. And hopefully they're of the same mindset hopefully that's something that they paid attention to considering it was the pick uh from their side of things that got put into this uh this map rotation here so uh, they look comfortable confident and relaxed right now as does Galaris. so i think both these squads are ready to get into our grand finals action which is truly just moments away considering everyone looks also ready to go with their tech admins look happy ready to get this thing going i hope chat everyone at home you are just as excited as we are we can see the audience everyone trying to get into their seats get some last minutes minute refreshments as well before they settle in to watch this fantastic or sure to be fantastic best of seven i it's, it might be time to ask for score lines we are probably almost oh. into the game so i want predictions Ooh. on the score lines here ton i'll start with you i am going to go bold and say four to zero to go. <laughs> I, th I think wow. they might run through it only okay, because, okay, and I, and I will, I will just go and give some context to that in the sense that me and Brody actually discussed predictions. We both have the same ones, and I can't have the same one, so I'm actually taking the fall if anything. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with the one I think more likely and say four to zero. I don't think it's all that right, unlikely. All right. I'll say that much. I think I think 4-0 is like, I mean, look, they, they didn't exactly get dominated in the control they lost to Q9, right? So I, I think, you know, it's not unlikely to see this be a 4-0. I'm going to go 4-1 though, Lauren. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if I'm right. Let's get into it. Grand finals for Mobile Masters are underway. Well, here we go. Q9 taking on Galoris. It wasn't a culmination of what feels like three or four months of my life, Brody, and everybody else's in terms of the Call of Duty mobile scene all the games up till this moment who is going to be crowned the best team in the world yet right now in COD Mobile. Q9 have a lot to live up against again. They've got a big reputation to being monsters in their region in China and they just didn't show it against Galarish yesterday. We need a better performance out of them to start this map off and uh, I guess all day to be fair we've seen players like Maoshi, Sun, those guys going off uh, for Q9 so if they can show up here versus Galaris they might well have a good go of things for the moment though things looking pretty contested over here by P1 and Q9 looking to garner some more of that time you can already see Galaris here Tunt they're already starting to get themselves in towards that stadium for the next tilt. P2 very crucial when it comes down to it you could start to dictate exactly what happens over the rest of the map you can get some decent time 
We do get that full wipe, which is what Sun's trying to do. Lukashin did find a couple, but Sun and Co now trying to make his way around. A really good start here from Q9, which it kind of feels paramount based on some of the other starts they've had to some series and hard points. A good start here on map number one of the grand final feels crucial. Yeah, you, you have to try and carry through some momentum against Galaris and stop them before they can get started. And it feels like they've done that so far. Sub pressure in the kill feed here. Q9 keeping Galaris away from the hard point momentarily. But I mean, to be fair, when it comes down to Galaris, that is only ever going to last for a moment, isn't it? As they're now backing towards this time. And as ever with P2, you know where Q9 are going to be spawning here. So you're going to be trying to keep an eye on that stairwell. Sun, though, has managed to get in towards the hard point and immediately Ow. converts for a double to start things off. Yulin's also going to pick up a couple of kills as well. And Q9, they're in. Sun has been ridiculously impressive today. Q9 getting themselves inside the point. Healthy little lead to kick things off. And for Glorious, I think, well, I mean, not right necessarily falling behind by any sort of decent stretch as Yang will find a couple more, and that will be now a decent stretch. 10 seconds or so more for Q9. But for Glorious, it feels like they've always been in the lead. It feels like they always have the crowd behind them. How are they going to start faring when they find themselves behind? Again, it's whether or not that crowd can step up behind them. Give them momentum to get back in towards these games, Tunt. Right now they are behind and now they're looking to have a good hold on P3. This is that big key rotation here from P3 to P4. They can get these heals back to back. Galaris will not just be back in this game, but they'll also be in an astounding lead against Q9. But Q9, they're not letting that happen. The wow. kill feed is theirs. They've managed to emerge in towards the hard point in the first 15. So now already has the equalizer out. Push going to be coming in through towards the point, but this has been phenomenal from Q9 so far. It's an easy wipe coming on through everybody from Glorious dropping. Looks in trying to do something about it, which he so often can. There's the third as well. Can't quite find the fourth. Irrelevant of the kills coming through from the superstar. Q9 still in control of the point. 25 seconds remaining here to play for. They may well break 100 already. And you know where Galaris are spawning. Uh, again, you know how the spawns work on this hill. Q9 in a really good position. A really start to put this one away off the start of this one. But Fokke is going to find a double. Mihawk now going to be able to double up on his own. Force to bring out the core for this hill. Mihawk's going to find three kills. It's nice for the scrap time. And it also forces a spawn out for Q9 gear. So Galaris going to be able to prevent Q9 from taking the rotation away towards next away from them. Lucas is now going to invest that Annihilator too. This is a big investment for Galaris, and they know just how important keeping themselves in the game at this stage of the hard point is, Tun. Time now ticking over towards P4. 50 seconds here would put Galaris right back into the lead. Holding it down where they can. Pabs are Foki doing very, very well, and all of a sudden, the tide seems to be turning a potential pinch on the card, though. Uling will win a gunfight over on the other side of things. And now that means the rest of the team can push through, but straight into equalizer fire. Galora starting to heat up now. Again, you know where Q9 is spawning. Galaris with the read. Fokke is just going to sit patiently in the corner here. These equalizers still got a little bit of gas left in the tank. And oh my goodness me, Fokke is making sure it's used correctly. That gas is translating into kills. 20 seconds still now to go on this time. And finally, they will eliminate... <laughs> R9 switches over to the weapon to get the kills. It's not to be in the end. Q9 still players over here and Sun's able to hold on towards this time. So Q9 will get the tail end of this hard point ton and they will maintain their lead going into the second set. But that was a huge kill for Galaris. They could not afford to lose that. If they did, oh boy, this would not be a kind scoreline. One they needed and one they invested a lot for. Get themselves now into a decent enough position. It's about a 35 point game. Q9 already proving that they are going to be here in this grand final. We were a little bit concerned. I want to say, like, at least when we seen them this morning up against Seminole in terms of how they started the game and the hard point on Arsenal. That map's now gone. It seems to have been an issue for them, and this may now be an issue for them as well. Galora starting to get some control over towards P1. P2 control will be there as well. The spawn's out from Q9. Galora starting to ease into this one. Jinan is the only one who can answer back. Yeah, and the thing about Galaris as well that you've noticed from the last couple of days of competition, right, Tan, is the fact that they're not scared to use their utility almost as soon as they get it, right? Obviously, they're operators. You see them kind of making sure they're used in tandem with one, one another, but you see a streak come out from Fokke there almost immediately as soon as it's earned. Galaris know how important time, even on a hill like P1, can be. And over the last few seconds, over the last 30 to 40 seconds, this has been entirely their control on P1. A lot of time that almost brings them neck and neck alongside Q9. And they're also like looking to make the rotation over by new as well. But a few kills now starting to come through from Q9. Fokke, maybe some nice timing around the flank, but Lucasin's actually going to be the one responsible for these kills. Tump, they want to make sure they get first touch on P2. He's about to touch 30 already. As we head into the second hill on the second rotation. Just feels like he creeps up, doesn't he? Doesn't necessarily set the world on fire with flashy players. Well, he does, but it just often seems to be kill after kill after kill in the kill feed. 
The break's going to start coming through from Glorious. Last time around, it was Q9 with this rotation. This time around, it is the Brazilian squad. Sodenko going to try to find a breakthrough, but the kills start to go their way. Traded across the board. Hen's able to find two. And is this going to be able to lock it down? Foki will get themselves in a position. The crowd going crazy. Galoris taking the lead for the first time. Valuable 25 seconds here. Q9 trapped into their spawn. Galaris know it too. They're looking to really force the issue here. Players coming through that one lane. Lucasin's, he's there. He's My ready God. for it. Lucasin with three. And that's going to bring Q9 <laughs> back once again. But Uling, the star player on the other side, responds in kind. Gets Q9 out of that potential spawn trap before it can even really begin. But Galaris have come storming back into this game. Tun, you talked about it already. The last couple of hills have been everything for them. And now once again, they're going to be the first team to touch on new. It felt like it was inevitable that it would happen, but for it to happen so quickly for Q9, not necessarily to start to crumble because they did find a, find a way back into the P2 point. Things are getting a little bit more interesting, but a couple of kills coming through from Q9 here. Galoris were here set up, but all of a sudden, the operators are used and the shots are crispy with the Annihilator. Good job coming through from Q9, but Lucas in has his Annihilator. He's already found three. He'll be looking for four and five. He doesn't need to find them. Make it the fourth. Make it the fifth for Lucas in. Phenomenal play coming out from Galoris. They might have had the control at the point. They lose it. They get it right back. Man, you put an Annihilator, I mean, in anybody's hand, to be fair, and it's a pretty dastardly weapon. You put it in Lucas in's hand, and it's just different gravy. Galaris. Looking for a valuable 15 seconds. Q9 not allowing it, though. They're still going in for this time. Couple of kills now coming through between Pabzero and Lucasin. It's going to give them a little bit of purchase towards this old hard point. But we'll look over towards the rotation here while that scrap time is being fought over. And there's one player from Galaris who's trying to desperately play their life. He's being hunted down, though, by Uling. Actually, to be fair, Pabzero does play his life a little bit longer than you would otherwise expect. Not to be, though. Q9 will get first look at the new hard point here. But Galaris, they're encroaching from all angles. Crab time. All the towards Galaris, but Q9 now in a really good oh, position. Uling. Really good job from Uling once again with the claw. Shooting his own teammates, but then everybody else falling. Phenomenal play coming through. Galaris will find a couple of kills, though. Maybe the break's going to start coming on in. They do have two players are pushing from one side, and then, of course, the other on the other side. Foki, we're trying to find the kills coming through, and there they fall. R9 in hand. Beautiful play, but still the lead there for Q9. Q9 now fighting for those back spawns once again. Galaris, this is a big 20. Can they hold on in time? Ulin's going to double up. That's actually three for Uling. It gives them a put in towards the hard point. He's still here as well, still causing problems. Q9 have made their way through, and it's going to be three once again between Uling and Xunan, who picks up a three-piece of his own. Q9 looking for this scrap time, and they are fighting for it desperately. Galaris, though, able to momentarily fight back here for this time ton. This is so, so close between these two teams. Every single second at this point of the game is crucial. Even scrap time like that, you cannot give it away. The gap was just maybe a little bit bigger after the first rotation of hills than it is now at the end of the second. Kalora slowly closing that gap, but Q9 have done very, very well to keep them at bay. Vixen and Milhawk doing very, very well. Managing to find a couple of kills over towards this P1 side. And they found a lot of time here last rotation, Brody. Can they do it once more? Vixen inside the point will eventually fall. Q9 seem to be keeping them off it. This is always going to be a scrappy hard point, to be fair. Galaris did get a lot of time of it last time around, though. And also, now the sub pressure really starting to rise up. Henry Cat able to transport for a couple up top towards P2. Galaris now starting to really earn some of this time. Henry Cat, though, finds himself isolated pretty quickly and gets overwhelmed by Q9, who are now in for the 15 seconds here. They can make this their own again. Once again, that lead will blow wide open for Q9, but start to keep an eye on that rotation, folks. Galaris will start to put players in there. For the moment, though, it should be Q9 first to touch wow. here, and they're winning gunfights towards the middle of the map as well. Tom, this is dangerous to Galaris. P2 rotations there for the Chinese squad. Ling Jinan finding the kills as well. Potential pinch opportunity, though. Are going to be expecting the push to start coming on through from both sides because that's where it's coming from from Glorious. It has to be a decent enough break. Q9 have managed to break 200 and they're not finding the kills here. Glorious, they can only find one. Q9, really good spot to win this game. You've got a purifier up top. Unfortunately, that zone is not going to work out, but still a couple of operators here. Now we make it three <gasps> coming out from Q9, and all the gunfights are being as one as well. There's not really much that you can do. Yeah, all right, your Pabzera, you're whipping the war machine out. And to be fair, you're finding some serious value here. Pabzera combines for three now, looking for number four. Pabzera removing all of these players from the hard point. Galoris, they've got in the hard point. 
It's the kind of moment they absolutely needed. Can't quite find the last dispabs there. All of a sudden, the spawns are start coming through for Q9. Pretty close to Claw in this position, though. It's just so, so dangerous. Mihawk, what can he do with it? Oh. It's three in a row. Lining them up beautifully. Can he find a fourth with it? First gun in as well. He can't find the fifth. But is the damage maybe done? 20 seconds is the lead as we head over towards another hill. Galoris in control once again. Yeah, and the last two times we went towards this hard point, it was Galoris that touched first, but it wasn't long before Q9 found their way through. They want to do it again here. Mao Xi and Yang Wan around the flank. The teammates now starting to spawn in and around them. That's not going to go well there. Pabzera is now trying to survive the gravity vortex gun from Yang Wan, who's going to put it in towards the hard point. Q9, they're in. They could still finish things here. Henry Cat, though, can he do anything with a purify? No is the answer. It's absolute chaos inside the hard point. Galaris trying to hold on with Euling, picking up a couple. Q9 looked like that might be in control for them now, just 15 seconds away from victory. Now Galaris, they're back in. They managed to get the way back in. Uling's the only one who can answer. Can't quite find much else, but the kill's being traded across the board. Which way are they going to go? It seems as a Galoris just about getting control. Q9, still 16 points away. But Galoris have found their way back in. 15 points remaining. That's scrap time. It's looking like they're going to get a hold of it. It's all about this rotation. There's going to be a huge gunfight going on in a second. It looks like Galoris are the first ones there. This is massive. They survived the onslaught over towards Big Alt. Scrap. Big scrap time for them, though. Now looking for it. <laughs> Fuck A finds a couple of kills for rotation. Now Q9 spawning towards the back. Fuck A converts for three. And now Galaris have to find their way through. And indeed they do. It's SMG Mayhem as Q9 able to break their way in towards the hard point players. Now from Galaris looking to approach it. Looking from all sides. You have to find a way in right about now. Hen, the last player to do anything. Can anybody touch in time? No. Q9 stomped them out in the final moments of the game. An incredibly close hard point, but Q9 strike first. Phenomenal performance from the Chinese side. It felt like even with the rotations, Galaris were just maybe a little bit soft. Uling again, though, showing the player that he is. Phenomenal performance. We talk about Lucas in. Uling might have outslayed him there by some distance. <laughs> I got to see those final stats, man. I got to see those final stats from Ulin because he was approaching 60 the last time I looked. I'm not sure if he actually got there or if he beat the record that Lucasin put down just a day ago. But goodness gracious me. I mean, I don't think we've spoken about Uling anywhere near enough. Uh, he's well regarded as one of the best players to come out of the Chinese region. And for good damn reason. Here it is. He does break that 60 wow. kill barrier in hardpoint. It isn't quite breaking the record from Lucas in yesterday, but I tell you what, I don't think it really matters that much, mate, because uh, that is a hell of a lot of slaying power that gives Q9 a lot of real estate in that game. It's a phenomenal start. They absolutely... Well, I don't want to say that they needed that, but the find a map number one hard point for, for being Q9 now puts you in such a better position in this series. Of course, Galarus are going to come and win some maps, you would like to presume, but Q9, to come out the gates like that, Silence the crowd just a little bit as well, Brody. Perfect start. Man, what a start in this game. What a start to this best of seven, by the way. Not just for Q9, but for us here. I mean, this is exactly what you want from a grand final where the lion's share of $200,000 is on the line. And uh, we weren't really sure whether or not it would be that competitive a matchup, just given how Galaris looked up versus Q9 yesterday in their first encounter. It felt like this might be a bit of a mismatch, but no, Galaris now seem to have a rival on their hands as Q9 have shown up to play. And we saw it early on this hard point. I think it was, what, that big 50 to 60 point advantage they built up early on. Gallus are able to try and close that lead as we got into the second set. But towards the end again, this is where Q9 really just started to step it up a notch. This was a huge heal for them to be able to win it towards the end of the game turn Absolutely everything. Oh boy, what a map. And I think, you know, when we've seen Focky find the three with the R9 towards the end, you're like, oh, <laughs> surely they don't do it. They found the break. But in the end, Q9 do such a phenomenal job to find back in. I mean, it, it was across the board. You know, we, we talked about it yesterday in, in some, some certain sense, at least anyway. This was when Focky found a few. That Q9 were, were out slain massively. And I mean massively in the very first hard point. And managed to only lose by around 70 points or so. So it can sometimes make a bit of a difference when that sling isn't necessarily there from the other side. When Q9 can actually keep up.
then they're going to be in a really good position, right? Because their fundamentals are very clearly there. And we got a good example of that in map number one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, again, it does feel like a lot of people may be underestimating Q9 here because it is worth saying that this Q9 roster has been yeah. one of the best teams in the world for a very long time. We go back towards 2023 champs and they managed to make it all the way towards the semi-finals there. They lost to eventual champions Wolves who uh, they got revenge on, hence why they're actually competing in this tournament. Q9 are a very, very good team and I, I just don't think they really had a chance to show it versus Galaris yesterday. Mm. They've taken a while to get into their groove and I think now they are most certainly there. So it feels like at the very least, ton they fixed their mistakes on the hard point somewhat. They look a lot better on these rotations. Their slaying power is now up to scratch. Next up is going to be a Tunisia search and destroy and I guess the next question for us is have they fixed it there? Well, they looked very good at that map this morning when they went up against... Uh in their semi-final it was a very very good performance against seminal uh completely forgot seminal's name there it is an odd one it, it sometimes just brushes off my brain i'm getting a little bit old brody um so when it comes down to that search and destroy they played this morning they were fantastic on the attack i mean immediately come out the gates i think they were three to zero pretty much immediately and that put them in a good position so the opposite happened to them yesterday when they were up against Galaris. They managed to actually find themselves down pretty sharpish when they were on the defensive side. They lost a lot of rounds early though. So that does make a difference. I think it's a momentum thing, but I think that can happen quite often with Tunisia. If you're on the wrong side of a couple of decent attacks, it can really put you on the back foot because then you know yourself, oh God, we got to do this ourselves. The pressure starts to build. We quite often, or at least from my point of view, I always feel as if defense first is the more beneficial, but it can kind of can be a bit of a double-edged sword in a certain sense because if you start to do badly on the defense then you've got a really tough time on the attack yeah definitely i think that is ultimately the, the, the kind of the thing here with tunisia search and story i mean you guys are home you know how this works uh, at this point to be frank right um if you do kind of mess up your defenses you give away these rounds on offense and this is exactly what happened yesterday versus galore between galoris uh, galoris excuse me and q9 your defensive rounds yourself, your offensive rounds yourselves are going to be really difficult unless you can figure out a way to break the defense just like your opposition did. And that doesn't happen uh, that often. And again, it didn't happen uh, yesterday when we saw Q9 and Galaris play on this very map mode combination. Right from the rip, it felt like Galaris were just playing hyper aggressive. They were winning so many of their opening engagements on these sites. That cannot happen again. We need to see those adaptations from Q9. They can't give Galaris that real estate. And already right from the start here, Galaris trying something a little bit different. It's towards B numbers over here for, for so no oh my god just wings one out and says yeah remember that map number one it wasn't a fluke great start coming in from q9 the sun's been so good today diminishes Galoris's numbers only four on this very first attacking round not the end of the world but some way to kick things off q9 how much here on the defense already. Already got the numbers in their favor, Tunt. Galaris, how do you approach this situation? You don't have the numbers, but at the very least, you've picked up Bomb. And they're going to play this one slightly separately. I've got to imagine if there's any situation here in which Galaris are going to push in towards one of these sites. Mihawk has to be the first player because you don't want to get to be the Bomb partner, be the entry kill in this situation. The problem is Q9 are playing this as a full four stack. They are just running around the map, snaking together, making sure they're going to trade one another. Wolf packing together. Galaris, now you... I'll just get this one down and well okay you've got to invite them into the site which they are well going to take that invitation very very shortly well, i'm now down are they going to be expecting everybody from the flank though absolutely not is the answer to that <laughs> question suck in the archway sun finds two more that's three in the round from him first blood to q9 a normal start from q9 and again we talked about it right is you've just got to win these first bloods they are so crucial to winning rounds here on Tunisia Search and Destroy, if you allow the offensive side to win those first blood engagements and get in towards the sites, well, dangerous situation to be in, but it doesn't happen. Q9, starting strong, big snipes coming out from Sun to kick this one off. What does round number two look like? It looks like the same kind of look here coming out from Gallery, straight towards B. Is it any faster this time, though? See, you have kind of been back down here. Xena, not necessarily... Yeah, with the best weapon, but he could... Cause some issues here. Well, they know he's in the corner. They do now. He's already been taken out. A couple of more kills coming through now, though, and it's just about even numbers. Three versus three. Yeah, flanker player from Maoshi. I already pick up a couple of kills here, so this is good for Q9. Managed to infiltrate the bomb site as well. He's ninjuring. 
He's on the bomb. Is anybody going to check it in time? Yeah, all right. Focky's there. He's making sure that nobody's going for the bomb plan. I think he might actually got the audio cue against Maoshi as well. So now a two versus two. Uling towards the site. He gets shut down. This is very individualistic. Sun has oh. a couple of different directions to watch. And he's going to get shut down by Focky. I'll tell you what, mate. Maoshi made that round interesting, at least. Ridiculously interesting. It's so awkward around that B site, though, right? You're looking from double doors. You're looking from There's so many different angles they can kind of be coming from. It was really actually quite a nice play from Gina and up top. Just couldn't find the shots. Big stack over towards this A side now, though, for Glorious. Shots starting to ring on through. Uling finds the first on the Lucas in, and then all of a sudden it starts to get traded away. Which way is this one going to go? Two versus three now in favor of Glorious. Hen will try to find some more if he can, and he will. So now left all on his own. One versus three. He wants to be quick about this before the bomb goes down, ideally. Now that option is out the window, and he's just been spotted out by Pabzera as well. So I'd imagine here Galaris are just going to try and overwhelm him. Exactly what happens. Galaris now on the offense, starting to put these rounds together. Yep. And this is bad. A couple of rounds now. Underneath your belt on the attacking side. And Q9, even if they were to win the next three of their defenses, it's okay, but it's a tall order. You'd expect them to maybe leak at least another. Their map hit coming on through, and this was a problem for Q9 yesterday. It's going to be a problem again, unless they can start to win the gunfights. Yang Wan being so impressive in these close quarters fights. Which way are these ones <laughs> going to go? It's a one versus two. Oh, goodness me, all of that. How about that for a flurry kills in quick succession? All of it results now, as you said, mate, in a one versus two. Pabzera, the player left alive in this situation. And to be honest, I mean, the Tundra is pretty good. <laughs> Usually you don't want to sniper in these situations, but the Tundra will do everything at any range. Q9, mate. Playing this one together. Pabzera is being gifted the bomb. He's going to be able to escape over towards B. Timing should be on his side to get this thing down. But he's going to have to do this. He's going to have to pick off these players. And now the movement's starting to come through from Sun and Uling. So is he going to perfectly predict where these guys are going to come from? Is he expecting the push to come through? Towards the mid cut. Where would he go from? Sun and Uling. Probably the two most impressive players on Q9 so far today are the ones he has to deal with. Here we go for the shot on the Sun, who actually may well just be defusing. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> it jumps straight onto it. <laughs> Q9. Easily done. Feels like Q9 are hot on those diffusers. <laughs> That's the second time in his very rounds now. We've seen Q9 just jump straight on it. No messing about. No reason to. Good effort from Galaris, though, there on the offense. Now, might see something a little bit different here. And we are a, uh, what was this, a 1-1-3 one, one, split? Kind of sounds like a football formation or soccer formation for those of you out there. Galaris now putting a little bit more in towards A. Yang One is probably the biggest threat here towards this entire situation. Sat inside that little cubby. They need to remove him before they get this bomb down. Yeah, with the R9 as well. Anybody over towards Archers. Probably not where you want to be if you don't have anything that is close quarters. Nice and slow and steady, though, from the attacking side. Nothing to write home about so far, Brody. Both two teams just feeling each other out. Feels like Q9 here in this situation do have a lot more secret weapons ready to go. Not only the players around A, but of course Maoshi pushed up towards the middle of the map. And now finally we'll activate for the kill. No immediate trade yet. Pabzar is just waiting for Maoshi to get into his line of sight. But towards the site, Yang Wan can now finally activate with that kill versus Mihawk. We said he was going to be a problem inside. Archie is Galaris now need to find a way towards it. They can't do anything wow. there. Down goes Pabzera and Lucas in. And the setup from Q line is impeccable. Fantastic job. Just sat tight. I think. I mean, Galarus just didn't really have too much to offer that. Q9 finding two defensive rounds in a row. I think Galarus, if they don't find that initial opening pick, is that where they maybe struggle? This is kind of where they revel in the chaos for the most part. And the chaos of the round is over immediately. Ready and waiting. Ooling. Having a look over towards the other side of the stage saying, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Now we switch sides though. Q9 going to go on the offense. And I think the threatening thing for Galaris here, a lot of the, uh, the positives of Galaris come down to their sniper rifle, their AR play. For Q9, it's the aggressive sub pressure you see from the likes of Shinan and Yang Wan. 
That aggression isn't actually going to be here off the start. It feels like Galaris have beaten them to the punch on towards A. It's going to force them to rethink how they want to do this round. But it is a very, very quick rethink from Q9. They are making a rotation here. It's going to be on a long player. From Galaris over towards this side. The deal with anything over towards B. Seems as if Q9 are being very fluid. Happy to make a play any which way they want. It's down to the IGL to coordinate these. Say, right, okay, where should we hit? Smoke's out here. Let's move now. Haven't been able to really get any inroads until right this second. Now, B. Oh, I'm going down. Galaris are on their way back over. They're fighting themselves 4 2 down here. Could do with getting this round. Yeah, now having to force themselves into a retake situation here. Galaris. Henry's going to open that up with the first kill. They're all now coming up from the top of those stairs, though. Fueling in a position that I don't think they're going to quite expect. And yeah, he takes Henry Cat by surprise as well. Now from behind, here comes Zinan to completely ruin this play. There's one, there's two. Number three will be denied by Lucasin, but it takes time off the clock now. A two versus two. Lucasin with that kill. Players up top, Maoshi, one of them. Wow. He just lines them up and knocks them down just as easily. The offense for Q9. Honestly, Tan, I do feel like Galaris probably gave up that site just a little bit too easily. But at the same time, I, I, I suppose Q9... Rotating nicely, giving information elsewhere, baiting it out where it needs be, and just waltz onto the site. They do it so quickly and efficiently that Galaris don't have an answer. Not quick enough, at least anyway. Enough Q9. They're two rounds away from the win. Galaris need to turn this around pretty quickly, but they are on the defensive side. We've seen Q9 string together, what was it, three rounds on the defensive side? And well, oh, I mean, boy. it doesn't look like Galaris are going to do it in this round. Zinat. And Yang doing so well, just penetrating the defense over towards A. A kill has been answered back. It will be a four versus three, but in favor of Q9. This is exactly what I talked about. Q9 with their aggressive sub pressure. Galaris, no response. Now down to a couple of sniper rifle players and Fokke, the R9 here for this oh. roster. And Pabzera gets overwhelmed by Yang one towards the back line as well. Q9 just playing a totally different game at the moment. Yeah, Fokke would take one player down, but the number's still... Well in favor of Q9 here. And there goes Henry Cat. No choice but to take this round individually. And Fock 8, look, I mean, R9 player. He's a pretty good R9 player. Might well be the best player in the world with the R9. I don't think he's winning those gunfights at that range. <laughs> Not going to happen. Just doesn't quite have the facilities in that scenario. This is looking really good for Q9. It's nothing like the game yesterday. Galaris need this crowd behind them. They've gone maybe a little bit quieter. I said that as they started chanting, but then all of a sudden it's that sub pressure you talk about come flying through the front door of Yajina. Q9 now. Do you have the numbers advantage? Just a three versus two in their favor. This round would secure a two to zero lead. It does just feel like at the moment, doesn't it? Their sub pressure is just going unanswered by Galaris. Fokke going to take side of the round though. Now just down to C9 and Huling, who will pick up one former of those players. Now just down to Fokke. One versus two, and I mean, cute. They're so quick on it, mate, aren't they? Quickest rotation you'll ever see here. Immediately making that decision to get the bomb down over towards A. And it's it's just so disadvantageous for Fokke, right? They know that he's the player they're up against. They know that he is probably the player that's going to struggle most with an A-pawn. As fluid as water, Q9. When it has come down to these attacks, when it's come down to the defenses as well. They've moved together. They've worked together so, so well. And now it will take a one versus two from Foki to try and get something going. They've spotted him out. Top wine is the lockdown from Uling. Jinan's not going to offer anything up here either. Both of them just playing the corners and finding themselves two to zero up in this grand final. Q9 looking sublime right now. And Galaris have had no answer so far. The crowd definitely silenced. Absolutely stunned. Q9. Now they are here. We've been wondering where that competitiveness was in that last series. Again, going back towards that best of five yesterday. Galaris were all over Q9 here, though. Q9. They just go unanswered. And it feels like a conflict of playstyles to a certain extent, right? Where, again, I talked about it a lot of the, the firepower for Galaris on that map in particular. More often does come down to your ARs. You look at your star players like Lucasin and Fokke in so many situations with the R9. And for Q9, I mean, their answer to that, all right, we've got pretty good sub players. You know, we know that Yang Wan and Xenon in these positions can just run at you. 
we're just going to send them at you and you do not have a response. And that just felt like that so many times in those offensive rounds. I also do believe to a certain extent there though, Chris, I said it in the middle of those games, it felt like maybe there were moments where Galaris gave up just a little bit too easily on the defense. I think certainly over towards B, you need to ensure if you've got Henry Cat on that site that he stays there, that he is the one watching that angle. You know, get a trophy system down, make sure that there's no utility coming over the top to take you out because you are the only reason that Q9 aren't going to get on that site. And, uh, you know, little moments like that maybe did cost Gal Galaris. But in the end, uh, to be honest with you, that was all Q9. They played that so well. A fantastic performance so far from the Chinese side. And now find themselves 2-0 to zero up in this best of seven. A lot of Call of Duty left to be played, though. Count out Galaris at your own peril. Things could turn around very, very quickly. But I think if you're Q9, you think about the series yesterday. What was the only map that you took off Galaris? was control and that's going to be coming up next <laughs> gotta be feeling nice about your your chances now i mean two to zero up and a best out of seven it's not very often you throw these kind of things away i just can't believe what we've seen i mean both our predictions are out the window mate <laughs> oh done and dusted mate Over. yeah I, I mean, this has just not gone the way anybody expected, to be honest with you. I know there'll be a lot of Q9 fans out there and, and kind of anti-fans, I guess, of Galaris that wanted this to go Q9's way that maybe would have thought, yeah, you know, we saw this coming. But Q9 have just absolutely stepped it up a notch. This is the Q9 that we wanted to see coming through. And we can see some of that early rounds here. That one was stupid. I, I just don't think there's any other way to describe it, right? I mean, just being able to swiftly dispatch with Galaris yep. like that. We move over towards their offensive efforts. And again, the way they move as a squad, the way they're so decisive as a squad, <laughs> yes, I know that there are moments where Galaris kind of did give up a lot of key power positions that they probably should not have done. But you've still got to give it to Q9 because they made so many proper decisions in these clutch situations where Galaris just had no response whatsoever. I want to say, honestly, that, that Galaris are... Uh have looked a little bit weak in terms of like actually holding down on things it felt like yesterday they couldn't do anything wrong every single time that there was any question mark they would have the answer today they, they don't have any answers whatsoever every single time that q9 throws something different or, or put themselves in advantageous position it never feels like galaris are going to find a way out of it it feels like every single time galaris are folding and i wonder if the pressure the crowds may be getting to them they need to turn around very very quickly map number three will be coming up just after this quick break don't go anywhere I 
wanna go low. No switch and sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm the OG me. LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah, I stay high when they wanna go low. No switch and sweet, I just get up and roll. No AI, I'm the OG me. LOL to the ones trying to rip for free. Yeah. Solo quiero ascender y te busco hasta la lluvia Corazón de mujer tiene su mal y su bien Ternura, no te oculto Nine wearing a secretos son absurdos Got time for them y no me luzo Desde que me enteré se volví en lujo Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Mami, mami, mami chula Eres suficiente, quítate la duda Mami, mami, mami chula Tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura Nunca dura, ni su asura Ella lo jura, but then I put the bone And I ain't beefing, no peleo Dejo que pasen las cosas, más bien la veo Y analizo desde lejos Gracias a Dios me entero y me sale bello Me enteré del juda lo perro Movimiento limpio, espíritu en espejo Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder desde que me enteré de que ella, yeah, este mundo se mueve con puro poder. Mami, mami, mami chula, eres suficiente, quítate la duda. Mami, mami, mami chula, tú sabes que ese error nunca no dura. Nunca dura, ni su asura, ella lo jura, but then I put the bone. And I ain't beefing, no peleo, dejo que pasen las cosas, más bien la veo. Nunca dura, ni su asura, ella lo jura, but then I put the bone. And I ain't beefing, no peleo. Que pase la cosa más bien la veo Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder Desde que me enteré de que yeah Este mundo se mueve con puro poder The Snapdragon Pro Series powered by Samsung Galaxy is brought to you by Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Monster Energy, and DHL. 
Welcome back to the Mobile Masters Grand Final. And, uh, well, it's something we didn't expect to happen here. Q9 looking so, so good. Two to the good, actually. Up against the hometown favorite and Galarus. Brody, we didn't see this coming at all. We know Q9 are a good team. But did we think they'd be 2-0 up after what happened in the series between these two yesterday? Absolutely not. Certainly not like this, uh, I would say as well. I don't, are you thinking the fashion in which they were able to win the hard point? All right, it was a really close one. It was a very 50-50 affair. It came down right to the wire, right down to basically the very final hill of that game. So competitive. And we discussed that before we got into this one. We thought, you know, maybe they could win a hard point away uh, from Galarus just because of the fact that, again, you know, we talked about yesterday and those hard points, the hard point we saw between the two rosters, excuse me, was really close. Uh, but we come to today, and it's not just the hard point, it's the search and destroy as well, which not, they completely flip on its head, yet they replay the Tunisia search and destroy from yesterday, and everything is totally different. Not only do they have a response to Galaris's aggression on the offense, but hey, they're pretty damn aggressive themselves uh, on yeah. their own offensive rounds, especially that sub pressure that we were talking about, just absolutely insane. And the response from Galaris is completely muted. They have had nothing to say in that search and destroy. And now we go into a control and we already discussed that feels like it's been the weak point so far for Galaris this entire event. Yeah. Can they turn around with their potential weak point? Shame we're not in a studio in Brazil outside. It looks it lovely. Nice, oh, I, I don't know how you deal with the heat, Brody. I want to oh, well. presume not great. I don't know. I just presume not great. You'd be right. I think I've told you this before. Uh, I'm not too sure why there's like toilet paper uh, on the desk. Uh, but uh, yeah, not not very well. I'll be honest with you, mate. I, I kind of like, I'm sweat buckets. That's why I'm not looking forward to summer. We're, we're now in April, so we're approaching that late spring kind of uh, early summer period where I'm going to start to sweat my butt off. I'm going to have to open my window and because I live on the bottom floor of an apartment complex, I can't do that when casting which means every time you see me on cast now, I'm just going to die. Regardless, uh, yeah, I would love to be on, out in Brazil. I think the, the atmosphere right now over there must be insane to be in that land environment not just as a as a talent right i'm sure you and i would enjoy that but also for these players as well it, it just kind of hits different than when you're sitting at home in your bedroom with your mobile phone on your own pillow playing the game very different environment Galaris have been feeding from it the entire tournament thus far they're gonna need to feed from it now more ton as we get into the control ah oh, they need this crowd well and truly behind them you can see them trying to g themselves up sitting on that stage they need to find something. Lucas Jin needs to bring that high level that he so often does. It's already a good start, though, coming in from Galaris. Over to them to try and defend, to kick things off. Or on the attack, I should say. Sorry, as the push starting to come on through. Pams right now inside. The point ticking up over towards the B side here for Galaris. A really good start. B already locked in. Solid start from Galaris. This is what they wanted here. Now they have to convert it. We saw with this back in round number three of their last raid control in that last series. We were able to swing with the momentum from B to A very, very quickly. It feels like they're doing the same thing again here. Honeycats managed to find the exact route that he wanted in through money. Now in towards the basketball court as well. Goodness gracious, hold your horses for a second well. here, folks, because Galaris have completely transitioned perfectly over towards A. I mean, this is a solid start. They've only lost five lives. I mean, and this is perfect. They've got complete control down the pool side. Nobody causing any issue through the middle of the map. Q9 have stumbled into map number three. Seem to be steadying the ship just a little bit, but it's potentially some damage already too far gone. Nades out over towards the pool. You've got to try and retake this side of the map if you can. If you are Q9, managed to find a couple of kills on their way out over towards Tiki. They will get some sort of control back, but they find themselves six lives down in a minute and 40 to defend over towards the A side. Gallus have already put in a real dent into the defense here for Q9. Now they've got to try and crawl back into that with 90 seconds on the clock. But kills now mostly going in in favor of Q9. Pabzera is going to play his life perfectly here. Should get shut down by Yang Wan through the open stairs. But he's playing his life long enough at the moment to try and draw these players out. Allowing them a little bit of map control now. No longer the case. The Sun's going to get a double kill with the sniper rifle. Now more starting to come through. Sun's actually going to get number three. I mean, look, there are kills to be found here for Galaris, but it's nowhere near convincing enough. Q9 are individually across the map being a total nuisance at the moment. I love this one, Gina. They're coming to chase him, but it's meaning they're having to turn around. They're having to concentrate some efforts over towards it. The fact that he even finds one there is a bonus. Now, if I'm Q9, I do not turtle up yet. They've got to try and extend out as quickly as they can. Ling's already done that. The Odin up top in bedroom. Absolute paramount. You have a defensive player up towards this side. And we need to make sure you're watching the flank, which is now starting to come on through. Can Galaris find something over this side? The advantage early on from Galaris is completely dissipated. 
Q9 now fighting back once again. That it's push gone. from jungle has fallen away. Oh, goodness wow. me. Xenon for a three. Galaris around the back line. Rejected. And now it's one player out of the round. We go down to a five versus four in favor of Q9 here. Luke Sin able to bring that one to a four versus four. Potential flank now from Fokin. He might have the timing. Oh, oh Xenon's he's already already pulled down. it out. The calls out as well from Xenon. And all of a sudden, this is working out perfectly. How have they held on here? How often does it feel like Galaris are finding something back? And then it just gets shut down immediately. Man, that, that should have been Galaris' round. They're going to be really frustrated with that, especially the momentum they built early on. What was that? An eight to nine life advantage that fell away from them. Down to the individual heroics of Q9. Now in this round, Q9 choosing to go for A. Something you don't often see from offensive teams here on raid control right from the rip. Galaris going for a couple of players on the flank here, but it's been read perfectly by Sun. He's already found one. I don't think he quite recognizes that there'll be a second there. So Q9 hit. Now retreating towards the point. They want to get this one done and dusted pretty early on. Kills now starting to come through from Galaris, though. They are much more preoccupied with putting a potential spawn trap together than actually holding on towards this point. The kills now starting to come through desperately in their favor. One more player to deal with, though. And Galaris finally will clear that point. But that's two ticks down for Q9 on A. Not a bad start from Q9. And they're sticking at it over towards this A side. Yang Wan finds himself in a position now inside the smoke with the SMG, which will be brilliant. But Lucas Jin. Annihilator is out. And this is now going to be a problem finding his way over. But he does want to make sure he does find some decent value. He's going to get caught from behind though. Uling will find him. So Annihilate after pretty much nothing. Q9 do find themselves down on the lives. But only ever so slightly. But they're very much up on the point. Eh, taken now. And almost two whole minutes to make this transition towards B work. That's a lot of time for Q9. Because of that amount of time, they're now going to try and make it happen on the flank to begin with. Yulin's going to fall inside the kitchen, but Pabzer are almost immediately traded out there by a couple of players that do manage to push through the middle of the map. Yulin managed to make his way through the driveway. That would have been a not-so-great position for Galaris, but they've allowed a couple of players through the middle of the map here. The desperate play to try and distract the players around jungle. It works out almost perfectly. Yang Wan is now on the point here. And I guess if you're playing up before Maoshi all the way towards jungle side, you're just a distraction here while the rest of your players make their way towards the point. Ah, you're a distraction, but you've also spawned them over towards Laundry so they can get there very, very quickly. Yeah. Purifier out now from Henry. Inside the point, one player in and around it. It's actually going to be Uling who finds one, equalizes out as well. Q9 trying to throw everything at this. 11 versus 11. This is a huge moment. Can only find one. Yang one inside the point, though. And all of a sudden, Q9 know exactly where Galaris are coming from. It's only one direction. They're inside a B. They're trying to lock it down. Here this come the investments as well. Couple coming out. Sun still got the war machine, but he's going to get shut down by Lucasin now. He was starting to come through from Galaris again. You're absolutely right to note that this is a huge moment in this game. Q9 win this. They'll be in for a really good moment towards the end of this one. But Mikor and Lucasin now going to start firing on back. Ooh. Sun in the window is going to find a couple of kills. Sun is exploding. And Galaris now down to the last couple of players. Panzer oh and Fokke. He gets shut down as well. Now just down to Fokke. His son is taking these guys out one by one. He is the Terminator. And Fokke no choice but to bring the equalizers out here to one versus four. There's one towards the point. Can't even touch it in time. Sun wins the round for Q9. Q9 supernova more like. That was absurd from Sun. Just finds three out of nothing. The first shot was disgusting. The second absurd. The third he had time to line up. The difference maker. Q9. 2-0 to the good here in the control. Brazil in absolute raptures right now. How on earth has this happened? Galaris thought they were cruising. Into this grand finals, the favorites, they're finding themselves potentially 3-0 to zero down. Oh, Galaris <laughs> just don't look like the same start from last time, does it, whatsoever? And we know how that one went down. Q9 now in total control. C9 oh, doing some disgusting thing. That's four now for him off the start of the round, completely wiping Galaris away. And they're ready for it as well. Yang One's already got the Gravity Vortex gun out towards this side. It's going to zone these players away. He has help from his teammates too. This is triple after triple off the start of this game. Galaris are being bullied away. Yang One finding another one. Galaris able to get a couple of players through here. But Tan, this is not the start they wanted. No, absolutely not. Galaris have really suffered. But it just takes a few different kills that can change 
the tide of a game of control. And that could be it. If they can get a hold of B, then that would be fantastic. But Jinan finds a kill on Henry. And all of a sudden, he's somebody you have to get rid of. You will. Perhaps where it turns around. Deals with the issue. Push now coming through from the middle of the map as well. Not going to happen. It's looking like Golaris will manage to get a hold of B. Pressure coming through though. And Uling finds an angle. And wipes him off the point. Brilliant start here by Kunak. Uling is firing absolute missiles <laughs> out of his weapon right now. This is insane. That's just not surprising, mate. It's Uling. There's a reason people consider him one of the best players in the world. Galaris five lives down now. Only two ticks on B. And they've changed strategy here to go towards A. A couple of players to deal with inside the window. Couple over towards the basketball court as well. Galaris a lot to do. They're up against it. Pabs era can he produce anything? No, Xenon is going to deny. Henry Cat and Lucasin will find a couple of kills though. So it's going to give them a chance to stop the clock on B. Henry Cat able to convert for a second as well. So trades here still going down. Galaris still stopping the clock. But the number's not favoring them on the point now. It's Q9 on their way. Able to find the kills to remove a couple of the players on the point. But Lucasin is still sitting there. He's still stopping the clock. He's still alive. Needs to get on the point. The rest of the team are here now. If I'm Q9, I maybe just give it up. I don't know if you challenge this over necessarily. What? Uling can find the shots through the smoke, though. And all of a sudden, it's not necessary to challenge. It's Three just seconds. a prerequisite of what you've got to do to win this round. You've got to go for the child. You've got to try and do something of your Galaris. How on earth have we found ourselves here? Q9. They're a map away from being the champions here at Mobile Masters. Q9, I mean, the galleries, there are moments where they look good, right? There are moments where they look like they know what they're doing, but Q9 just know how to overwhelm. Their teamwork at the moment is perfect. The way in which they're playing together, I mean, just a prime example, right? In that very final round where uh, Galleries was stopping the clock for a solid 20 to 30 seconds. What is their solution? You know, we'll just three hit. With three of us, we'll just hit him with three subs and take him out of the point. That is exactly what happens. And again... <laughs> We expected the control to be the way into the series for Q9, but we didn't expect a 3-0. And again, I know people are going to be like, I can't believe you guys thought Q9 were bad. We don't think Q9 are bad. We just think yesterday, Galaris trounced them. Q9 did not turn up, and we didn't know whether they would today. This is the Q9 that beat Wolves back in their own region. Incredible performance so far from Q9. Three to the good. Incredible how this is transpired this way as well. I mean, the search and destroy was one sided. The control, a three to zero. Map number one, yeah, okay, it was close, but that was the only one that has been. Uling is running the show. Sun has been fantastic as well, but again, just to. I mean, we, we try to think we're like psychiatrists and, and body language experts as we are casters. <laughs> but, you, you know, you, you talk about in terms of like, you know, they've been jing themselves up. They're getting ready for it. They've got the crowd behind them. You've just lost three maps back to back to back. How have they got to be feeling right now? Honestly, I, I just don't think they expect it. I, I think, honestly, they'll be completely stunned. And I know, obviously, these are some of the best teams in the world at Call of Duty Mobile. So you expect there to be a level of competency where they don't kind of feel that to a certain extent, right? A level of resilience. But you can't deny the fact that this is not what Galaris expected at all. They have gone through this tournament completely resistancelessness. There's been nothing whatsoever. They have been plain sailing the entire time. And that includes that matchup versus Q9. So I think to come into this matchup and face a Q9 that also, it is worth saying, did not easily beat Seminole. You know, that they still had their struggles, especially in the hard points versus Seminole. So to go up against a Q9 like this, that seems to be firing on all cylinders, playing on top form, they're finally here. This is the Q9. I think the only way to describe Galaxy's feelings at the moment is completely stunned. It's insane. It's insane. I, I just don't understand how... It, it, it's collapsed like this. Did Q9 just have a complete off day yesterday? That That's how it feels. They're definitely playing a lot better today. And you know, I was kind of questioning Seminole when they went on a loss to them in such a way mm -hmm. after seeing what Galaris did to them yesterday. So I think, I know, Seminole, I thought would have actually proved to be a bit more of a sturdier test for Q9. Q9 look insane right now. They, they are yeah. very much riding the wings of momentum and things are looking so, so good for them to take this championship away. They only need a single map 
to be crowned champions here in Brazil up against the hometown team as well. That would, mm. that's got a sting as well, especially, <laughs> you know, if you're Galarus, you know, you've got this, this event in your home country in front of your passionate fans and you are yet to win a map in the grand final. Hmm. Yeah, not great. Look, I'll, tell, I'll say this much, mate. I think, uh, what was it, Rabalo that described uh, Galarus picking up Lucas in as uh, the Avengers picking up Thanos? Well, it feels like at the moment this might be their Kang Dynasty because uh, Q9 are coming through and decimating in these maps. They are just firing in all cylinders at the moment. Again, this is Q9 coming out here and destroying them. Um, I tweeted out earlier on that yesterday I felt like maybe Q9 uh, might have brought their stunt doubles uh, to the matchup yesterday <sighs> because it, it just feels totally different it just feels like a totally different roster it feels like q9 now this this is this is q9 this this is what we expected a, a lot of people might have uh, maybe if you're new to cod mobile which again i doubt many people are if you're here I, I think a lot of people would be enthusiastic fans but if you're relatively new you might not know what to expect from a roster like q9 and i think for a lot of people myself included we were surprised yesterday because q9 got rolled over so easily this is q9 this is the q9 that we wanted to see this is the Q9 where everybody is coming out and playing well. And it's important to note as well, unlike I think uh, Galaris to a certain extent, where much of the conversation revolves around Lucas in and what he's bringing to the roster, even though they are good in their own right as a team. For this roster, it feels like it's not just Uling, the star player that everybody kind of revolves to. It's everybody is having their moments in these games. Everybody is doing something of value that's giving these guys the win they're at right now. <laughs> What are, we, what are we checking out here? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some strange cams at esports events before. That might be up there. But <laughs> in this moment now, how, how do they turn it around? Because, I mean, the crowd is obviously not that interested right now because of the way that it's been going. They're trying to psych themselves up. They're trying to get things going here. But is it too little too late? Three to zero down. Can you turn this round? They just haven't looked likely at all. They've been blown out of the water three maps in a row. Or two maps in a row, I should say. Map number one was pretty close. That was a hard point. We're going in to another one here now. And one that should shoot suit Galoris uh, beautifully. Is this the first map yeah. that they win in this grand final? I, I know. I'm not saying anything, mate. I mean, <laughs> Galaris to lose a hard point alone is something special. To lose a Hacienda hard point, arguably their single strongest map across the board. I ain't saying anything at this point, buddy. Uh, maybe maybe it is true. Maybe East is best and West truly as well. You guys know the rest. Galaris backs against the wall here. They've now got a reverse sweep Q9. It has to start with this Hacienda hard point and already they're now in control of P1. They weren't the first ones to strike first here in this game. Q9 still having presence in and around this middle area. It's Yang Wan that has been so annoying this entire series thus far that will remove Galaris momentarily from the hill, but he finally goes down. The Galaris... They're going to get some time here, and they've also started to kind of meander their way over towards new. But Maoshi winning this gunfight could be problematic, and he does. Good win to find. Q9 will just want to steady the ship after what felt like a, a nice start from the side of Galarus. You just, if you're Q9, you don't want to let the crowd get on the side of Galarus, right? You don't want them there behind them. You want to stun any sort of extra effort that they're putting in pretty quickly. Don't let them get a good start. Q9 can come away with P2 control. Then things could very well look like a good start. Press are going to come out over towards the water side. They want to clear that out. They haven't been able to. The pressure coming in now from up the driveway. That's a nice clean break from Galaris. They'll get 45 potential points on the board if they can hold the rest of this down. Yeah, good job taking T9 out of the play before he could piece you up. He's been doing that all series as well. Q9 players making their way around the back line as well. You can see that double from Maoshi is going to influence the spawns here. It's going to force Galaris to spawn out towards the rock side. Now a couple of players in towards the point as well. Sun, one of them. who's able to pick up the first kill versus Foke, but immediately going to trade it, be traded out there. Galaris, they're holding on here for the moment. Spawn. Still 20 seconds left to fight over. Those spawns in the back line now starting to come through from Galaris. Is that really what you want, though, with a fight for this scrap time? Will ensue. Maoshi in the chaos is trying to play his life, but unfortunately will end up going down to Lucas in. And I was saying, Tom, that it is the, are these back spawns really what you want for the back five seconds here? Because it's effectively given Q9 the rotation. I mean, you'll take yourself a 20-point lead, but you're right. We head over towards fences. G9 going to try and hold this one down. They've spotted him out, though. Stuns, nades all on their way around. Now she is going to be able to find one. Will they be able to slow down this push from Galaris, who are trying to push through from the top middle of the map? 
Jinan finding one is a bonus. Yang Wan's going to find himself over there and find himself getting taken down as well. Potential break on the card here for Galaris. 45 seconds remaining on this point. They're about to find a way through. Q9, no answer. That's a kill feed that looks very Galaris like. And it being really careful about those spawns as well. You can see player number four far oh, in the position big. where he can keep an eye on those spawns. If they do end up flipping out, kills now being made by Meekork though towards the back line. Q9 are being kept at bay. Investment now starting to come up from a couple of players. Some of the Sparrow immediately goes down. A kill is made by Yuling, but no more than that. That's a big shutdown from Galaris. A big investment from Q9 to try and take this time away. And both operators are denied any purchase whatsoever. That is a huge chill for Galaris in this game. It's going to give them a slight advantage over Q9. Looking over towards the top of your screen, you can see three operators available for Galaris. Only the one for Q9. Q9 invests a lot and gain very little. Looking like my crypto portfolio right now. <laughs> so now we're seeing what Galaris are able to do here on rotation. Are they able to lock down the rock? Q9 trying to find a route through. Not going to happen. The slaying ability just seems to be there for Galaris just that little bit more. Luke's in already 17 kills. And it feels like Q9 have come out maybe a little bit cold on that front. The SMGs, the players that have really been thriving in this series so far, haven't quite found themselves on Hacienda yet. Yeah, it's inside the ARs for both of the sides. It's uh, right now a conversation between Lucasin and Maoshi for Q9. Lucasin now towards the point, though. Going to find three with the Annihilator. Looking for number four. It's going to be denied. A Sun's going to take him out of the equation. But fortunately enough, his teammates are there as the correct backstop for Galaris to get themselves on towards the point. But that doesn't last long whatsoever. As Shinan and Maoshi are going to combine for three. Big scrap time here for Q9 to fight over. And that's why you're seeing Galaris still so heavily going at this one. Pabsera doesn't quite have the war machine to use just yet. Having to go towards the proper weapon to get it done. And unfortunately will be shut down. So Q9 here just about edging out in the lead as we go into the second set time. But this game is still absolutely anybody's as we move forward. Fantastic work from Q9. In all honesty, it's felt like the majority of that rotation of hills... It's felt like Galaris are the ones in control, and yet you look at the scoreline, Q9 were there all the way, and not just there, they are very much in the lead. Jinan now trying to keep himself alive over towards the top side. A couple of kills coming in from Galaris, and all of a sudden they will have some control up towards top, and that is going to be some control in the point alongside of it. Maoshi finding a couple. The crowd trying to get behind Galaris right now, but this is a very, very close game. P2 control going to be paramount in about 30 seconds. Q9 still fighting for this time, though. Got players coming through from you. C9 going to be one of them. Yang Wan and Sun going to go down. There goes Maoshi. There goes C9 as well. And Galar is dealing with those players very quickly. Now a big gunfight towards the rotation. If Fokke can win this, it's huge. And indeed he does. There goes Sun. A big moment here for Galaris. You've got yourself a slight advantage over Q9. But you don't have the hold over the next hill that you ideally would want. A couple of players are already through. Yang Wan trying to contest. Isn't going to find a great deal for it. Looking in the minimap in the bottom left corner. It looks like the spawn's coming in now for Galaris, but some water side control. It's going to be about the players who are pushing through lobby. That's going to be the difference maker. How on earth did they even find one kill there? But the equalizer, everything invested here from Q9. They get themselves in the point. They clear it out, but they're going to hold it down. Now she... It's been a superstar for this roster. Now we're looking to go huge with the equalizers. Oh, oh he gets shut down by Pabsera. Eats a war machine bullet to the face. That's two for him, but on the other side, it's more operators for Q9. Now it's Sinan with the claw. He's already picked up a couple of kills. That's number three for him. I think he actually got number four just before falling there as well. Next up to the pallet is going to be Sun with the Sparrow. Just trying to keep these guys at bay. And that is exactly what <laughs> happened as Sun picks up three. Sun picks up four. Q9 holding on. And the Predator Missile comes out straight away. That is a lot of information and kills, to be fair, that you get from that, even if you lose that scrap time to Galaris. Comms with that. That's all he's using it for. Information gained. Q9 know they can soak up the rest of this time. This is the best lead they've had for, well, the entire map so far. But last time around, last rotation, Galaris. It was this side of the map that they really had some success on. Can they do that once more? The kill's starting to come through on the other side of things, though. Q9 have the spawns towards the back. They've got one player to worry about, but everybody else from Galaris pushing through the front. Galaris can't afford to keep this time away. Q9 set themselves up well here. To contest for the moment. Plays in and around the fences. Finally, it's Lucasin and Hen looking for these kills now up top. 
Gonna be a player jumping down towards the point. Loon's gonna deal with them, tra trading back and forth, but ultimately it's gonna be Q9 that come out on top. They don't have to worry about anybody spawning towards that fence's side. Everybody is coming from the back of the spawn, and Maoshi is up here. They've got players in the power positions. Euling now gonna bring out the war machine as well. Tom, this is not good for Galaris. This is a lot of time that you are bleeding away, and to be honest with you, with 15 seconds left, you would not be better served trying to push Euling in this position. You have to go for rotation. Gotta go for the rotation. They absolutely have. Managed to make it work. Some control over towards the rock side. That's a big kill coming in from Babsra as well. And she gets taken down and all of a sudden, it's a nice little setup coming in from Galarus, but a Predator Missile is going to stop that being a good thing. Uling finding a kill and it's just a clean wipe coming in from Q9 once again. Uh -oh. We're looking quite simply unstoppable right now. Three to the good in this grand final. They want to close it out in four very quickly. Oh, I was going to say, put that, mind, put that moment to the back of your mind, Tom, because that might be the moment here where Q9 are able to start walking away or running away with this game. But Galaris still have something to say. They're not giving away this hill just yet, but more kills now starting to come through in the kill free from Sung and Ulin. Mihawk forced to bring out the claw in this situation. It's the only operator on the board, so it needs to find some value for Galaris, and I don't think it does at all in the smoke, in the absolute carnage. It's going to be Q9 picking up the gunfights. Henry Cat, the only one to find anything of value. He tries to play his life by keeping himself down low, and it's just not happening. It's Q9 in the kill feed, and now they've got operators as well. Consistently in the kill feed. These operators haven't done a great deal, but they've kept them at bay. It's about a 70 point lead. They found themselves ever so slightly behind after the first rotation. They are firmly in the lead now. Investment coming in from Galaris at this stage when there's nothing to play for here by Henry. Yeah. It's decisions like that that might cost you games. This is not the hill for the purified, to be honest. He'll get some kills here, no doubt about it. But it's I mean, P2, you right? ideally want this one for, yeah, exactly, for the garage hardpoint. That's the one where the purifier is best served because it gives you that opportunity to take players out before they can get through. But regardless, Galaris are running some time here on P1. You need as much as you can possibly get from this hill. And to be fair, they have managed to get a couple. The last couple of times, this hill has popped up. But these smokes have been so frustrating. It's allowed Q9 to get into these positions where they can just contest, come at angles that Galaris just have not been expecting whatsoever. And even now, Q9, they're in the midst of that smoke, earning time for the rest of the roster. Galaris backs firmly against the wall here. And they are just bleeding, hemorrhaging time away. Again, just like previously, no choice but to rotate away. They have to win these gunfights and they have to hold the garage perfectly. The rotation is in. The Q9 still hold that 70 point lead and may well be climbing. Make it 80. The gunfight's starting to go their way. They wipe them over towards P2. There's one player over towards the water side. It's crucial. He stays alive. And now the push is just going to be one dimensional what? from Q9. They're going to all go through the front door. Now all of a sudden, Equalizer inside the point. Huge kills coming in. Equalizer and Equalizer. Foki was the one to fall, but eventually Galaris will get some sort of control. 45 seconds away on P2. Galaris need every single second. Oh, and you're not finding any value with the war machine as well. You're only momentarily keeping these guys out of the hill. Fine, you get one kill. Now it's going to be oh Yang one with a purifier. We discussed how important that thing's going to be for players on this hill. And now it's going to be the thing that keeps <gasps> Galaris out. No longer. Shut down. Now three players trying to make their way through the stairwell, but they're facing down a war machine from Uling as well. Mao Shi able to pick up a couple of gunfights. Q9 can now no longer finish this game and this series here. They have to go towards the next hard point, but they've still managed to steal crucial time away and that's why you're seeing Galaris go for this they cannot afford to get this one up ton if Galaris want to win mobile masters in their home country they are going about it the very very hard way Q9 are looking to put a few more nails in this coffin which feels like it is already being lowered into the ground 14 seconds away from the Chinese team they're starting to set themselves up over towards fences the kills once again as they have done throughout the entire series are starting to flow they're 10 points away from the win 10 points away. This could be it. There's the wipe. Galaris spawning out on the other side of the map. Q9. Can they stop them from touching in time? Just one more wave of gunfights. They're contesting in the midst of the smoke. Galaris do not want to give this one up. Q9 spawning towards the back line. Uling. What can he get done? Mao Shi for a couple of kills now. It's Galaris with desperation. Mao Shi for three kills. Make it four with the equalizers. One more kill. And Galaris go down. Q9 are your champions for the Snapdragon Mobile Masters in 2024. Right in their backyard, Q9 dismantle the Brazilians. 
four to zero. What a performance. Considering what happens in the previous game against these two teams, the fact that they're able to turn it around and do that back to them. Galaris are down and bleeding. Man, what a grand final, son. And what a grand final for Q9. Once again, putting another point on the board for the East. After Wolves won champs, another Chinese team, by the way. It is Q9 beating Wolves in their own regional playoffs before becoming champions of the world here in the Mobile Masters, winning the lion's share of $200,000. Was that 90000 for first place? Q9 are the best team in the world. What a performance. And a deserved lifting of the trophy incoming from Q9. And as mentioned, they've done it not only in Brazil, but in the backyards of the other finalists. Q9 are your mobile masters champions by a 4-0 scoreline. <laughs> and once again, the best team in the world <laughs> hails from China. Q9, your champions. What a performance. A 4-0 victory. And full respect from the Brazilian crowd as well. Fantastic performance. Galoris will be back to fight another day. But Q9, statement victory to finish things off here in Brazil. Lifting the trophy once again. And for good reason. Q9. Incredible performance from the roster. Getting the coach in there as well. Because why the hell not at this point? It's just... So well deserved. After what was an incredible bounce back from them, Q9, I mean, admittedly, I think they've had kind of a difficult tournament. They've really had to fight against some of the teams in the tournament. We look towards that semi final versus Seminole where they made that incredible comeback on Apocalypse Hardpoint to ensure they got the spot in the grand finals. And at least from first glance, from what we saw previously from Galaris and Q9, it felt like maybe Galaris would be the ones in charge. Maybe they would be the ones moving forward as the champions of the tournament. But no, I, I mean, you've said it already, mate, once. But to win is something. To win 4-0 is not. I mean, your prediction was right, bud. It was just... I you, you know, know what I was right saving now, but if you if you want to give me the plaudits, then that is absolutely fine. Yeah, you were right for once, mate. Is that what you wanted to hear? It happens every now and then. <laughs> once in a blue moon. What a performance coming in from Q9. Phenomenal, honestly. I I, I mean, look, you can talk about it in terms of what our our expectations were. We were having discussions beginning of today, thinking, yeah, Galaris will come in here and absolutely smoke yeah, through there. Yeah, Let, let's listen to the interview. Yeah, Not that we all be able to understand what's going on from the Brazilian, uh, the Portuguese side of things, but let's listen to the interview. At this moment, we can say that you are the best team of the world. How does that sound to you? Uh, Who would like to answer? Uh, Okay, yes, we are the top the team of CODM. And yes, this is just the beginning. And everything we've been through, like the mystic, everything, all the mystic. And yes, now we are the strongest. And this is the beginning. We're gonna continue win all the tournaments. 
Basicamente, ele só falou que esse é só o começo, eles são os campeões e ninguém pode tirar essa vitória deles. Eles se sentem muito bem nesse, nesse momento e esse é só o começo, eles ainda vão mostrar muito mais porque eles são muito fortes. Ok, so how did your team prepare for mobile masters, both in terms of gameplays and mindset? Uh,其实说实话我们准备这一次 Okay, we've been so hard working. Every training we had, all the long hours training, and this is what we got paid for. And I think right now, this moment, this is the hard work, hard work pay time. Basicamente, foram muitas horas de estudo, muitas horas de treinamento, mas eles entendem que é para isso, para esse momento que eles se prepararem tanto e eles se sentem muito felizes que todos os resultados deles deram muito certo. Afinal, são campeões. É, e eles falaram para a gente, o Aulink respondeu algumas vezes o quanto ele estava confiante e eu quero falar sobre isso com ele. I know the Aulink was pretty confident and, and he was the MVP several times in the competition. What is the secret? OK,就是Oling已經是很多場的MVP,那想知道是這個秘訣是什麼呢? Okay, uh, we've been training for a long time and honestly there's no secret for that and we just long hours training and then every mistake we have made and then we just focus on the tournament, everything, that's it. We don't think about the consequences, we just focus on the tournament. Eles não pensam nas consequências de jeito nenhum, porque o foco deles estava voltado totalmente para ganhar essa competição. E eles se sentem muito satisfeitos nesse momento, porque é para isso que eles vieram aqui, é isso que eles gostariam de mostrar e eles finalmente estão colhendo os frutos disso. Eles se prepararam e agora eles finalmente conseguiram. Ok, for us to finish, uh, I would like to ask... Uh, if they were thread about gallery team because gallery team came here to show and they have like the big crown in favor of them and most of it they were favorites. Basicamente eu perguntei se eles sentiram a pressão de jogar contra galleries porque tinha uma torcida gigantesca pelo time brasileiro. Uh, Jesus你可以專注的贏得這個比賽,你覺得這個可能是一個 uh, yeah, we understand that a lot of uh, the fans here are supporting the Brazilian team and honestly we just take the crowd as the support, like motivation for us and then I truly believe that there's some fan for us as well so we just focus on the tournament and we play
Ele falou que basicamente eles entendem o fato de todo mundo gritar, afinal, é, eles estão em território brasileiro, então eles entendem toda essa bagunça, mas eles não se sentem afetados de forma alguma. E eles também têm os fãs deles de volta na casa deles, então eles sentem que isso realmente é importante, eles respeitam muito isso. Uma salva de palmas, gente! Vamos continuar nessa energia e fazer muito barulho para a equipe da Kenobi, os nossos campeões do Snapdragon Pro Series Mobile Master 2024. Nib. Uma salva de palmas para eles. Nib. Muito obrigado. You would like to say some more. Alrighty, there was that interview done, and uh, we now get to talk about all of that. I mean, we didn't actually understand uh, any of that, but uh, alas. That is, uh, <laughs> that is the interview there. Q9 are our champions. I believe we've got Lauren back now. Uh, Lauren, are you here? Actually, want to hear your voice yeah, again? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I, I've just been enjoying how all of this has played out. Is he? I want to hear this too. And I don't want to talk anyone. I don't want to talk any trash talk. So I just want to say. Talk. Talk your talk. Do it. And the West is also good. No trash talk. <laughs> we should have nah, peace and love. That oh, was we so love wholesome. Him. I love that. That was very I wholesome, that. but that, that this is this does not play into the storylines how I wanted to, Lauren. <laughs> so actually, listen. He he. Such as Lucas Singh, I think he is Wait, one more? of the best AI in more? the world. I'm really respect him. So. I need to learn from him. He's so Oh my god, I love this. So good. Yeah. Oh. This is not his thing. Be Extra my respect team. for Lucasini as well. And listen, we underestimated them. We didn't give them their due. And not only did they win, but they didn't even give Galarus an opportunity to breathe in that grand finals. We said 4-0, potential 4-1 in favor of Galarus, and Q9 said bet. And they flipped it on all of our heads. That was an absolutely standout performance from a team that wanted to keep the title in their region. I don't know, were they just lulling all of us into a false sense of security? Or I guess maybe Galarus into a false sense of security because that was a different team, Ton. Oh, it was absolutely insane. I just think they must have played poorly yesterday. I think that must be... I Look, we haven't seen these teams up against each other, so it's always hard to judge. You can always say, oh, right. I mean, look, Kings won one map this weekend in Europe. They look like the, the best thing since sliced bread. But then you come over mm -hmm. to having these conversations where you have these teams going up against each other from different regions. You never really know until you get to the tournament. Now we definitely know. I mean, look, we, we always had that kind of presumption of who was going to be in this final and we we did get the final we thought we would but at the same time for it to end in that kind of way is still confusing to me but i i don't know how to explain q9 was just a different level today it was incredible they had a, such a good victory in the semi-finals up against seminal and then to come through and do that to galaris as well crazy crazy run on this side and then to cap it all off with just the utmost respect for mm -hmm. their opponents and nothing but humility when it comes to talking about their success. I mean, they were also the same team that when we watched their team profile, they were the ones saying all of the major regions have just gotten better. They're all yep. at a higher level of competitive ability, Brody. I mean, that was, like you said, they might have just become my, my new favorite team after that. I love them. I love them so much. Q9, I love you guys. Q9 are my favorite team now. I don't care about anybody else. Uh. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I can't. Be, I can't be a European fan after this weekend, can I? Like, I mean, that, you well, know, yeah. There's I, nothing I, to I shout mean, about. I, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've learned. We've learned. You know, East is uh, best, which you already knew. Uh, and Uling mm -hmm. was like, you know, talking about the fact that obviously West are still good, and I think that's still true. Uh, you know, and that's what we should take away, I think, from all of this, is that East is best, West is still good, apart from Europe, which is awful. Um, that's, I think, what we should take away from this tournament. Um, Ulin, though, I think he's so humble, and I love that attitude. I think after all the storyline that we've had, you know, everything you know, between the East and the West, what happened at Champs with, uh, you know, Vague and Godlike, and that whole storyline, which was great, and it was awesome to see that bad bud between the teams, if you can call it that, at the end of the day. I know some take it more seriously than others, but... Um, at the end of the day, the storylines are great, but to see it kind of come out like this, where it's like, 
you know, you've got Uling saying, you know what, I think we're all pretty good. And I think that we've got a really competitive and healthy Call of Duty Mobile esports ecosystem. That's great. And I like the reaction here, Lauren, because uh, yeah, Mao Shi, a, a lot of people talk about Yuling. Mao Shi had a hell of a game. I mean, ton. I mean, obviously that's the whole match, but the numbers that he was putting up for his squad are just plain impressive. Oh, crazy. I mean, everybody really chipped in when when needed. I think in terms of like the flashy players that happened, we've seen Sun was absolutely incredible. That three piece to close out the round on the control might have been the mm. dagger that ended the game, to be honest with you. The way that he played over an entire day today in the search and destroy, the sniper gameplay, absolutely nuts. But everybody could deserve some plaudits from that side of things, from the Q9 roster. Everybody pitched in when needed. Nobody was slacking, slacking behind in any sense. And I, I just like, you know, coming into this, if they would turn around and win in a close game, because let's face it, there was a couple of close moments in that first series against each other yesterday. The fact that they went to do it 4-0 in the fashion that they did is a real big statement. And all the players deserve every single plaudit that they will get. I, I mean, I don't think we can really praise them enough. We had... I had even asked your guys' opinion on picking a map that they really fumbled the first time around, and they turned around, and they were just like, no. That yesterday was the fluke. Today is how we play 99% of the time. I mean, just wildly impressive. If I am any of the other teams that was at the event here with them this time, I'm taking lots of notes, and I'm keeping them in my sights for next season because they are absolutely going to be a team to contend with when we get back to this global stage. Uh, but we are, I mean, we're pretty much done. Before we say goodbye to everybody, though, Tan, I want to get your thoughts on just the event on the whole because this was a blast. Yeah, it's, honestly, the, the entire thing has been a, an absolute pleasure to be part of. Uh, the Snapdragon Pro Series has been absolutely crazy. And to lead up to this moment, just the way that it's all formula is how it should be. And teams who can come into this from any different angle, you can be your mates playing four players together. You can then end up on the grand final stage. Oh, but you take some practice to get there. It's always <laughs> open to everybody to get into, which is what I absolutely love about it. It's been a sensational tournament from start to finish. Masters was everything and more that we expected it to be. And again, a pleasure to be part of this and with you guys, of course. Uh, but what a performance from Q9. It's just sublime to see that kind of comeback and just a fantastic way to get things rolling up until the next season that's going to be coming up shortly. Fantastic storyline setting. Although I would have liked some smack talk. I would have liked for him to turn around and say, oh, real respect, actually, psych, and just then start going off on it. That would have been hilarious. But nonetheless, we get we get the, the nice humble moment at least. Huh? Maybe if they get like the back-to-back, -back, Brody, they'll, we'll start to see a little bit of a little trash talk. Uh... I don't know if we're going to get that, honestly. It feels kind of funny because we had our storylines for this event kind of made up for us. We had our storylines for 2023 champs made up for us by everything that was going on with the East versus West. Guys, we've got to do work now. We've actually got to create our own storylines. I don't, don't know what we're going to do ahead of season five. I know it's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy Q9 won because those guys really do feel like the humblest of teams. And it gives us a lot, of, it does give us a fair few storylines, I think, moving forward into these various mm. regions because it's already been announced. 2024 champs. I mean, it, it's a little far away, let's be honest. But it is on the roadmap now. We know what's ahead of us. And uh, it's really exciting to see kind of where these regions are going to be at as we lead up to that. Yeah, lots in store for the Call of Duty mobile community. But as far as we go here, the Snapdragon Pro Series Mobile Masters event has concluded and Q9 are your champions. Obviously, a huge congratulations to them for a well-deserved win and to all of our teams on their performances here this weekend. These events just would not be the same without the passion and dedication of our players. So as always, a huge thank you to Snapdragon Elite Gaming, Samsung Galaxy, Monster Energy, and DHL for helping us make this whole thing possible. Thank you to Sao Paulo for hosting our mobile Masters event and showing why our Latam community is so special to Call of Duty Mobile. And of course, on behalf of myself, my co-casters, and everyone behind the scenes, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next season.
drum hit your whole body go crack baseline move take it off of the map no time to sit on my people's where you at boom boom bap yeah we got it like that kick drum hit your whole body go crack. baseline move take it off of the map we rock crowds every time we react yeah we got it like that Déjame ver otro lado, baja tus brazos cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Déjame ver otro lado y baja tus brazos cruzados, relaja los hombros pesados y abre el pecho que está cerrado. Sí, sí, miraste pa dentro y volviste. Sí, sí. Y luego seguiste, sí, sí, pero te levantaste y pa'lante fuiste, sí, sí, volviste y eres mi brújula, te sigo sin Dame permitir. algo real y algo que me tinque, más chiste menos chisme, dame algo original y algo que me indique, dale fuerte que pique. Permítate pana, yo veo tus sueños cumpliéndose mañana, yo veo tu futuro el reflejo de tu alma, no te falta suerte, sigue con ganas. Sí, sí, caíste. Miraste pa' dentro y volviste. Sí, sí, caíste. Te desviaste y luego seguiste. Sí, sí, caíste. Pero te levantaste y pa'lante fuiste. 